she's she has like you know instant access early access to stuff because otherwise it's like how the hell did this happen you say like the weirdest strange and totally uh non-relatable shit about movies god yeah i'm trying Very to remember where i've seen her before because i've seen her have some absolute back takes i'm trying to remember <laughs> oh dear well uh we covered it i think it was, it was she did peacemaker and uh what was the other one it was mario and was it was there a third Grace Randall video we've covered. She's been pretty golden every time we've checked her Suicide out. Suicide Squad. Oh, fuck yeah, not Peacemaker. Talked yeah. about, yeah. Was there a third one, oh, though? I don't think so. Ooh, I don't know. Feels like we've covered loads of her, and it's just been two. How about it? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Crazy. You know, it's just, that's, that's, that's how she does it. She gets in your head, and you're like, I need to know more of Grace's opinions. We covered like Grace movie, and Ben Shapiro in the same uh, stream. We had those two telling us about media. It was, uh, it was surreal. His uh, review wow. on everything ever we're all at once like pissed me off. Oh god, what do you say so about that? Shit. So all he did essentially was he went over the movie very, very briefly, but all but throughout most of the video, he complained that it got a uh, golden globe, and he was saying the golden globes always suck, therefore this movie is bad. Uh -oh. And then toward the end of the video, he finally just he talked mostly about the Golden Globes, and then at the end, he said, so in summary, you have to accept lesbians across the multiverse. That's the whole movie. <laughs> in summary. Uh, okay. All the multiverse. Not all the multiverse, just your universe. That would be fine. <laughs> start there. <laughs> we'll be good. <laughs> and then he just moves on. was his takeaway from that film? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was his takeaway. Lesbians and the You gotta multiverse. remember, he's kind of like a really hard conservative, so as soon as like there's a lesbian in the movie that takes some sort of presence... It kind of goes down like five. Points Activates for that. the like, neural yeah. programming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, lesbians were in it, so there's also sausage mm -hmm. fingers, rocks. There's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Raccoons. That's true. Um, Raccoon yeah, that's right. Oh, what a what a fun movie that was. It was great. I'm sure Brian there'll be Hunter. plenty more to come. Not for now, though. We got to get through Little Mermaid mm -hmm. and some other stuff. Indiana Jones. <laughs> Oh, do we have to watch that? It's kind of funny though, isn't it? It's like Indiana Jones, a you know action adventure hero, getting fucking titted to old man to be you know ridiculed, and also Little Mermaid is getting butchered. It's just like why those two now? And what's happening? Leave them alone. Maybe they could team up and kill people or something. It Indiana Jones flash, ride a mermaid wild, through uh, the ocean and whip people. I don't know. The Flash is coming out real soon as oh, well. Oh yeah, the Flash. Oh, I, can't I mean, everybody one. says it's so great. Man, Warner Brothers insists it's such a great movie. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> insisting it's a very good film. They really are. It's just strange. It's so weird. The reviews insist. They gotta save that movie at all costs. I'm sure they will. It's gonna be something to behold. But then oh, there's gonna... hopefully some good stuff in the mix. Hopefully Across the Spider-Verse is cool. I hope Mission Impossible mm. uh, Dead Reckoning. And Fast X, best. yeah. Uh, that's, that's out now, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how exciting. I've seen plenty of people say I loved it. So there's that. Okay. Uh, I think it's going to be an authentically uh, uh, petrol-fueled uh, well, wonder. Well, I mean, in the trailer, uh, what's his name? Um... Uh, it's 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 Dom, right? The uh, the main guy. He mm -hmm. like drives off of I think Hoover Dam as there's an explosion that follows him down Hoover Dam as he drives down it and ramps off it. Yeah, Which, you know, in, in the scope of crazy things that they've done in that series, it's not that it's not that insane, really. No, um, normal. I if remember, in, 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 I think it was in the the one before it. They drive off of a cliff, like towards like a collapsing bridge. Hook the car. To like the the a hook that's on the bridge, and then use it to slingshot to, across like a chasm to the other cliff. Go into space um, in a car in one of them, don't they? They do. That's what I've yeah, heard. So um, I think it was that one too. There's a bit of a the meme on one. Twitter of just share the moment you thought Fast and Furious like you know went insane, and there's one <laughs> clip I saw of Dom like fucking stomps the ground, and a whole like concrete thing just falls apart, and he like I guess kills Jason Statham or something. I, uh, I think, you know, um, 
wasn't the real jump the shark moment it was in the the uh seven the when they drove like they drove out of the Burj Khalifa and then like shot into another building wasn't that like really just sort of like wow fuck it hell <laughs> you know, I like the idea that, it goes off the rails at seven it's like fuck it hell Maybe, uh, well, maybe maybe that's not when it went off the rails, but that is a good like landmark moment of stupid, I guess. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you you jumped the shark. Yeah. Like you haven't actually jumped the How shark. How dare you call it stupid? Was, I mean, they need to jump a shark. Why haven't they done that? They should just throw that in. Yeah, they should jump the shark and that then, would be legitimately uh, funny. And it just misses the the tires as it goes over and like bites at that's it. That's right. Like, Oof. Or like it's a crossover with uh, the Meg, right? Well, I mean they're owned by different studios, I guess. But Jason Statham's in both of those, right? The Meg so... versus the Fast. Yeah, the Meg versus the Fast. <laughs> <laughs> As if we wouldn't pay through the fucking nose to see that, because they've got big old squid, an octopus, or something in the new Meg. So I, uh, I kind of want to watch it. Yeah, I mean, you know... It looks it, like it'll be funny. It's a high-budget Sharknado at this point. Why not? Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, hello, everybody. We are we are live. And look! Mm -hmm. Look at this yeah. wonderful set of guests. we got a whole bunch of people who've been here before, but I don't think I've ever been here together? Question mark? Who hasn't met each other here? Say hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. hi. Hello. <laughs> we did it. Everyone's introduced now. Right. Yeah, that was easy. Ah, nice, nice. Um, one thing that I believe unifies a lot of us is uh, is the concept of criticism. Would you not agree? Would you guys not agree with that? We kind of all do it. I, no, I wouldn't know anything about that. I would not, not, not I would not, mm -mm. not agree. Well, I mean, I, you're I not going to get away with it, CJ, because you got reviews in your name. So. Oh, snappy got me. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't want to point out. be cynical? Like you got a bit of poop on your dress. I'm like, it's right there, man. Beautiful. <laughs> There's so many. Hold on. No, never mind. <laughs> Damn it, my poop dress. <laughs> poop on the <laughs> So I would say that it's about time that we check out a point of view that kind of goes against that entire concept, wouldn't you say? Or, or at least yeah. kind of comes across like it might. I'm not going to say that's exactly what the video has to say, but... It might have something along those lines to talk about. I've linked the watch together. We've got... I think everyone's in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine. No, one person's missing. Nine, no, one nine person. Oh! No. Ta-da! Ah, beautiful. Right, here we go. This video is called... Oh, Film Criticism Should I mean, Not Be one, Negative. Well, now, that is, uh... That's, that's quite a, uh... That's quite a claim, ain't it? One could call yeah. it incendiary yeah. as a title. Quite, a, quite an ambitious statement. Yeah, there are some people that would say, like, fighting game characters should never be nerfed, only buffed. And it's like, huh. I don't know what to think of that. I don't think I You said that, low tier god. But what if the film is really, really bad? Well, so this is the thing. I think the most normal interpretation of that, which is why I think a lot of people clicked the video, was, wow, so only positive forms of, like, analysis and criticism, huh? Or neutral, I guess, right? If you're not allowed to be yeah. negative, or they shouldn't be negative, then all you have left is you know, neutral and positive. What does a video that is exclusively neutral criticism look like? It might... Uh, hmm. Oh, neutral criticism? Do you, do you dip criticism into the negative when you like point out guess... some pieces of information that are irreconcilable? Is it like Michael Douglas then? stars you know, in this film? Is that neutral? <laughs> You know those, you know those like, uh, channels that are just show. like, oh, here's the movie, this is a recap of the movie, this is what happens in it? Dude, those channels are like popping off lately, it's really weird. Yeah. I guess that's the thing though, like if uh, Theo just brought up, is, is, it, is, it, is it neutral, if you do it in a totally flat voice and you just present two pieces of contradictory information <laughs> and you leave like a five second pause for the viewer to think about <laughs> five it. Five second that pause. Negative? I yeah, think Jim you know, Sterling made a video on exactly this topic, actually. Uh, I'm pretty sure that we, uh, I'm pretty sure that's something that we covered. Um, We've either covered or intend to cover it or I, something, but... What, what it was, was, it was, I think it would have been, like, it was just relaying information and it was presented as, this is, like, the only means by which you can, like, relay objective information about, like, any piece of art. I think that was what the goal of that one was. But maybe that's, like, an example of what it would be to be totally and utterly neutral. But then there's a problem of, like, any decision you make about what you choose to talk about versus what you don't choose to talk about could in and of itself be said to be, yeah. you know, positive or negative, right? 
Well, like if you only talk about the writing, and in then, what order, you know? Or if you only talk about the acting, if you only talk about yep. the soundtrack, it's just like, it's like or the hmm, cinematography. The yeah. things that you choose to talk about can be as important as like what you say about them. But uh, we've we here at EFAP have covered videos that are exclusively negative and exclusively positive. We did cinema wins and sins. We've done back and forth. Uh, even though I think cinema sins will often have like a um, you know, it'll it'll point out something that's clearly good in a jokey way or something, and then be like, haha, sins. So it's, it's, it, that's their way of trying to compliment <laughs> cinema wins. I'm trying to think of if cinema wins has ever done a criticism. I think they they tend uh, to avoid it entirely. I I. I... I'm pretty sure that uh, Cinema Wins will just, like, I, I'm pretty sure he, he didn't, like, I'm pretty sure that with Logan, he compliments it a lot, but he kind of didn't like it, and made oh, okay. that clear, I think, so, yeah, that might be, that might be an instance. I'm pretty sure that there are occasionally criticisms. Well. Like, I think people who, like, take channels like CinemaSins, like, too seriously and not as... In terms of like entertainment value, it's mostly entertain. It's for entertainment, right? Yeah, he would it's, definitely claim it's that. It's a jokey channel, and if you take it too seriously, it's basically your problem. And if you get triggered by it, and it's negativity. Also, what people do with cinema sins, they're like, "You destroyed a generation." And it's like, <laughs> no, you <don't>, no. <laughs> Hang on, no. I think they're giving cinema sins way too much credit there. Well, uh, I I always uh, get put off by the concept, even with, with their proof. They're like, look at movies now. They'll focus on like explaining things and the plot being like tighter instead of character. Uh, it's like, what movies are you watching? Where are these movies? I haven't fucking seen these movies. Plot so makes how does sense. that even work? <laughs> well, explaining like... how things work such that it is compromising characters. Like, I guess just having people bluntly exposit at the screen is yeah, what they would mean. That's the thing. I could see it as possible. It's like, what movie would you guys suggest what is that kind of movie? That, I mean, look at the MCU. It's piss. It's clearly not the product of like, <laughs> um, actually, this is how that works. Even like, though Honest Trailers and uh, I think Cinema Sins influenced the Russos when making Winter Soldier and Civil War. They wanted to make them. I think they described when they were making Winter Soldier and they talked about it on Screen Junkies, they said they wanted to make it Honest Trailers proof or something like that. Uh, or, or Cinema I mean, Sins proof. It, something... Which is a funny thing to say because it's impossible. Yeah, that's it's pretty impossible. Yeah. Well, I guess you you mean like the whole format is that it doesn't matter how good your They'll movie is. They'll find a way. Yeah. They'll find yeah, a way. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure that Cinema Sins has done like Cinema Sins things for like just well regarded, uh, like good things, like just widely beloved stuff. Well, there's a, there's a bit of irony there, isn't there? That if they were like they're trying to do that with Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier is one of the most popular MCU movies ever, and it's like. Damn you I, with your yeah. interest in what? Trying to remain uncriticizable? It's just strange. I'm all for uh, artists, you know, not building things uh, to please critics or whatever. We get some really weird results when they do that. But mm -hmm. the idea that Cinema Sins has somehow horribly influenced <laughs> the film industry is like, no. <laughs> but still, people feel a certain way about people criticism things, and. Yeah. I believe it should be time. I mean, you know, because I, I imagine everyone here has just the, the normal neutral position of uh, go nuts, be negative, be positive, be be neutral, whatever. Just make your video. Hopefully it's accurate and you're, accurate. you're passionate. Yeah, yeah. you're correct. That's the big thing. Um, so I guess we could start this up. We'll see, oh, see yeah. what um, oh, boy. See what gets said. Uh, there we go. That's the start. All right. I'm excited. See about uh, how long it takes to start it up. See how annoyed Theo gets. <laughs> Black Adam <laughs> killed art. What we're doing this. All of Marvel that's Phase a, Four is garbage, especially Spider-Man: No Way Home. Oh my goodness. No, no, not especially. That's the <laughs> okay. only one. I was gonna say, if doing, strong, I'm doing this bit. Well, if he's parodying like like all the setup, I, I guess No Way Home had uh, there's plenty of people who didn't like it, plenty of people who did. So you know, there's something, but. Uh, yes, the MCU is trash. <laughs> Why would you imply otherwise? The rings of power? Yeah, worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It's pretty bad. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's up really it's bad. How many of these are we going to go through? What else has come out that everybody hated? Um, that was like uh, Little Mermaids? 
it's not even out for well, now. It's not oh, out yet. Yeah, we hit it already. <laughs> Velma. Uh, Velma, oh, yeah. You, that was. You, who? He's got to, like, sort of throw his hat behind that one. You Get Velma in there. Come on. I think the, the problem is this video came out, like, oh, five months ago, so. All right, well, then. Hmm. What else would there have been? Um, Things that people hated. Um, that were coming out, not including. Uh, well, he already shit on Black Adam, so that's DC covered, I guess. Marvel, Rings of Power. Uh, hmm. She Hulk. Oh, she -Hulk. Oh, yeah, she -Hulk. Well, yeah. Yeah. If he wants to, oh, she -Hulk, wants to go yeah. to that one specifically, yeah. Be By the way, Fringy, Fringy, you might want to um, turn up your audio or like come closer. Um, you're a little low. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Damn, he... uh, is that better? Is that better? Is that yeah, better? Yeah, so. Are you are you better? Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm tired. I'm tired. Uh, He's okay. just right. up. Avatar The Way of Water? That isn't even out yet. And it's easily the most overrated and overhyped movie of the entire year. It's, pr it's, um, it's pretty yeah. overrated. It got nominated for an Academy Award for Best Picture. Right? Yeah, it's pretty overrated. I don't know, it's yeah. I don't think it was very good. I mean, you can say that something is overhyped before it's out. Like, you can like, say it, you like, can. in a, a crazy We've... and wacky voice, but, like, yeah, that film is pretty overrated. We've come across this before where, uh, bad too. It, you Awful take, like, fact. whatever is considered the greatest you know, of its medium of all time, it's probably going to be overrated. And you're like, what? Why? And you're like, well, because how do you well, reach just, that fucking know, point? Avatar where... is like the third, fourth highest grossing film that no one, third, fourth highest grossing film of all time, nominated for an Academy Award over other obviously better films. So, you know, like. I think it's fine. But. It's fine. I don't. I think it's, it's bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> well. We never did coverage on it, unfortunately. Your character from Avatar we coverage too, on the Way of Water. We did. This is a Forge episode. Who is your this. favorite character from Avatar The Way of Water, not so? You have to say their name. You can't just describe them. Challenge uh, level 1000. Don't worry if you can't. I don't know if anybody can. <laughs> Mine favorite is... Uh, we killed her brain. I've, I actually legit have forgot. Jake, there you go. That's his name, Jake Sully. And then Mr. Sully. Was, remember Quaritch? Remember how, how it wasn't as interesting? I <laughs> miss. The first film? Quaritch was fucking they... almost the good guy by the end. <laughs> like, this got weird, <laughs> man. He was gonna kill his son, that was really weird. He got the, uh, the hero son. moment, you know, of being like, Don't kill my son, please. He is my son. But he was also killing some sons, so you know, it's this whole thing. Mm. Absolute trash! So, I guess this makes me a real film critic now, right? <laughs> Wrong! If you spent time in the YouTube video- I don't even know what- who- who are you straw man? Yeah, <laughs> like, who does this? Video essay That's slash film- That tattoo, man! That- that tattoo is a bold choice. A woman in the woods, and it's like huge, and it's colored, and everything. Is that the- is that- is that the witch? Oh, probably. Oh, oh, that I think the that's witch? the witch, yeah. Yeah. The, Having the it completely one, colored like that, that makes him Dude, imagine like he, he had it's a crazy good the, movie. Yeah, the yeah, film yeah. title on it add like produced by and all the credits on the bottom. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like the movie an poster? Choice. Yeah. It's an interesting choice, I'll give him that. Mm. As was yeah, said, Yeah, I guess bold. he really likes that movie. That is a, that's a powerful tattoo. You know what? It, he can commit to a big tattoo. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I guess he's, he's putting his... Ink where his think is. Nice. Right? <laughs> Wrong! If you've spent time in the YouTube video essay slash film criticism space, you've probably seen your fair share of negatively slanted videos. You know, the ones with the thumbnails, with the person who's like crying or screaming or both, and it has like a big chunk of text next to it that says something like trash or failure or, or pain. pee pee doo doo. In fact, I know that you're not totally immune. I've seen the pee pee doo doo ones, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're my favorite. No. To be fair, PP is like, pretty, pretty good. This one's pretty good. Yeah, I do click those. <laughs> it's a valid criticism, but you know, you cannot like contextualize in terms of like negativeness because those kinds of videos exist on the positive side too. Like, there's so many people that throw yeah. around the word masterpiece, oh, yeah, I mean, best thing yeah. ever made, yep. perfect. Yeah. Like, those are looking like shocked out of their mind, masterpiece in bold yes. letters across the top yes. of the thumbnail. The Little Mermaid changed my life. Yeah, it's like insincerity, not only just like negativity, you know? Yeah, it's everyone's like trying to find over exaggeration. 
Yeah, and dramaticness. That's the problem with that. Those into these of kinds videos. of videos because they're likely the only reason you're seeing this video right now. Yes, I am a hypocrite. Every human being is. I'm very aware of it. <laughs> Where do you think I got the idea for this video? This All right, I guess the video's uh, over. Try, you can strive to <laughs> well, that, improve your okay. character flaws without simply accepting that. I know. Yeah, that's not. You do. I don't. Why, why do that? Well, and the thing is, to draw it, it sounds like so he's already anti like um, exaggeration, but he does it. So you already feel like of the cut. Yeah. You're just like, all right. <laughs> he seems to. The title see it as some... to me. Sorry, go yeah, on. continue. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, he seems to be painting like trying to maximize engagement through the algorithm in that way as necessarily bad, which I don't think I agree with. It's like, like yeah, welcome to yeah. YouTube. Basically. Makes me roll my eyes, but yeah, you know, I'm trying I don't to think know if of. I call it bad. I think it only makes me roll my eyes if I don't feel like um, the promise came through. Like if someone says like this yeah. is the fucking worst thing ever, and then they spend the video being like, "Well, you know, I just didn't really like that." But if they spend it actually like angry yeah. ranting, it's like, "Well, whatever. That's what the thumbnail said. <laughs> That's what they <Yeah>. promised." <laughs> This isn't some pull the rug out from under you moment where I reveal that all of these videos were part of a villainous scheme to reveal um, the I true never, nature no, of I, it. Why even? I didn't think that. Nobody <laughs> <would>. <laughs> it's like, come on, put your hand up if you thought that. And it's like one guy, like, yeah, maybe. Yeah, it was me. Yeah, like, I'm starting I to. That. I know we just started, but I, I think I'm starting to put a finger on the uh, style of comedy that this guy's going for. Great. <laughs> Yes, that's yeah. pretty I'm... funny. I've had to mute multiple times because it's really funny, and I didn't want to bug anyone with my laughter. Well, of course, you were cackling. I was cackling like a fucking hyena over here. YouTube to you. <laughs> no, uh, they were all completely genuine. I am mostly. Oh well, so then they're not like well, exaggerated. Then you're not. Well, then yeah. Then what's wrong with it? I'm starting to wonder, like, you know, if you say, like, this is the fucking worst movie ever, and someone goes, oh, no need to be so hyperbolic. And you go, no, I actually think that. And they're like, oh. Okay. So the lesson is don't ever not like anything. It's, well, don't I, ever I feel an extreme, I guess. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there are people out there who do have favorite movies, and when they say this is a masterpiece or perfect, that's not them over exaggerating. They just feel that way. And the same goes in the reverse, I think. Mm -hmm. No, I wonder if the people who feel extremes might be the ones who feel incentivized to go out and make videos on things. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. Mm. You very rarely see people make a video titled, to This Thing Is Just Sort Of Okay. Mm. Yeah. I give this a okay out of ten? Six out of ten-ish? I'm <laughs> very okay. proud of them, and I'm very sincerely happy that people are engaging with them in anyway. But I can't help but look at the absolute batch 1.2 million views on the Dahmer video and think like, how did we get here? Like, I, I mean, we as in all of us Is here. That a bad video I mean, or? it was, I mean, the show I was don't know about the video. time and receiving a lot of criticism. Like, I don't think it's, I'm not, I don't think it's unfair that that yeah, video it like it's, You're saying it's bad that his video got yeah, that engagement. It's like, but why? Yeah. Oh no, my video he, he did well. He seems upset that, yeah, he seems upset that like a negative video did well. Or well, the... Is it even negative? Uh, I don't know. I've I guess I've who is Dharma even made for sounds critical of Dharma, I would say. Um, but yeah. I don't know... I mean, maybe the video is good. It might maybe. be a good video. That could be why people have um, watched it and spread it around. I don't know. ...on YouTube, how did we get here? How did negative criticism of media become just as much of a spectacle um, as media I find this, itself? I, I find this to be like a weirdly... It's a weird thing to be like a new revelation of people tend to like... Uh, like receiving more negative information than positive information. Or people are more receptive to negative information than positive information. It's like, that's a pretty... It's pretty normal, right? Mm. Well, you've seen there's definitely there's definitely a few things behind it. Like, I also think that negative criticism stuff has the potential to be a lot funnier than positive criticism, and there is definitely more entertaining. More entertain certainly it. that. Well, yeah. he's saying like, when did it become a spectacle? And I'm just thinking about that meme, right? It's like it always has been. It always has been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <Nothing Yeah. new. laughs> the first cave scrolls that were made fun of by the, Og. The, I mean, like, the, the first the first like... big like reviewers on YouTube were. People like the angry video game nerd and nostalgia critic. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. 
This is what I mean. It feels weird because it's like, where have you been? Um, because uh, that would be another thing. It's like pinpoint to me where it all went wrong, and I don't think you'll be able to. I don't see how you. No, people I, in I the people in chat are saying even Siskel and Aber were um critical back in like the seventies. Yeah, oh, like yeah, the, and old they, tooth, and the two show. thumbs down thing. They made it icon iconic doing that. When people watch this show, because it was entertaining. Not, I'm not going to say people were like, oh, I can't wait for them to rip into the fucking movie, but it was technically a spectacle. People would go and see it yeah. for what it was. Well, like, you know the show, the, uh, the critic, the, um, the yeah, one yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, from Sim Simpsons adjacent, his catchphrase was, it stinks. And that was meant to be like a parody of critics. He's like, part from of the problem. TV from like the 80s mm -hmm. and the 90s. It's just, They're part it, of the problem. This isn't like... <laughs> Well, yeah, it'd be funny if in this video he says this all goes back to the 80s. That's where it all went wrong. Yeah. We get here. How did negative criticism of media become just as much of a spectacle as media itself? And I, mean, I will also say, I'll oh, go on. We'll just quick. The the media has gotten. I would rather watch CJ's review of Velma than Velma, like easily. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. where we're at. You know. Absolutely. Aww. No, that's not a compliment, my man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's, it's, that's how fucking frustrated it is to watch some of the stuff that's new that comes out. You'd rather watch someone tell a story about that story than watch that story, mm. so to speak. Um, so, you know, th th this doesn't surprise me at all. And, and and if you were like, oh, so bad media never existed before, it's like, no, no, it always has. You always has, and you couldn't be making these videos. But people have been really noticing as of late. And is that because films have gotten worse? Well, it's because criticism yes. has been easier than ever to create yep. and put out there and access. It's not just a thing that's relegated to people in newspapers who make columns or who have syndicated TV shows or bits on news channels. It's a very democratized kind of art form now and skill. And I wasn't watching CJ's video for him to watch him be negative. I needed to see that Scooby-Doo onesie. That was... <laughs> that was on my bucket list. Now I've ticked it off. People, people seem to like that onesie. Yeah. <laughs> How did negative criticism of media become just as much of a spectacle as media itself? Media Why started is the word and criticism got better. Also, well, I find it weird oh, that we've said this like it's a bad thing. Yeah, what's so wrong? It's not a good being thing. A That's how good like media analysis so has gotten that it's a it's, it's own form of entertainment and artwork. Well, I was going to mention, like, Mystery Science Theater as well, mm -hmm. like, has been around for a very long time, and that, you know, was pretty, pretty predominantly negative, but that was the whole point of the spectacle, right? Well, they weren't really, like, negative, it was just a bad movie, but they didn't, like, say, oh, this movie it was sucks negative. or anything like that, it was all jokes. Oh, it, it was negative. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure, it's it like... Was it it gave off that air but they didn't say oh this movie sucks it was just lots of jokes uh yeah did they never actually there. say like these I movies are shit or anything no i don't recall like a lot they of the times it was just making fun of the movie there would be a lot of jokes about trying to like escape the movie and get away or can we do literally anything else all oh, right <laughs> i mean the whole premise of the show is that um they're stuck on a the, on a satellite, and e evil people are sending them the worst movies they could ever find. Ah. So if it's on the show, it's already baked into the premise of the show that it's a terrible movie. Yeah, but they'll use like offhanded funny comments, like some gal with like some massive hair, it's... and she looks irritated. They'll say like, "This perms my hair," you know, something funny like so that. So what'll Just happen? Some goofy comment. Uh, especially if their format matches, uh, along with a lot of other uh, older creators of any kind that matches, is people say, no, but they were funny, though. No, they were insightful, though. Now it's gotten to be blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it's a problem. Now you got people making six-hour videos complaining about SJWs. Sijuas. Are they going to... Is he going to put up a, a thumbnail of... Uh... Some of your videos oh, I, and <laughs> I'm show not. No, I, 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 I think this this video stays strictly just to the concept of like criticism and just whether or not like in such a broad set. I think YMS gets a mention, but um, I can't okay. remember who else does. Much of a spectacle as media itself. Why is the word criticism broadly seen as an inherently negative term, and what purpose does any like of yours. this serve? <laughs> I'm well. Because uh, I think that is just a reality. If when people think criticism, I'd mm. say they think like eighty people twenty, like you know, negative positive. That's I think it's the reason one why, use uh, of the word. 
I think, it's I think the question why constructive criticism is often like a word that is thrown in, right? The word constructive, because criticism is often viewed negatively. I mean, I think the question like, what's the, what the, what point does this serve is so stupid in this case, because like, it's obvious what purpose does it serve? Like, um, we have audience for a reason, right? Uh, like, I mean, people watch it for usually, a purpose. I'm trying to think they of- They want to be entertained, right? What are like the ultimate uh, things to boil it down to? Would be like informative and entertaining would be the the two main ones, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so you find out information you didn't have previously that you're interested in, and you are given feelings of fun. Those are the main things that are happening in the videos that people I think watch. And depending on which creator you're watching, you'll get a different mix of uh, you know funny slash informative. Yeah, feelings and, like... and fun. Mm. And the thing is, I hate when people like pretend as if you don't have a choice on social media to not click on anything. Like, if you don't <laughs> like it, just I'm don't just click on it. Don't see it. Videos. We encourage yeah. individual action. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can see everyone. the thumbnail that says Dahmer is terrible. And you can go, eh, nah. He, is, he was like a serial killer. Maybe you even <laughs> tell the algorithm to stop sending you it's things like that. It's the hot take. But yes, you you could even do that. You could say, uh, what is it, not interested or something, and it'll yeah. move it away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to attempt to answer all of those questions. Do it. But before I do, please keep in mind, Seriously? this is all just my own perspective. Yeah, I oh, know. Right. Yeah, there, there, I know. There, 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 I know. It's a perspective, dude. There it is. You wouldn't be saying it if it wasn't. No, I'm I pretty sure. All of these yeah. ideas from Jim, from Oklahoma. You want to have that moment where a guy's watched it and he goes, what? I thought this was my perspective. Okay, fine. Well, well negative criticism is our perspective, so... <laughs> I thought you were going to tell us alien perspective. That'd be interesting. See what they think of it. It really is just the leave me alone, like, button, right? <laughs> Don't you know? be mad. It's, yes. It's just, um, it's just my opinion. It's like, you just, it's almost like you're just retreating from making I almost a want to tell him. statement. It's like, that's not going to do anything, but okay. Like, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> right now. You, because yeah, being like this is just my opinion. It's like, all right, did you what? Did, I mean, what, what was it? What did you think we thought it was? Mm -hmm. And even if it's just your opinion, like, what does that mean? It's yeah, like, make what is that? statements as your opinion? Exactly. Can I be yeah. critical of your opinion in a certain way? Can't be critical of my opinion. It's my opinion. Like, what else is it gonna be, man? Of course it's your opinion. <laughs> and also, don't, don't, you don't have to say it's just your opinion. You have to devalue it right from the gate. It's yeah. just, yes. It's all <laughs> just you could be revolutionary with your opinion. You could change mm -hmm. the world. Don't let your memes be dreams. However, it is just it. my opinion. <laughs> Oh. We need the president, whoever it is, to every single speech begin it with that. This is just my opinion. <laughs> now remember, guys, this is just my opinion. It's just what I think. No need to get your panties in a knot or ever anything, okay? I Before am, in fact, self-aware. Dude, the fucking, like, commandment zero is, this is just my opinion. <laughs> the first commandment. On a little post-it on the back of one of the tablets. Yeah. I do. What, Please what keep in that? mind white thing behind it. What is that? I so my assumption was that he put up <laughs> no, the, the, the other part the of the other white thing. I think that's up there so that you can put images on without it looking more weird. But I don't know, because he's got that black sheet there as well that Well if he's if he's looking to do that, I think he would want green screen, wouldn't he? No, not like well so it's not just his like good luck wall. He just puts it there so it's like yeah, yeah. That could be I his good luck wall, yeah actually that makes more sense. Yeah, it it looks like a like a box or something. It looks like a wall. It just looks like a portion He's of just wall. got his wall. Yeah, Every, wall. Everyone has their walls. He Everybody likes the robots from Interstellar. And oh, this yeah. is like his take Ooh. on it. I he mean, I don't the think skin. this looks anything like those robots. <laughs> it kind of does. But in the, They are both rectangles, right? They're both rectangles. Yeah, sure, but like, can this one do the, the run? You know, where it spins? <laughs> Probably. Emotional support monolith. I think, <laughs> I think it's guy. highly yeah. probable, Freaky. <laughs> 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 this is all just my own perspective and try not to take it too personally. I'm not Thank gonna. You. you just did. <laughs> not, I wasn't gonna, but now I'm now I'm thinking now I'm, just I'm feeling pretty yeah. personally yeah. offended yeah, yeah. now. It really it really sounds like you took that very personally to you. <laughs> <laughs> Touch the nerve, eh? yeah, Why no, are you doing this? 
Fuck well, it's yeah. two minutes already. Well, I, I guess it, it's kind of interesting, right? Because the claim film criticism should not be negative. It's like a lot of people could take that personally. I mean, it's you know? in my name. I'm going to have to take it personally. I'm sorry. <laughs> what if yeah. it's my opinion that I want to take it personally? You can't That's stop right. me now. Really like point, actually, yeah. Just my perspective. Thank you. Oh, it's done with the golden stuff oh, right at the beginning. Good luck. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So before oh, we really get into he's defining to terms of uh, yeah. yep. where we're at currently on. Oh, that music. God, fucking Torsi is fucking using damn beneath it. the fucking mask. Everyone uses that. Uh, I hate it. <laughs> Wait, well, sorry. I'm a, I'm a little anyway. bit lost. Why? Why is everybody so it's upset? This is, music. this is beneath the mask in Persona Five. Every Everyone single uses video Everyone essay is uses Wait, this is song. This, hold on, I didn't. So I didn't. It even it. shows up Go in Gadel <laughs> <laughs> like six times. <laughs> oh, is oh, is it the video? Here it goes. Oh, so right, really yeah, right. to where we're at currently. I, I do really like this song. That's yeah, really. I really, really. That's probably like why it. everyone it's uses it. It's ruined now. It's ruined. You know, I was. I was playing. Um, I was playing. Uh. Uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and I was, or I think, uh, or Breath of the Wild has some songs that a lot of people will, uh, use as well. But not as much as this one. Sorry, I don't know where I was going with that. That was just a brain fart. I thought I had a point there. I thought I had a point, and now it's gone. I do really like this track, though. It's neat. Um, Persona 5 soundtrack is fantastic. What well, I hear. It's a good soundtrack with an okay game attached to it. That's about right. So before we really get into where we're at currently online, I do need to talk about criticism as a word. You know, mm -hmm. what, what does it mean? Oh. What function does criticism serve? That okay, kind but of stuff. Do you? We're going to dive into a history, right? Uh, history. Real talk. I'm really Criticism's curious. What, was invented. what yeah. would you feel you need to cover for this section? You know, I wonder. I don't know what he's going to say. It could be like that Miller Lite ad that they're trying to hide. Women were among the first involved in criticism. <laughs> <laughs> women so created if women weren't criticism. around, we would not have criticism. Mm -mm. That's true, Obviously, I can't give a full history of criticism. In you could, coward. You could. A history of criticism. <laughs> It all began, <laughs> you're like, oh god. In this video, because we'd be going all the way you're back to 300 like BC. Shit. <laughs> What's this image? Oh no! <laughs> this reminds me of Plato. Why, 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 why do we have Plato on screen? What? No, man, not oh. this again. What? What? Well, uh, in order to understand, to understand criticism, we have to go back to ancient Greece. <laughs> Look, I, I think this I is good. Just right, man. He's going. He's covered all the bases. I think you guys are shitting on this too early. This is going to be insightful. I think I'm going to give him the wide berth. I can't wait for this. I can't give a full history of criticism in this it's video. It's would be going all the way back to 300 <laughs> BC with Aristotle. Oh, he's not going earlier. all the way back. To, yeah, there you go. Just to Aristotle. Okay. Basically, end up repeating a lot of what John Dryden had to say about criticism. Oh man, yeah, John. John oh, Dryden. Boy. John Dryden was. He was oh, a good don't one. don't do yeah, this because you just one. make me skeptical about whether or not you've read. <laughs> Like, well, the dog Theo, like... to be fair, all of us were going to talk about Richard Reinen, uh Labour Fniesen, the G would... German philosopher. Like, we, we were going to talk about all that, but really everybody's too familiar at this point, I'd say. I would be less suspicious yeah. of his education if he had said nothing about these people whatsoever, but just yeah. name-dropping them only to move on. <laughs> now I'm... Like, like the DJ. I, I've never heard of him. <laughs> I like how yeah. the dog in the portrait is like, please, Mr. Drayden, can you please stop criticizing things? I'm really, <laughs> please I'm really hungry. Me. I want to go. I want to go on a walk, and I'm really hungry. Can you please stop criticizing? Things? Yeah, all those books. Those are his critiques. <laughs> and they, then he just starts circling and critiqued his own books because he just, just that <laughs> keeps going, critique man. My first book of critique. BC with Aristotle, if not earlier, and I basically end up repeating a lot of what John Dryden had to say about mm -hmm. criticism back in 1677. Ooh. Okay. Uh... Oh, in the first place, I must take leave to tell them that they wholly mistake the nature of criticism, who think its business is principally to find fault. Criticism, as it was first instituted by Aristotle, was meant a standard of judging well. So uh, John Dryden. Uh, it doesn't really need to mention it because we're all very familiar. Yeah, um, we all know. This is just for those in the audience who didn't read uh, John Dryden's uh, preface to State of Innocence from 1677, which is the 77 edition know, is the best one. Required I would say. reading for EFAP. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you haven't read that, there will be a test. Uh, just so we're clear, <laughs> pick it up. So um, yeah, you wouldn't download of a judging book. well. You're not supposed to just be looking for things to hate. You're supposed to be judging well. Yeah, solid.
again because time is a flat circle. For the sake of the video and my own sanity, I'm gonna try and keep things relatively focused around like the last couple of decades at most. Okay. And currently, criticism is not really seen in the best light as I alluded to earlier. And I think that's- Is it not or did you just say that? It's not seen in the best light. So he's, that would- Criticism as a concept? And, and, and doesn't this get confusing in terms of like, this is just my perspective. You just made a claim about everyone's perspective, didn't you? Mm, it's not seen yeah. in the best light? It's like, it's by his, who? By it's you? his perspective that it's not seen that's, in the best light. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Remember, it's just his... Uh, <laughs> the way I see it is that everyone sees something bad in the way that criticism is seen. But that's just the way I see it. Yeah, I wouldn't want you to take that personally. <laughs> but, <laughs> Steel Man mm. is, like, I guess he's associating the term criticism with, like, the legion of YouTube people who are making very similar videos that maybe are somewhat surface level on the Part subject of the problem or whatever. I don't know. With that is that we're dealing with thousands of creators at this point that I'd be like, which ones? Mm. And yep. it couldn't possibly be all of them, mm. right? We got fucking voices everywhere for everything now. If mm. anything, you know, it's kind of a golden age of criticism, question mark? I don't know. No. The other day, I uh, I saw a video by someone. I don't know. I clicked on it. Uh, it was named titled like uh, Guard Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is like total garbage or something. <gasps> and I really like. Okay, okay. It's, honestly, I was like, I really disliked that video, but not because it was negative, but because how utter BS it was. You know. Oh, you had and bad everyone arguments. picked up on it, right. It's it's made for algorithm. It's made to be dramatic. It's made to be over-exaggerated, and it's made for that. And I think this guy is criticizing those exact people. But well, so the, the problem is not with the negativity. It's yeah, about how stupidly exaggerated it is. Right? Technically, Cinema Wins and Sins openly admit that that is their goal, that they're going to be making videos that yeah. either celebrate or rip down a film just for the sake of that, not for the sake of, like, I don't know, representing it as best as they can, or for, as he put it from that quote, judging well. They're just trying to, because like, uh, this this is more of a fundamental thing that kind of sucks. Is the uh the vast majority of audiences when watching reviews aren't necessarily looking for a brand new change of uh, uh point of view on a film. They're more so looking for affirmation, which uh, happens with a lot yeah. of content. You know, it's not just criticism; it's just everything. You want to hear your own perspective said back to you, and even you know maybe even better support than you had it previously. But that doesn't mean that people aren't out there to also hear things that are new, change their mind, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I think I'm with you with the whole, like, the problem is not negative or positive, it's insincerity? People yeah. often, people exactly. often hear that people, you say that some people are often looking for confirmation bias out of videos like that, and people often take that to mean that if they hear something that doesn't line up with their opinions, they'll click away, which I don't think is very true. I think people are pretty willing to stick around and hear someone out, so long we as it's certainly not, like, are. objectionable straight off the bat. <laughs> Yeah, we hear objectionable mm -hmm. things immediately, and we continue right to the end. Well, We're all okay. Accuracy. Yeah, if you if you say something that I think is really dumb or wrong or whatever, and I don't like because it's inaccurate. Well, it's because it's inaccurate. It's not because you know I didn't like it. Yeah, you you don't want people saying like you know I hated um, Finch because Tom Hanks was not Finch. You'd be like, well, no, but he was. Tom Hanks I was indeed have... Finch. <laughs> not my Finch. Not my Finch. Some people out there the poster. The some people out there will hear that and be like, what is he talking about, Tom Hanks is Finch? It's like, it's a real film. Google it. Tom Hanks is Finch. And you can't stop him. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, can't take that stop. away from him. In the best light, as I Finch alluded to earlier. And I think that's reflected by its first definition on Google, Google powered by Oxford Languages, which is the expression of disapproval of someone or something based on perceived faults or mistakes. Yeah, this I think is this is one sense of the word. Mm-hmm. And so it's commonly used, yeah. Sort of broadly what's being implied when most people say the word criticism. I think this is what they mean. It's like it has this inherently negative intent. I mean, people usually, if you're looking for the neutral vision, a lot of people say analysis. That's what the impl Like when you use that word, you're like, oh, so it's going to be a breakdown. It could be negative, positive, or both. When you say criticism, most people assume negative. And this depends on linguistic context mm -hmm. more than anything else. Like who you're talking to, the setting you're talking in, what specifically you're saying determines how the specific word, like which of the two senses it's taken in. 
I don't think people just default to thinking they hear the term criticism and they default to it being like a scathing critique of something on a on every level and saying like it's terrible or whatever. That depends on the context of what's being said and when. It could be said that we've gotten to a point where it's just assumed that it will be negative. I don't think that's too much of a stretch or anything. It's just that uh as far as I'm aware, the core definition of the word means that it's open up for positive and negative, right? It's what Fringy was I mentioning so. earlier, that most people say constructive mm -hmm. criticism as if to imply that without constructive, it will be negative. Which, um, yeah. yeah, maybe that's not the way that it should be perceived. Maybe it should just be perceived as like a neutral term for a process. And I'm sure but, you can find a lot of examples of me using the word in that way across videos on this channel. Again, I am a hypocrite. I like some Lars I'm, von Trier and Harmony Kareem. It's a perfectly valid sense <laughs> It's okay, of yeah. <laughs> if, um, it's one of the think, meanings of it. If there were ten times for me to be able to use it and two of them would be referring to positive and eight negative, that wouldn't make me hypocritical on the word when I think it should be neutral in terms of positive and negative. I would just be like, it's all right. Words don't necessarily just mean one thing. In every context. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing. This, and they change quite quickly depending on culture because we're all oh, a bit yes. weird with that language stuff. Word in that way across videos on this channel. Again, as someone just pointed out, yeah, constructive criticism can be negative as well. That is true. Supposed to, the idea is supposed to be that it doesn't just, sh you know, rip you down, I guess. Well, the, the goal is to rebuild. To, yeah, tear it down. After, yeah. yeah. I am a hypocrite. I like some Lars von Trier and Harmony Korine films, and I still call out American Horror Story for being tasteless and exploitative. We can do this all day if you want. However, I think that the second right. definition of criticism listed on Google Powered by Oxford Languages is more reflective of what criticism means to me. That being the analysis and judgment of the merits and faults. I'm sorry, I'm going to be so annoying about this. It doesn't mean one or the other to you. It means both of these things, depending on when and how it is said. That is true. You don't just pick what like yeah. words aren't. You don't pick your talent tree in the word. You don't just pick <laughs> one, and you know the other one's gone forever. Yeah, yeah that's why Google shows multiple definitions. Yes, for it's different words. contexts. Google's in on and they're crazy. often um, ordered by how often they'll be used to mean the thing. Right, that's usually how yes. it goes. How long yeah, was that? They specifically have archaic definitions tagged as archaic definitions. Hmm. I'm not sure how this is helping, but. We'll get there, I think. Alt of a literary or artistic work. I've never personally subscribed to the idea that it is a critic's job to tower themselves above a piece of art and scour it for every flaw, like they're the fucking Eye of Sauron or who something. Is, who, is, who is this? Who said, who is, who are you um, talking about? I don't know. Who are these people? <laughs> it's, 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 sometimes you just want to wipe out, you know, an extreme just in case. Just in case. It's like, I don't think criticism should be a dinosaur eating someone. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but, like, it's allowed to be, right? Someone could be the eye of Sauron looking down well, on yeah, the media, you know? You think to yourself at first, your first reaction is like, I didn't say or think anything like that. And then you're like, wait, but what is wrong with thinking that? What is wrong with... Is there anything wrong with... Because the I implication think... is that it's wrong. I think he's confusing us with that food critic guy from that rat movie. <laughs> but the thing is... I, I like that people that like that exist. That's fine, you know? That it's their prerogative, dude. It's, um, well, it's what we were talking about earlier. As long as they're sincere, as long as they're, they're accurate, those are the main thing. If he's only ever negative, that's still fine. Or at least it can be fine. Depends. What's going on? Imagine he only ate from really bad restaurants. You just got really unlucky, you know? He's trying to tell you the truth. Be like, oh, you're so negative. And I've also never really liked the idea of a critic groveling to a piece of art either, like Wayne and Garth. You started this We're video. You started mm. this video being like, "Oh, this is just my opinion, guys." That's that's basically what that is. Like they can do this too if they want. Yeah, I was about to say this is actually okay too. <laughs> you find a piece of media that you genuinely just adore on every level, and you have the highest respect for the craft. What's wrong with going and like giving it this sort of positive attention? Hate to be repetitive, but as long as they're sincere, as long as they believe in this stuff, as long as they really, really feel that, and they just tell, they're not doing it just because they're like, if I do this, a lot of people will click it and give me views, <laughs> which is hard to know. Um, you can kind of grasp it sometimes when they just feel fake or whatever. But yeah, go out there and praise the fuck out of things you love. I don't care. We're not worthy. 
To me, criticism encompasses everything, much like the yin yang or the yin yang, or however you want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer frustration <laughs> for you. <laughs> uh, why, man? <laughs> you just kept talking. Listen, Theo, reviews don't like have to encompass yin-yang. everything. That was <laughs> just in case you thought that they did. You know, like, Damn. the things you like, the things you dislike, the oh. things you like about the things you dislike, and vice versa. That's you an know, interesting nuance. interpretation You meet a piece of art where it is at, okay. and engage with it on its own level. What does that ever mean, really? I know what people engage say all the time. That on its own level. That's one of them intuitive statements. Engage with art on its on its merits, on its own level. Oh, it's like, is that what? what people mean when they say, oh, it's like, a, it's meant for kids or something? Don't criticize it, it's meant for children. Uh, I bet that's it's what they're going engage with. Engage with it on its own level. I, I really feel like if everyone who ever said it was to detail what they mean, that we'd have a bunch of different answers. Yeah, that's a lot of things mm. that a lot of people, a lot of video edit essayists say. When you're like, doing a video like helpful? this, it feels like you should have less of those and more of the details, right? Mm. Piece of art where it is at. You engage with it on its own level. You create your own interpretation, and then you express your perspective as best as you can. That's it. No. All right. Uh, <laughs> that's that's quite a sure. lot. There's quite a lot in that. I mean, I have many questions, but it's fine. We'll just be like, all right. That is criticism. It feels like whichever way you slice it, positive or negative. Is this uh, Animal Crossing music? What's what's this it, from? It's got that vibe. It does have that vibe. Yeah, that soft, it, does very, anybody, does anybody in chat know what this is from? I'm just curious. I do not know. Criticism is really about validating art. It's about a critic saying, I see what an artist is doing, and I am taking it seriously. The art form is important to me, so what the artist does with it is equally important to me. But let's be honest. Mm -hmm. All right, that was a lot there. I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Um, about, like validating the art. And, like, like if that's... they see something they find offensive to the craft, then what? Well, you know, like meet meet the art where it is. Focus on what the artist was trying to do. But with all this, I'm just like, or you could just fucking, you could just, you could just rant about whatever's coming to your mind. Because that's mm. kind of the point of art, right? Is to make you have a reaction. Hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> I can totally man. see him making that video where he's like, "You need to be more, uh, you know, you. You need more you and more your heart in there. You need to just express yourself. Don't worry about how the art was made or who made it and how." What if just what if talk the about is in their heart though? You know, what if that's yeah. all they've got? Oh, you know. <laughs> well, so I'll subscribe. How does being negative takes away from that, from seriousness and taking it seriously and? You know, knowing what artists well, is doing. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't believe that. Maybe, uh, maybe he believes that the negativity is also baked into that as well as positivity. Mm. Mm. That is not how most of us see criticism, especially not on YouTube. Whether it be the commenters okay. or the creators, we just seem to flock to negativity and cynicism here on YouTube. You know, obviously there are some well, notable here on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, if they're on YouTube, not just like... I mean, it just YouTube feels like he's general. describing humanity, yeah, like, and isn't... Well, yeah. it's just, yeah. I'm pretty sure that this is just, like, true, right? Humans are more receptive to negative information because it's often beneficial to be more receptive to negative information. Like, if you're yes. receptive to negative information, you will counter potential threats to you, which is just a good... That's just a good strategy, right? Like, well, dealing think... with problems, seeking out problems and solving them is better than just being, like, nice and chill, like, and always looking for... More positive information. I could be wrong on that, but well, and and to be fair, you're not saying that it's definitive that to focus on a negative is to uh, be beneficial no, or whatever. No, it's just I, that I that's probably more than that. or possibly yeah. how it would have developed. Well, it's just is why it... why is there more bad news than good news? You know, a lot of the time, why is the stuff that people pay most attention to in headlines something that's bad? Well, yeah, why isn't a headline all of the pipes are currently working? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. It's, Good. it's always like something that's going wrong or something that's contentious that people disagree with. Uh, like, you know, incendiary or, yeah, just stressful, concerning. That's the ten that's the kind of information that often gets uh, disseminated and gets a lot of attention. 
couple exceptions, people do like positive commentary every once I fucking hate this. As if, as if there's positive commentary on movies throughout YouTube. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I, yeah, I don't even know where to begin. Like, yeah, but these channels, they're mainly positive or even exclusively positive. It's like, okay, is that bad then? Like, by your own metric? My biggest personal pet peeve is when, again, when people throw around the word like masterpiece and perfect. And like, a lot of people might, you know, disagree with this or find this offensive. But when I say The Last of Us, okay, I haven't seen the show at that point, but. It was like one or three episodes in and there were a bunch of like video essays and criticism or not criticism, video essays popping up in my feed saying that it was perfect. It was the best like in, in its genre and stuff like that. The show was three episodes in. How can you make such ambitious statements based on three episodes? Like it does not matter if those three episodes were perfect. You're saying the show is perfect and it's the best. How can you make that judgment based on like the third of its first season? And, like, that's I mean, so blown out of proportion, in my opinion. I mean, in fairness, people also did that with Velma after the first two episodes were out. <laughs> well, that it's the worst show in the history of shows? <laughs> yeah. You're like, how could yeah, you know? You've yeah. only seen two episodes. Yeah, It gets really better from here, guys. What's kind of funny about that, to me, is that the Velma one feels more reasonable because it's harder to maintain quality than it is to maintain disaster, right? It's just like... Yes. yeah. Just kind of how it works. And, and, yeah. Yeah. What, what, if they fucked up the first two episodes catastrophically, then that is a sign for the rest of it, I think. <laughs> so I, I would you say... It's a sign, yeah. yeah, I think... <laughs> Wait, did you say you think something? Oh, I just... I, I just yeah, I mean... There in that case. Go I think ahead. Velma was actually so catastrophical and so <laughs> bad. I think it was not, you know, that hard to make that judgment. But The Last of Us could have turn, turned out anyway, you know? It was good from the get-go, you know, we can argue how good it was, you know, whether it was perfect or whatnot, but, you know, well, we it could have changed. Um, it could have gone either way. We, we weren't willing to say anything about the show as a whole, really, until the last credits of the last episode played. <laughs> we were like, alright, now we can talk about the season as a whole. Yes. Uh, with... With this, though, like, he, he's already set out, at least it seems to me, that, like, too much focus on negativity. And it's like, though there are people who engage with channels who, uh, you know, are much more positive, and, like, it's almost, you know, he's got ripped these channels. It's seen as a, a negative that they're not producing content as much or not at all anymore. But I'm just saying, you're like, well, wouldn't this just be the problem in reverse if they were exclusively positive? Or are we okay with exclusively positive? I am assuming we are. That seems to be the position a lot of these people kind of take. Is a lot of them have that position. It's like it shouldn't just be negative, and it's like it shouldn't just be positive either, right? And then they'd be like, "Well, no, that's well, okay." That, that damn toxic positivity, you know? Oh, I fucking hate being overly positive for no good reason at all. Like, <laughs> just it's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Positive analysis <laughs> does still exist. It's not gone anywhere. No, it's the, no, this it is hasn't really... disappeared. That's well, we exactly would be seen right. as probably an exclusively negative podcast or something. It's like, oh, we got so many like explicitly hyper positive episodes breaking things down, but I'm sure many people don't even know or who are, you know don't watch the show. And that goes the same for so many different channels. There'll be channels that are. I imagine Drink is seen probably as exclusively negative when he's not. He makes loads of positive coverage, but. Oh well. Cynicism here. It's kind of like highlighting the negativity bias not only explains why the content's created maybe with a bias to negativity, but it also seems why it's perceived that way. The bias would work that side of it too, right? Like if a creator puts out, you know, five positive and two negative, but no, sorry, five negative and two positive, a person might come away with saying like, God, you're always just always negative. Like, no, there was positive stuff there. You just didn't really remember it. <laughs> yeah, people are very quick to typecast both content and the opinions of people just out and about. Yeah. Here on YouTube, you know, obviously there are some notable exceptions. People do like positive commentary every once in a while. And of course, there are other correlations like just the general popularity of what's being reviewed. You know, if your favorite creator makes. It's so hard for me to take this seriously when it's been known forever that the sort of shill side of YouTube, right? Like the. The newest Marvel film coming out and everyone raves about it and says the most amazing thing ever. That's that's a very profitable side of YouTube. It's a very engaged with side of YouTube. Mm. It's not just Marvel, of course, it's everything. Like the new, you know, Fast X just came out. There's going to be plenty of videos that say that it's fucking amazing. And it's just like a, 
adrenaline fueled fucking wonderful adventure that everyone oh, should check uh, out. It's it's almost like right. um on the so... on the opposite right side right of like negativity bias. There's like hype culture of getting really really fucking excited, you know, for like the new thing that's coming out. There's well, they make memes too. like uh what was it um when Ant Man came out it was like Ant Man is the best uh, MCU movie since was it Wakanda Forever? Yeah, the last one. It was <laughs> it's the, like the, okay, the best one since the last one. Um, I can't wait for the Flash. Yeah, which like, will what's, what's that's oh, gonna be? Oh, it's gonna be amazing. And you will get what every opinion on that. You'll have people saying it's the worst movie ever. People saying it's the best movie ever. We've already got people saying it's uh, fucking amazing. Which. How you know. the hell no does that motherfucker still have a job? I don't know. Nobody knows. <laughs> yep. I don't know. It <laughs> baffles the mind. Of course, there are other correlations, like just the general popularity of what's being reviewed. You know, if your favorite creator makes a review of a Star Wars movie or a Marvel movie, you can probably... Why did you say favorite creator and then put up Chris Duckman? If Chris Tuckman is your favorite creator, <laughs> you are a very dull and boring person, and I don't wish to associate with you. Wow, Rags. That's cruel, just because Chris Tuckman is cruel and boring. No, boring and what was the other thing he said? Cruel? No, I wish he was cruel. <laughs> cruel is like an emotion, or a, some sort of a, it's a little flavor in life. He's just very... there. He's he, uh, very just, neutral. He makes videos that exist. He's, he's made some of the videos. He's one of the time. movie reviewers of all time. One of them. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I do not not like him. I don't know. He's, he's I fine. I don't like him. <laughs> I dislike him. Well, I'll say it's, but I don't like his work. I, I, I'm i fine with him. Yeah. He, uh... Yeah. Probably guarantee that's going to get more views than some random indie film no one's ever heard of, but... That's that's very... Because, that's uh, just right, normal? That, yeah. I guess he's saying that, like, though. Is he just saying, like, yeah, that's how... That's also... Like, this is a caveat, right? I guess so. I, I, but, like, what is this, um... It seems support like it's go kind against. Of like beyond, I guess, it, yeah, is it meant to, I think he's saying like, um, you know, there's like exceptions, right, of people who just be interested in popular stuff anyway, regardless of whether it's positive or negative, I think. Yeah. But I mean, that's kind of like, popular stuff is more popular, right? Like it's a little bit well, it's for me, just like, was, was this... Was the, this fruitful as it in? I don't know. We'll just keep going. <laughs> in general, I'm, I'm generalizing here. Mm -hmm. There is something that we just love about watching a creator absolutely dunk on a film or TV show. It's. You guys ever watch yes. someone who's very talented do the opposite? Like, explain yeah, why something is really, really, really good and how enjoyable yep. that can be? I just feel mm -hmm. like there's. Um, there's not as many people who are ready to do that or know how to do that. Well, it's just, it's interesting, right? Because he had the example of uh, um, Every Frame of Painting. Yeah. So that was a really popular channel. Mm -hmm. Like, those those, those mm -hmm. videos got a lot of views. And they get views. spread like, around, posted everywhere. Obviously, you know, like, negativity is, like, a thing that people will, uh, the, the, it, it's a thing that gets around, but, like, positivity also gets around, too. Like, yes. I, mean, you, you, I mean, you see it, like, on Twitter sometimes, right? When, like, a particular portion of a film or, like, a film in particular, like, it, it just gets everybody excited and happy about it. And then they'll start talking about all of the things that they liked about it, sharing art for it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's definitely, like, a positive feedback cycle as well that exists. It's just that um, it might be something that you, you gotta... You don't even need to look for it sometimes. Well, because it's like it's just there. It's super really interesting you just said it that way because yeah. that that's not even considered. I doubt he considers like a huge community on any forum sharing their passion about um, a movie or a TV show to be positive criticism or anything. He probably doesn't even associate it at all, even though that even though that's huge and he, that's all part uh, of it. it but, which I guess is also odd though, even though he has like the definition that he prefers for criticism that are just like neutral. Like, I, I guess it's almost like, why isn't it reflecting in, like, the kinds of things that he's able to find or that he pursues or that just make his way to him and then he notices and pays attention to, you know? Mm -hmm. I made that kind of video about Megamind, and I was like, this video is not going to do well. Like, nobody's going to watch it. Nobody will care. But, like, people loved it. People did watch it. And, I mean, I, I talked didn't. about it very, very positively, and people, people watched it, and it, it gets views. Positivity, I mean, exists on this platform, and there are quite a lot of positive people and content creators, but people, you know, guys like this don't want to admit that. Well, yeah, people yeah. have been when, mentioning when Arcane came out, I could not 
look at my oh, YouTube yeah. feed for like a day without seeing three or four video essays from channels I've never heard of and never seen again. Just talking about why something to do with Arcane is really good. Yeah, anything, almost exclusively that, positive like, coverage of Arcane. If oh, anything, yeah. all that does is really highlight that um, it, it maybe maybe the broader umbrella for what people are looking for is something that's like exciting, whether that be like hyper positive or hyper negative. Something that's like as opposed to just you know this film was pretty mediocre, you know, five out of ten, and it's like all right, on to the next discussion about a film that's like really mediocre and lame and not interesting. Right, it's like maybe maybe there's a, a broader umbrella. Well, there's that and like, the the, like, the uh, reaffirmation thing. Um, Arcane mm -hmm. was yeah. loved by people, so people are seeking out and people videos find that people... celebrate it. Um, yeah, fucking... and maybe find out new reasons to like it. You know, Quantum Mania yeah, comes like... out, and everyone's like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> like, they yeah. want to watch videos tearing it apart. Yeah, I've in personally enjoyed Arcane... many reviews. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, in terms of Arcane, I had so many like requests in the comments, like everyone was begging for me to make a video about it. But the reason I didn't make it is because I, I just felt like I could not say anything more because there was so much positive coverage. I, I felt like I didn't have anything to add to the conversation. There were so many things being said and all of them were positive. So I was, I'm glad for that. Yeah, it's it's like, like I, I like uh, looking at reviews for... Uh... Puss in Boots too. It's a super great movie, and yeah. I enjoy watching positive coverage on that movie. So many same positive things about that film reached me long before I ever saw it. Just yeah, from same. The positive feedback loops. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had friends telling me to see it immediately. Yeah, there's I'm no like, what? Where's the this video? Offshoot movie, huh? Where's the video where someone says film criticism should not be positive, and they talk about how it's insane how something like Puss in Boots two, despite being a movie that yeah it's good, but like everyone's calling it a fucking masterpiece. And, and going nuts, and, and then he, he goes to Arcane, then he goes to some other thing that's praised to hell and back, and, it's, and you know, eventually concludes, like, we need more negative viewpoints, we need more balance, we need more understanding of the art form, we need to meet the art where it is, instead of just celebrating it exclusively, just for the hell, you know, like, it's like, nobody's ever gonna make that video. Nobody. And maybe you should examine that, and why. Why is it that we, uh, we consider exclusively positive stuff to just be a, given a pass, and work that way? twofold you know we either want to see a critic just absolutely tear a film to shreds or we want to be in the bloodbath of a comment section just going at the critic for daring to criticize something that we personally love it's like i don't really know it's just like this primal urge to just go off there are a lot of factors so nothing new people like to talk I mean, about things I mean, nothing new just I can't get over the fact that it's just like, why is this about the recent years of yeah. YouTube? It's just this is just all time. When a person is enthused one way or the other about something or another, they feel the need to tell someone. I almost feel like you need a meme of just two two very early on humans. One of them just eats a berry and says, Man, do I love <laughs> these berries? And the other one just looks at him and frowns. Those ones suck. <laughs> all kinds of shit tasting berries. <laughs> yeah, like these ones are better. <laughs> at play as to how we got into this storm but before we talk about any of that there is a very important series of videos <gasps> that absolutely need to be brought up oh, oh no. everything this is one of the most annoying oh. talking points on the internet oh i think it ruined man. it yeah well we'll see what he has to say about it i guess the Plinket reviews will always be brought up in any conversation about online criticism, and that's for good reason, you know? It, obviously, there are other pioneers like Lindsay Ellis or other people at... Uh, not like Plinket. <laughs> I, I, I found the issue in quite the same way. No, uh, no, I'm sorry. Not, not, not the same as Plinket. Uh, YMS no. <laughs> should be mentioned before Lindsay Ellis. Channel mm -hmm. awesome, including even the nostalgia critic. No, no you got that backwards. <laughs> nostalgia critic yeah. and maybe Lindsay. This is so pandery. Like it's almost like a uh, um, a reformatting oh. of history. Like yeah, nostalgia critic was hyper influential. Not Lindsay Alice. She came. She copied him, man. Yeah, she used to work for him. She was the nostalgia chick. She she yeah. created videos in the same vein. She she's talked about how she didn't even like having to do it. I'm pretty sure, anyway. Um, the, this this is silly. <laughs> like nobody likes to acknowledge it, but yeah, uh, Doug had a huge influence on how people reviewed media. That is true. Same with Plinket. Same with a lot of the early creators. Mm. Lindsay Alice, um, 
I would say her, like, more so, like, she became much more popular way later. And there are other adjacent channels like Cinema Sins that we could talk about that are playing a hand in how we see criticism today. Nitpicking is not criticism. Uh, Nitpicking is not criticism, man. except it literally is. It is. That's exactly it literally what it is. is. It well, can't I, be anything the, else. The, the way to you have to trans. Nitpicking is something that isn't criticism. To translate this to, I assume someone like him, it's just you'd start real small and be like. Hey man, it's the one I did in fucking TFA. Be like, the lights are flickering when they probably shouldn't be. Let's just say a light's fucking faulty on set. Then you'd be like, um, that'd be a nitpick, right? And he's like, yeah. And you'd be like, and you mean a thing that shouldn't be mentioned because it doesn't mean anything, right? And you'd probably be like, uh, yeah, sure. And be like, why can't I mention it? Why can't it be indicative of a grander problem? What if the movie is filled with sets that have broken things in it or like, you know, outfits that are all fucked up or inaccuracies and it's just indicative of how much they didn't care when making it? And you have quotes from the actual creators behind the scenes saying, yeah, man, all the fucking bulbs weren't working and we just didn't give a shit. U ultimately, we just want to get the lines done and get out of here. And if he was just like, well, you, you st still... Nip I hate the whole nitpicking conversation. It's, uh... If you mean stuff being said that doesn't mean shit, just say that. Nitpicking should be saved for just small criticisms that are valid. I think the problem is that nitpicking is such a... It's like a... It's it's just... It's a doomed word, really. Like, it's, uh... It's so laden with, uh... Baggage. Well, it's, um... The only problem with, like... Because I, I get... I'm on board with the idea of we kind of just don't use it, but... Every time they use it, it's like, well, what do you mean? And it's like, CinemaSins, well, the, exclusively nitpicking. And it's like, well, no, CinemaSins does no, bring up some valid stuff a lot. The big problem with CinemaSins they is do, not yeah. really nitpick, it's that they, like, they have inaccurate, like, they're just inaccurate a lot of the time. And then often they'll That's default the back is, like, yeah. yeah, but it's memes, it's comedy or something. <laughs> like, right. they have a lot of weird, it's like, some of them are apparently deliberately false, some of them are meant to be jokes, but, like, it's hard to tell. And so it's hard to understand like what you're meant to be pulling from those videos. It's not that they're nitpicking. When you know, like is. if you spot like a boom mic in uh, the room or something like that, and then he's like, "That's nitpicking." It's like, okay, what? what, what? Am I not allowed to point that out? That's pretty funny. Endlessly frustrating habit of beating around the bush in terms of the critical sphere, where people are desperate for anything other than just talking about the actual points, because you can talk about proportionality if you want say, mm. you know, a point, this point doesn't matter that much, it's not that damaging overall, like, I don't know, there's a boom mic in this shot, but, like, that's not good. I don't think anyone would say that's good, but it's not exactly a film-destroying issue. You can say that really easily, but for some reason there's this compulsion to go, no, that's a nitpick, therefore it's invalid. And I have no fucking idea why. I think it is because, like, using nit nitpick as a, as a criticism of somebody else is a good way to kind of, like, broadly invalidate whatever they're doing, you know? You're just nitpicking. Doesn't it you're get... nitpicking, right? Doesn't so, it get incredibly yeah. funny, though? It's not that that was a nitpick, it's you're nitpicking. You if know? over, let's say, half an hour, someone makes 100 points, and 80 of them are substantive and 20 of them are nitpicks, and then a person watches that and says, you're just nitpicking, what have they done to that work? They've mm. just nitpicked it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the cycle, it Ooh. continues. Ooh. And then you start to realize, wait a minute, was it just humans all along? It's like, yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. That's just our thing. About that are playing a hand in how we see I, Yeah, I, I, uh, there's no way that we would ever disagree with the idea that Cinema Sins has had a hand in, you know, influencing other creators and possibly even movie making. But I've always hated the the Doom version of it, which is like Cinema Sins destroyed the film industry. Cinema Sins is mm -hmm. like, shut up, shut up. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. What you find directors and writers promoting, if ever, videos, they usually promote the video essay types, the 20 minute ones yep. to talk about a particular That's subject. Right. Never see yeah. a director saying, like, Cinema Sins made an incredible video on my film and I will forever be, you know, <laughs> like, I will do better. The only one I can think of is the guy who made Kong Skull Island. He said he fucking hated Cinema Sins, didn't he? Yeah, see, I'm pretty sure he, he, he shit on him. I remember um, Anthony Hopkins shared a, a video essay, but it was about his acting in Westworld. It wasn't like. It was positive. It was exclusively positive. I'm trying to think of every time I've ever seen Mike Flanagan shared video essays that are exclusively positive about you know Haunting of Hill House and Bly Manor on YouTube. Like I, I just I never see a director saying like, "Oh, that Cinema Sins. He's he's got his finger on the pulse of film. He knows what's going is, on." Cinema Sins mastered the algorithm, and people are pissed about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. It appeals to a common denominator. People enjoy I, I, like. 
I've said this before. I think it was one of uh, it's a stream we did on Jay's channel, but I never really liked Cinema Sense, and it was mainly because I was like, "But that's not right. That's not right." Either. And and someone would have said like, "You're not. You're not. Uh, you're not consuming it the right way. This is supposed to just be for fun. He's just trying to find things to comment on, things to poke at, and just to have some fun." And I'm pretty sure the creator would even say that. But that for me, that wasn't enough. I was just like, "Yeah, but it's the jokes aren't funny to me because they're inaccurate." So it doesn't work. I'm not. I'm not having fun. And then, the, obviously, the criticism doesn't work at that point either. Um, but there's plenty of people who loved it for that. It'd just be like, I'm watching the movie again in a quick format, and he's pointing out some stuff. It's kind of like honest, honest trailers. They just make jokes. I'd say pitch meeting is now probably the greatest version of that format of running through a thing again and pointing out the main, uh, I guess, uh, eyesores or points of praise. Does pitch meeting do praise? Or does he only do criticism? Well, negative criticism. I don't I know. <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, someone in chat will know, but because uh, I, I only ever know it in a context of negative criticism today. Nitpicking is not criticism, and even CinemaSins would not argue with me on that. But I don't care. Let's just not yeah. kid ourselves at all. Let's not even pretend. Define nitpick. Like, the Do Plinket it. reviews Coward. are not the <laughs> template that we are all working with. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I love the Plinket reviews. Do I think that some aspects of them have aged poorly? Yes. Do I think that what they sometimes the, uh, function? Title, what was the title of this part? What was the what's the title of this uh, part? Plinket ruined, ruined everything. everything. Plink, plink, yeah, so, that's it. He, ruined he everything. Oh, so it's not going to be Plinket's fault, right? Plinket's the good one, but like it's all the pale. That's what they tennis. always say. They say yeah. that Plinket was funny, insightful, blah blah blah, and everyone copied him and forgot the insightful and funny parts. Right. They always okay. say it's a cope, by the way. <laughs> like, there are plenty of people directly influenced by Plinkett who are funny as fuck today, if not funnier. I'm sorry, it's just true. Even if it was true, that's just a natural consequence of more people being able to do the thing. It's um, it's kind of weird because uh, depending on what circles of the internet you go to, Plinkett is seen as like a fucking idiot monster who ruined everything, and like prequel fans are not fans that's of uh, yeah. Plinkett. Use. Do I think that some aspects of them have aged poorly? Yes. Do no, I think that they sometimes point. function better as comedy than criticism? Also, yes. But do I also think that they are some of the best videos on YouTube and that they're often hilarious and insightful and that we as a platform owe a ton to these videos? 100%. But they ruined absolutely. everything. But, but, but I think that the Plinket reviews have given us a very limited and warped perspective on what criticism can be. Uh, as if... So what, what can it be? As, but oh, like as so if boring, anyone watches a Plinket yeah. review and goes, ah, this is criticism. This is what it is. There are no other ways to do the thing. I found it in the test tube distilled down. This is pure criticism. <laughs> the, I think he just wanted to find a nice way of saying he ruined everything. That's, he's trying to keep to the, 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 the chapter. I just wish Which I he was never born. I don't necessarily think is the fault of Mike Staklossa or anyone at Red Letter Media. I consider it more of an unintended consequence, just like how when Mike said in the Star Trek 2009 Plinket review that J.J. Abrams would be really good at directing Star Wars movies, I don't think he thought for a second that would they ever manifest itself yeah. into reality or that it would come in the form of something like The Rise of Skywalker. I mean, he said all of this, so... The Force Awakens? Yeah, he did say that. He, he couldn't believe years ago he said that thing, you know? He obviously since regrets it and does not rate J.J. Abrams as a director much anymore, mm -hmm. nor does anyone else <laughs> after what's happened. <laughs> it's like I don't think Mike grew up watching Star Trek and thought, one day Captain Kirk will roast me on Twitter. My point being that I don't think that the Plinket reviews were some sort of diabolical scheme to I mean, warp nobody the perception. Does, so Who the fuck? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. who yeah. are you talking about? Who are these Never. people? I'd like to meet. He them. always bats down these insane people. <laughs> <laughs> like, that we, like, yeah, that guy's wrong. Who the fuck was that guy? That's like, oh, isn't that a joke in Community? Frank, we've talked about it before, but. Uh, oh, Jeff's like political be... thing where he's, yeah, that's he's right. he points I'm out people saying. in the audience, names them, yeah. and talks about their story. But everyone he points to is always just like, uh, who, what? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just he's pointing vaguely at the crowd, but nobody knows who he's talking about. Yeah, he's not talking about <laughs> anybody. He's making them up. <laughs> but <it's... laughs> of online criticism. Uh, no, really the Plinket reviews first and foremost function as catharsis. What kind of, I guess- That's all reviews. 
That's just, yeah, people are looking for someone to share their opinion or someone's looking to share their opinion and get it off their chest. And then you can go even more fundamental. We like it when we meet someone else and they go, hey, I think thing is thing. And you go, oh, I think thing is thing. Me too. Yeah. And then the brain uses the good chemical. Woo. We should, we should form a tribe. What's <laughs> inspired you to start doing these reviews? Well, the, the very first review is Generations. Yeah. Um, I... I was a huge Next Generation fan as a kid, you know, growing up and whatnot. And when I saw that... Look at how young Mike is. And full Mike of life. Full of life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's so weird to look at him when he's... Before you know, the dark he times. Like this and before the alcohol and the best of the worst started to <laughs> kick in. Oh, boy. Movie in the theaters, I just, I hated it. Yeah. So I had a lot of free time and I just said, you know, I'm going to make a video detailing all the points about why I don't like this movie or why I thought it didn't work. Yeah. And, and so I made that and I just made it for the intention of just for myself, just just to do it. Yeah. And so I put it on YouTube and it started to get good. Momentum. Yeah, it started to get momentum and people liked it. I was like, okay. But when the copycats naturally emerged, they didn't- Name them. Name them. You fool, do I'm, it! I'm Coward. curious uh, if any bigger names you would consider a copycat really take away his genuineness or his authenticity. Something Mike himself mentioned in Plinkett's The Star Wars Awakens review. Well, yeah, but that was very controversial. It didn't go down super well with a lot of people because the implication is YMS is in here. And it seems like what they took away Going was that is... catharsis is not simply... Yeah, see? And it's like, YMS is not a fucking Plinkett clone. At least he isn't, like, <laughs> his not best stuff. Isn't he? Nope. If you look at his Lion King review, like, that's not, like, Plinkett at all. That's, like, a whole other totally thing. Different. So the implication John. that um, he's downstream of, of it is just like, mm. And, and I'm happy, by the way, to concede. Two... I'd be happy to concede the influence. Like, if YMS, I'm sure YMS thinks Plinkett has made great videos and was influenced by it, but, like, let's not. Let's not do it this <laughs> way. Is everyone influenced by Roger Ebert? Is that where everyone comes from for criticism? Is that the core? Or did he get influenced by someone too? And, it, and then everyone can get drawn back to, like we said, Og, judging that Barry. And the thing is, I mean, I don't like the fact that we're criticizing people for content creators for, you know, mimicking, like not mimicking, but like being influenced by others. Because, I mean, I'm not that, you know, I'm pretty new to YouTube and I mean, it's it's much easier and it's the only way you can do this thing from the beginning, right? You just start, you know, doing what you know and what you've seen other people do. And you uh, slowly start to, you know, find yourself with this. You start, start to find your voice and the way you speak and the way you edit. And it's only natural that you are being influenced by what you've seen, even if you don't intentionally do it. I've noticed that with my older videos. Mm. Like, when I look back in my first video, I can't even recognize myself. I can't recognize the way I'm speaking, my voice. Like, it's so obvious that I'm being influenced by other creators that it's I've been watching years before. Interesting you say that, because as a couple people have pointed out, there is, if you go back to the earliest YMS videos, uh, they're like Plinkett's, or at least he's his goal is to try and um, create similar uh, yeah. format sort of stuff. And mm. um, I believe uh, there have been influences like that with a lot of different people we've had on, uh, on even on this podcast, that they'll start out um, primarily influenced by one person. And then what happens, like, it did, like that lasted, what, like a year at most with YMS? For, for a decade, he's had such a unique, uh, his, his, his format at this point, like what he does. Blinkers is his and... You know, and so on. I've, I've said before, like, uh, Tall Biscuit is one of my bigger influences. And you'd be like, how? And it's like, well, that's a great point. It's at this point, my, my combinations of different influences have changed into a, its own video. That's just what happens. Mm. Um, find yeah. its advice given yeah. in pretty much every creative field. That's, mm -hmm. that's definitely how I, I started out as well, influenced by other yes. people. Like, my, my early videos were very, very similar to I Hate Everything's stuff. Mm -hmm. And then that's how it was for a while. But then you develop your own voice and you kind of make your own style and you kind of branch <laughs> off from that. Well, at least most people do it. Well, and like. you eventually realize you're just describing, oh, that's just how it always works. That's always how that's it how works. works. And yeah. every art what's form. kind of gross here is that we formatted this to say all of these people copied Plinkett but don't have the sincerity or the, the um, sort of comedic value. And it's like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that seems a little Damn. bit harsh. They didn't really take away his genuineness or his authenticity, and it seems like what they took away was that 
Catharsis is not simply a function of criticism, but that it is criticism in its entirety. The blanket review. It can be. Catharsis if you want to make your video that way, go ahead. It, in its entirety. Yes. If you want to make your video exclusively, like, I'm fucking pissed at this thing and I'm just going to shout at it. It doesn't even matter. Like, uh, if, like, if someone says at the end of your 10 minute rant about how TLJ is terrible, that you weren't exactly very balanced, <laughs> be like, okay. Wow. <laughs> you got me. Funny I wasn't. That. I wasn't very bad because I felt a particular way. Um, yeah, and I just don't like the idea. Like, this feels gatekeepy as hell suddenly. Yeah. Mm hmm. Reviews unintentionally lessened the scope of reviewing films into. But I don't understand whose fault is this? If someone makes a rant and someone else does it and someone else does it and then the guy watches those three and then says, wow, so this is criticism, isn't it just that guy's fault for being like an idiot? Why would you assume that if you've watched several negative videos in a row that that's what criticism is supposed to be? I don't understand yeah, how we ever break out from any... Again. How do we break out from any format? How does anything develop if everyone just only ever sticks with what is currently the thing? Well, I, I'd love yeah, to start asking him, like, what are your... Boundaries to do new things. It's so funny that he credited Lindsay Alice as one of the most influential and, like, major uh, contributors when she, like... She was a branch of Nostalgia Critic. Yeah, that's just factually wrong. I mean, she started her, like, when she picked up as a single YouTuber, it was much, much later. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it, it, she became her own. Because this is the thing, I've seen plenty of videos from her that I thought were very good. Uh, I think her Hobbit videos right. are very good. But, you know, like the idea that she she's a, some kind of trailblazer that wasn't, you know, a direct, literal copycat is just like, I don't know, man. Feels like we're... We're picking and choosing who we like and yeah. don't like. You know, because mm -hmm. I don't like Cinema Sins. None of us uh, we've ever covered him thought that the videos are really good, but I don't like the idea of locking out the idea that there's nothing sincere or insightful about his videos ever. Like, yeah, mm. his videos are bad, but I would never discount the idea of, like, the good version of his videos that are out there that he just doesn't do. Um, I would never discount those, or and I wouldn't want to discourage people from doing those. I mean, that's film criticism. It's really frustrating to me because it's like he's... the legitimately just trying to invalidate people's feelings. Well, does it not come being... across that he has a selection of approved critics, a selection of disproved ones, and he's like, you know the problem? Is those ones, the disapproved ones. <laughs> They're ruining everything. Yep. You're like, not gonna oh. say who, though. It's well, interesting video. Tell happy me about to shit them. on cinema sins. Everyone is. No one considers yep. that controversial. <laughs> That's safe. It's safe <laughs> to do that now. It's okay. You know. This template of just shitting on a film for the entertainment of the audience. What's wrong with that? Which yeah, because it's funny. Which is like... fun. <laughs> It's, it's fun, man. Please tell me what's wrong with it. It's Look been a at form Lindsay of comedy Ellis. since time immemorial. This is most viewed videos. Or maybe take a look at Jeremy Johns, who admittedly only exists on this platform as he does today because Jeremy one day Jones. he decided to massively rip into Transformers 2 on camera. It's like they took the plot of Transformers 1, ripped it, beat it to shit. So Transformers had a first date with Mike Tyson. That movie was horrible. Or maybe we could look at Chris Stuckman, one of my- We have to? Oh, oh no! Like, uh, <laughs> oh <laughs> no! <laughs> What's he about to say? Like, he's gonna say, he's gonna say on the platform. A ton of his most viewed oh, videos oh, are hilariosity reviews, where he just tears apart hilariosity. and laughs at the failures of filmmakers. Why do you think he bowed out of the negativity- Because he's becoming a filmmaker and he doesn't want people Crazy. to do what he did to other filmmakers, that's why. Because he doesn't want to talk bad about other people in the industry. Yeah, which is another good point, too, and that's actually not exactly unwise. It, 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 to to yeah. get away from being like, Boogan, I hate this director, and then they're like, yeah, that guy has an agent that is working with this, and they're connected to that producing this, this, and they just don't like you at this point because of that. Yeah, I love the idea that again. he's framing this as like, you see, Chris is going to stop criticism because it's bad for film. Well, so he's like, shut up. He's trying to get into the industry. Of course he's going to stop randomly ranting about movies. That's not gonna help you get into Hollywood, is it? Ugh. It's, um... I love how this video turned slowly into, why are people having fun? <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Why? A lot of videos that we covered do that, where they start off like, oh, it's just my opinion, I just thought that love and happiness and hugs and kisses, and then you start getting into the video, and it's like, this is why Hitler was correct. And we're like, whoa, <laughs> whoa now. Chris is why gonna. Do people, why do people tell stories about you know some annoying shit that happened to them at work or whatever? Why are they being so negative? I don't get it. Chris is gonna make his video. The 
something Oaks, Belby Oaks, I think, it's supposed to be a horror movie. When he finally makes it, there are going to be YouTube reviews, and he is not going to fucking like it. He's going to be like, mm. and uh, <laughs> but that's that's the rub. That's how it works. It goes all the way around. If it's anything like that fucking notes from Melanie movie, it's hey, be shit. Larry, I that had good. Nothing. It had fo It was in focus. It was in focus. There you go. I could hear the actors. City reviews where he just tears apart and laughs at the failures of filmmakers. Good for him. I wish he'd go back to doing that a bit more. Seems. Like, look at that thumbnail in the top right there. That is an emotion. It <laughs> is He's an feeling emotion. something. Usually, you get the top left one where it's like, oh, that that's that's something. He's feeling something. That's um, not even a face that you put on if you're trying to display no emotion. That's just actually not having an emotion. It looks very it's default. A uh, but so I had no emotion or a thousand yard stare, and I'm not sure which. We, we, I think we had a look at some of his thumbnails before, and some of the expressions he makes are hilarious. You have no idea what he's feeling. He's just like, mm. it's, it's that like sound, but in thumbnail form. Why do you think he bowed out of the negativity rat race entirely? Or you can look at other... Like I said, because he's making his own films. But also, that doesn't chain. that doesn't even seem to follow, right? Why would he? Why do you think he bowed out? Like, look at how popular his negative videos were. Why do you think he bowed out of making negative videos? Like, I do you, think you get what I mean? Like, he wants us to connect like, that Chris realized the negativity sells, and thus he's adding to the negative oh, atmosphere right, and okay. environments. So we needed to stop. No, that no, it is exactly what's been said. It's because it's more beneficial if he wants to break into like the film industry to not be critical of other people's work. Yeah, combined with the fact that he's not looking forward to people saying your movie was shit. And here's my hil <laughs> hilariosity review of your movie. Yeah. It's my hilariosity <laughs> review of your movie. People will do it. There's a <laughs> filmmakers. Why do you think he bowed out of the negativity rat race entirely? Or you can look at other Descendant channels, like Your Movie Sucks, or I Hate uh, Everything, and again, love these guys, I'm not throwing any shade their way- You just yeah, you threw are. shade. That's yeah, what you, you did. Yeah. just did. <laughs> Disappointed you are. You're allowed to throw shade. I love it. I love the, the 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 spidelessness of like you suck. That is just my opinion. I'm not saying you suck. I'm saying that it <laughs> yeah. is just a perspective. And it's like what? No offense, but go fuck yourself. <laughs> no offense, but delete channel maybe. <laughs> the negativity rat race entirely. Or you can look at other Descendant channels like Your Movie Sucks or I Hate Everything. And again, love these guys. I'm not throwing any shade their way at all. But even if it's not reflective of every piece of criticism they've ever given. Yeah. So doesn't this just fuck your entire point up? So it's it's not reflect Like, basically, the, the point being, they make positive and negative, but... Negative is bad. Like I, I feel like this is so awkward to to understand that he even yeah. realizes it. Don't human humans? I'm kind of just lost as to what he's even going after at this point. It, Guys, it's getting very rambly. I'm not throwing any shade their way at all, but even if it's not reflective of every piece of criticism they've ever given, the names alone kind of tell you where their headspace was at. Oh my god! Now you're nitpicking. Names. <laughs> <laughs> You're nitpicking the what is this the like? Wow. The, the, I'm not throwing shade, but their very identity is reflective of like their uh, of an attitude that I don't mindset. like. Or yeah, it's good. So it can't be tongue in cheek. It can't be fun. It has to be indicative of this wider cultural issue that we need to stamp out. Oh. Ooh, fun like, police. My profile picture, whatever it is called, like it's Baby Yoda, right? And it's. Not because my headspace was it's, was at some point where I was like worshiping Mandalorian or Baby Yoda. It was a complete accident. When it became a meme, I just like made it a, a picture, you know. And uh, yeah, and then I never changed it, so it's stuck. Mm -hmm. But sometimes those kinds of accidents happen. You know, they don't have to mean anything. You know, and now you know I don't know what to change it to, so it's it's still here. Yep. So, I think that can also be a factor. It does not have to mean so much, you know? Yeah, well, I think that's some point. Really put a lot of stock in exactly what they call their channel and how they present themselves on YouTube, necessarily. Well, why am I supposed to tell- if you said, wait, Adam, you, you have videos that are positive, even though your channel's called Your Movie Sucks, and it's described as, Liar. I tell you why your movie sucks, you'd be like, 
Uh huh. You're like, but that doesn't make sense, Adam. I don't understand. That's not what the name means. Okay. It's called .org, by the way. <laughs> it's, I don't know why. Like, this is so fucking strange. Organization of movie haters. I'm, I'm, I'm just sat in the corner here, profusely sweating. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, the, the, he called these guys descendants. We're descendants of descendants, so we probably won't get mentioned. I've been around mm. long enough. When Not join the platform, yet. right? Like, again, it's catharsis. It's like when YMS makes a video about the Lion King 2019. As someone who has absolutely no nostalgia or investment in the Lion King at all, when I'm watching Wrong. that video, I am right there with him. I am saying, F yeah. Tear this fucking film apart. Fuck Disney. Agreed. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. I'm oh, curious well, about even, the, even, yeah. even the people that didn't have nostalgia were also with him on that. People, also, I'm curious if he's going to mention the other half of this. Uh, uh, yeah. There's another half to that video. Is he gonna? Is he gonna talk about it? But like, after I'm done watching the video, I kind of just sit there and think, is this? Really, all there is? He didn't mention it. So, what else does YMS do in that video? He doesn't just shit all over. Surprise is the original. He does, a lot. and he talks a lot about why it's so good. Yeah, yeah. And, such a good even, video. What is it? Also, this like is this all there is? What a really well-made analysis of uh, art. <laughs> it's don't just know. it's just annoying to me. Like, uh, he's done the thing he's accusing everyone of. He watched a video that had praise and criticism in it, and he's come away with. Oh, it's so just it's negative. It's so negative. Like, yeah, and the no, no, negativity no. is just all there is when it's literally not all there is. No. Have you considered that the negativity comes from the positivity of something that he loves that it's aping? It's like, come on now. People do this in the positive sense too. You see memes fly around all the time of like sitting down to watch a seven hour video on a game you've never played or whatever, you know? And just being engaged the whole time, just because hearing people talk about things they care about positively or negatively is engaging and it's cathartic in some sense. When he says, like, the voice acting is fucked up in the new one, he'll then play a clip from the old one and explain why that's really good. Then it's like, oh, the, the herd. Do you remember when he talks about, like, how they had to create new technology in order to simulate the herds in the, the herd mm. sequence in the original? It's just like, that's yeah. a really cool piece of information. Oh my God, that yeah, was really impressive. And it's, and it's just like, oh. Why'd you have to be just so negative? It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> Why are you being so negative? Oh, that's all there is. <laughs> that's that's the that's the vibe. So let's see what he what else he says. Like, is this all criticism can be on the platform? I really hate that he no. used the Lion King video as an example. It's one of the best videos for criticism ever. It is one of the best videos. Mm -hmm. it, it's yeah, where's part two, man? I gotta have part two. It's so extensive mm -hmm. using all the and and like its goal as a video is to yes tear down the 2019 disaster, but to prop up the original to be like this fucker. There's a reason why everyone loved it. And it's like, oh, is this all? Also, this is one guy. One yeah. video from one How guy. How many different creators could you rattle <laughs> off to do something completely different? The fuck? Of course this isn't all criticism is. Criticism can take all sorts also, of angles. I really don't think it's fair to have to compare YMS's Lion King video to Chris Stockman's anything. <laughs> Chris like, Stockman's not anything. Kind of <laughs> it, really, it really is not fair to compare them. No, it's mm -hmm. not. Is well, and the idea that Chris Stuckman did the correct thing and stopped doing criticism, it's like, y what, you want us to not have any more Lion King videos from YMS? Really? Is that the better thing to do now? This is what we're stuck with forever? And again, I want to make this as clear as possible that I am not here to just point fingers at all these people and say, You're, you're doing it wrong! What, doing. You just, what, what, I mean, what, 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 you what, 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 did he not so just say they're doing correct? it wrong? Well, that, that is the question. What were you saying for the last couple of minutes? Other and than that. Maybe is this all there is, which is, you know, implicitly belittling what they're doing? Yeah. Mm. Well, and you see, the them. implication was that Chris Stuckman made the correct decision by not doing it anymore. So... I lost the plot of this video so long ago. I just take it word by word, <laughs> sentence by sentence. A, I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know what's picking. going on. Stop it. This is the stand by anything. <laughs> that being very negative right now. Every single thing is this all there he tries is? to mitigate and is like run back a little is? bit. You're ruining the platform! Because 
These are all people whom I love and respect. Without Red Letter Media, without YMS, there is no me. And as I keep saying... I don't even... Is that even a good argument? Like, I'm gonna shit on them, and, but then I wanna say, no, we're buddies or friends, I like them. Doesn't that come across as a strange argument, though, to be like, I'm not shitting on them because without them there is no me? Like, well... Right, like, it's kind of has... That's kind of irrelevant, right? Maybe you're part of the problem, you know? Like, if, if you subscribe to the claims that you're making... There's plenty of negative things that can happen, events and people in your life, that can lead to you being you. Does that make yeah. them positive now? Or neutral? I don't fucking... I'm doing it too, and I'm trying to understand why. All the channels... It's really not that complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like, uh... You just you just saw too many in a row that you thought were really mean to things you liked, maybe. And that just seems to be maybe what, what happened. I don't know. Channels I mentioned and what they create are just cogs in this big negativity machine. Which, speaking of machines, we have to talk about Transformers. Oh, the algorithm. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and negativity That's bias. right. We're going to talk about that nebulous thing called the algorithm that every video uploaded to this platform is filtered through. <laughs> the thing that you've probably heard a ton of creators talk about already. And, and yet none of us are really sure exactly how it works. Like, at this point, I'm not even fully convinced that YouTube knows exactly how it works. But if there's one thing that I know for certain, it's that the algorithm loves negativity. This why do you think you that, that might be? Does it even? Why do you think it might be? A lot of the positive stuff. Why do you think mm -hmm. it might be? Is probably the first is uh is the first question worth it. It just I like the idea that it's like oh, I hate that thing that was derived directly from human nature. <laughs> like, well, that hmm. is the complicated discussion, right? Of like whether or not um the way that a social media platform works enables behavior, or if it's like more of like a feedback loop, you know. Like kind of if a you, self fulfilling feedback loop. Like, probably. Yeah, it's that, like how come my recommended be... sucks so bad? You're like, well, <laughs> the... oh, well I, I mean, I mean a, a more a broadly of like how does social media influence human behavior, or and and how does that human behavior influence what the platform feeds to you, and then how does that then further influence behavior, right? Like, what are the what are the effects of social media right on like the broad psychology of humanity? Has it changed, like, the human psychology, or is social media a reflection of human psychology? You know? It both? Like, it's, it's that kind of question. It's probably both. That just, just makes sense to me. They um, both feed into each other. And which, it becomes again, this huge well, thing. Well, that's what raises the question, right? The algorithm uh, promotes negativity. It's like, does the algorithm promote anything, or does the algorithm just reflect people's interests? Uh, yeah. in what well, like, want to see. How yes. does any algorithm it's start? It's basic human nature. It's probably going to be the most simple version ever of 10 videos go out. Uh, video 3 and 8 have been watched a lot. Alright, put them in recommended. That was probably yep. the first algorithm. <laughs> which which <laughs> one's watched a lot? Put that one in people's recommended because they're more likely to watch people through People like them. that, yeah. Uh, there is, of yeah. course, the question of uh, the objective of basically any social media company with ads as their principal business model is to uh, improve retention. Yeah, they keep want you there. To use the platform mm. for as long as possible. It's the reason why YouTube has skewed over the years towards longer stuff. Longer stuff means more ads, means more retention. Uh, human beings seem to like doing what they're currently doing and the longer that you can keep them engaged. And so it's like, then there's a question of how the algorithm influences the kind of stuff that people will be incentivized to make based on what people, you know, want to watch. The point being, is really complicated. I don't think you could talk about it meaningfully in however much time we have left in this video, presuming that <laughs> the rest of the video is about this topic. Um, I feel like we're only going to get pretty uh, simplistic. <laughs> claims or yes. incomplete claims as we go forward this isn't unique to youtube either i've used this okay, clip sorry. of francis haugen the facebook whistleblower before but i think that the clip bears repeating here and one of the consequences of how facebook is picking out that content today is it is optimizing for content that gets engagement a reaction but its own research is showing that content that is hateful that is divisive that is polarizing it's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. You make videos talking positively about movies. So hasn't he just stumbled across it not being film-related at all? 
Well, that's that's the thing that's sort of been mentioned already, right? Negativity bias in people. It's not like it's some. Does new he mention that or we mentioned that? We've mentioned it. I don't we, think we've he, been talking he's about been it. Very, he's been very focused specifically on YouTube film criticism, which is such a like. I mean, obviously, it's a big sort of part of like YouTube, but like comparative to just all the things in the world that people watch very or pay specific, attention to, yeah, it's very it's it's niche. Um, yeah, it's niche. And that um, but I, I love how. Ahead, I love how, like, um, he manages to say, like, well, uh, people click a lot on negative stuff, so his fix for that and solution is to just not be negative. Just stop being negative, because people click on it. Yeah, like, uh, what is the like solution? People are wrong. The, the answer, I think, is that there is no problem. Uh, this is people being negative uh, when they don't mean it and they're just doing it for clicks. That's the problem. It'd be like insincerity yeah. is the problem, as we talked about before. Is, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where's the section that explains why this uh, needs to change and why this is an issue? Worth delving into now on this is like negativity. Just it's uh, kind of like complicated what negativity means and where it comes from, right? Negativity can come from a place of like admiration for the medium. Somebody could be really mad at a film because I don't know it's a sequel to a story that they loved, and then it did damage to that. And um, and so it's like what what uh what motivates negativity? If you want to define it all as like one word, I mean that's probably worth delving into, right? As like a a part of how people should be negative, you know, Isn't rather it nuts than just like the one should of these not be negative. Prime examples is the Lion King video from YMS, which is just like damn, dude, that. Why do you think he made that video? Because he loves the original. How do, muster, exactly. how do you muster that level of passion, like, uh, for to to like delve into explaining why you know something is really really bad? Like, how do you muster that? Remember, well, he, I mean, he talked about how really passionate, invested. He talked about how we got to meet the art where it is. Like, why am I fucking gone into the audio files and discovered um, yeah. clipping or whatever for, for, for the recordings? How, how much yeah, more can he meet it where audio. it is? And like, yeah, but it's negative. It's like, fuck, maybe that's not the problem, dude. Yeah, but it's negative. Mm -hmm. It's just, that's not, that's not helpful. Positive and negative, it's like, what does that even mean, you know? When we talk about the definition of criticism, we want to get in, like, what is the, what about the degrees of negativity? What's the difference between, like, light criticism versus, like, absolute vitriol? Or the motivations or, like, what you focus on specifically, like, as part of a negative critique, if you want to call it that. What does it even mean for something to be negative? Is it something that has 100% negative criticisms, 90%, 80%? Like, where do we cross the threshold into negative criticism? Mm -hmm. Or is it just the points that are being made? So in which case we shouldn't be looking at like the thumbnail or the title of the video as reflective of the totality of the, the video's point. He... I'm starting to wonder if it's all just presentational to him. If it's all in the presentation of negativity. If you say, and formatting and if you say maybe, criticism maybe. in an upbeat maybe. voice, it'd be okay. It's like, this is really bad. Say... Nah, you, you well, gotta I, do the compliment I... sandwich. <laughs> compliment well, sandwich. Thing, yeah. Compliment sandwich. Tone, tone seems to heavily influence the way that people will read something. Even, even like the order in which you say something can influence... Um, cause like some people are just more receptive to tone than they are to like what is literally being said. Or like body language or something, you know? So yeah, I wonder if you said in a peppy, upbeat voice, like, why something is absolutely terrible if it almost, like, slides under the radar. <laughs> or like you said, CJ, compliment sandwich. Well, I mean, yeah, you have... Job, why must Sorry, why this video on Lion King was filled with compliments to the film? You didn't even mention it. Mm-hmm. What if you're just really dry in your appraisal? Like, I don't know, say, Matthew Matosis or something. Oh, dude, he probably doesn't even realize. I don't even know if he knows what that is because he's he's he, clearly consumed yeah, by it. film I review. Well, I saw some video game, uh, some video game cases on the uh, on that shelf there. So I guess you play some video games. What I didn't. I, just, I mean, pretty much fucking everybody's playing video games these days. That's not... Right, but that doesn't mean that you're paying attention to yeah, video game criticism. That's true. It's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. You make videos talking positively about movies. Nobody panics. But you make one little video about Jeffrey Dahmer and put the Joker in the thumbnail and well, everyone loses their minds. Did they lose Jesus their minds Christ, or did they just like it? What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, and again, the difference is that the show was out and it was, I think, topical at that time and a lot of people wanted to hear about it and many people had. Like a lot, a lot of people didn't like that.
and probably wanted to hear somebody explain why it was bad. So I don't understand really why he's surprised by this. It's, 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 it feels like a misuse of the meme, too. I was about to it say, is it is, yeah. I was thinking, yeah. thinking about it in my head, and I was like, do I want to do a joke audit here of like, because the, the point the Joker well, was his, making his was jokes are when shit. everything goes according to plan, uh, nobody panics when everything goes according to plan is meant to be pointing out that when things play out as people expect or want them to, um, everybody's chill. And the claim that's being made is that like the, the normal state of affairs is negative. Yeah, that that would be the use yeah. of the meme. You'd be the I put out uh you know a rant about every MCU movie, but I decided fuck it, I'm gonna praise Love and Thunder, and it actually made more something. than every other one. I don't know what's going on. Well, I guess that's uh yeah. Hmm. And you'd be like everyone lost their minds. Everyone shouted me for saying that Love and Thunder was good because that's off script. Like that would make way more sense. But well, the positivity is when everybody loses their minds. What am I doing? And of course, it takes two to tango, right? Like, the algorithm would not be pushing these negative videos onto people if people stopped clicking on them. But that's not going to happen because of a little thing okay, so... called negativity bias. Okay. Oh um, my goodness. There we go. Maybe you should have started with this. <laughs> uh, should, yeah, this is a pretty poorly structured. But you're implicitly invalidating them again. Stop it. Wait, invalidating the people clicking things, or the people making the videos? The people making them. He's saying these things shouldn't be like recommended around so much. Even though, yeah, but and and it's so nuts because I would probably have cited the Lion King video by YMS. Like, I wonder if he would include that. And it's like we well, you know he does. It was one of his prime examples. I fucking I have benefited in my life to have seen that video compared to not have seen it. But now I'm getting Absolutely. told that like, oh, it was pushed on you by the algorithm. It's like no, yeah, not, not to go white knighting, but you're being like really rude to these creators right now. Well, remember, they are love... Plinket without the sincerity and the humor. I love how he's invalidating other people for being negative while also being very severely negative towards so many things in his own video, including the title. Well, this is a... I, I'm sh it's a... You know the phenomena of, like, you say something negative, why are you so opinionated? You say something that's positive, hey, good for you. Like, it feels like it's mm -hmm. kind of a similar thing to that. It's all opinionated, positive or negative, but if it's negative, then you're not supposed to do that. Yeah, and it's really fucking annoying. <laughs> well, it's just, yeah, it's kind this of... This is what I mean, where is the positivity bias video? Uh, well, where's the positivity, you know, conversation? It's so annoying that I can be as straight... I mean, this actually applies to us. The most controversial shit is always our negative, it's never our positive. Uh, yeah, that's same true. for everybody, pretty much, right? Like anybody who praises anything is sort of just like, eh, that's kind of normal when you're negative. Wait, it wasn't now like, controversial with The Last of Us. <laughs> well, it's not like it yeah. never happens. Uh, in the same yeah. way that anyone who praises, Even that's not like, too controversial. Yeah, because plenty, plenty, you know, I'd be, we, we'd be fucking lying to say that the world loved that. It, it did better than that's House of the Dragon. Yeah. So, like the, yeah. but like Marvel, for example, like if anybody goes out there thoroughly praising. Uh, any of like, like take the like MOM or, I mean, people did praise like, the people shit out of did. it. People it's did. Uh, like when it came out, that was because again, the hype cycle of people getting themselves super amped up and excited for something is like, it's part of the discussion, I think, should be. So it's uh, it, like, it's, it's all over the place, but like people are seen as much worse for having uh, criticized rather than praised. Hmm. That being a cognitive bias that makes our negative experiences and feelings affect us more significantly than our positive ones. And when you design Might, uh... your algorithm to <clears throat> prioritize engagement, it is going to utilize negativity bias. They might want to I be wonder careful. how much um, of that. I believe this sound, this track is copyrighted. Oh. Yeah, I might want to be careful with that one. Well, rip, stream. Rip. Please. We'll, we'll, we'll see. I guess I'll Probably pause not. a lot and talk a lot if you guys can manage uh, to do I that. I feel like it, was, it would be worthwhile for him to talk a little bit about why people have a negativity bias and maybe, like, the reasons, like, the positive, you know, the, the, the advantages from negativity bias, like, or why it would have arisen. Or how, you know, how much of a link is there between the psychology of, you know, how we remember and filter our positive and negative experiences to film criticisms being negative or positive to movies 
because film criticism that's negative doesn't give me a negative feeling. It's not a, it is a positive experience for me to well, watch a uh, uh, video a that point. is that's negative a, about. Because I mean, think about like storytelling conflict, right? Conflict is negative in a sense, but like, or, or like, you know, when you watch a film that makes you cry because it's sad, it's like you're seeking out quote-unquote negative feelings, but, like, for overall broadly, you know, positive uh, experience of consuming art. Yeah, if, if something bad happens to you, the death of, of a loved one or a traumatic event that happens to you, yes, it will shape you very impactfully, but that's different than watching a video that you enjoy being critical of something in a negative way. That's a positive experience for you. The algorithm is obviously not a human being. It does not care what emotion it elicits out of you in order to create engagement. It only cares about engagement. And when anger and negativity are the easiest ways to do that, that is what it is going to do. And over time, as the algorithm continues to prey upon your cognitive biases, prey this creates on. a culture mm. that essentially attempts at every moment to negate the user's impulse control. I swear. Uh, I see a title that is shitting over something and I think it'll be fun. I click on it. I'm, I'm not like, I'm, I'm, I'm not on autopilot, you know? Give me a little bit of credit here. I also, I don't know. Um, isn't the ultimate solution here then to be like, we can't allow the algorithm to prey upon our impulse to like enjoy things that have a bias toward negativity. Therefore, if we let it run wild and just give us the things that we want, we will not benefit. So we have to restrict ourselves. Like, I don't see what the fucking solution here is from his point of view, but I don't even agree that it's a negative thing anyway. When I fucking watch a movie that I like, and then I see a video that's like, this movie was shit, I'm like, hmm, all right, maybe I'll give it a shot. And then I list the video. It being negative doesn't just automatically get a win from me. Uh, like, this doesn't happen. I don't, I don't buy this. Um, it's oftentimes movies you've never watched, movies you feel relatively bad or neutral on, or movies you kind of hate that these videos do the best with. And then you start to wonder, well... When would that make sense? It's like, I guess if there was a plethora of bad movies? If there's a lot of bad movies, mm. there's probably going to be a higher chance of there being a lot of criticism mm. of those movies out there. Well, that's certainly not Allegedly. happening, so... No, no not, not these so, days. No. This is good stuff. So, yeah, because obviously he great. wouldn't be highlighting this if it wasn't, like, a bad thing that's happened as a result of uh, human nature and algorithm. If it was to do with film being really shit and everyone's getting very tired of it, uh, that... You know, that, that would just answer the question straight away, so it can't be that. Where do you, a lot of YouTube users just see videos or comments that piss them off, and it's like it, it activates something in them and overrides their brain. They don't even think about it. It's just autopilot. They click on the video, you say they so. dislike it, and they yeah. leave an angry comment. What is what, 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 Literally. This is a different topic. This guy is just pissed that people have negative <laughs> sort of feelings and anger. This I think a... he's just going through some kind of crisis where he could, he cannot just take a human nature, which is, you know, it's human nature's part is uh, to be negative. It's just a part of who we are, and it's okay to be that way. I don't know why it has to be such a big deal for him. Yeah, it's like, I'm sorry, we don't make the rules here. It just happens. But he's like, so... This is a different thing, because if this was... If this is what he's complaining about, these videos would not have strong engagement because they're getting dislike bombed by people coming in to write angry comments. Some of the yeah, most getting victimized here by a computer program. Some of the most passionately assholy people are the ones that are like, "It's better to be positive. Why do you have to be fucking negative?" And then they'll go into your comment section, and be like, "Pee pee doo doo head. You're being negative <laughs> about thing. Why can't you put positive?" Yeah, well, yeah exactly. Why? Why? You, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Like that's it's so weird because. Fun. This, long standing as we said, this is this feels like a complete different thing. That if anything could go against his whole series of points so far. Yes, like, the people who are desperate for things to be positive shit all over the people who are being negative about a film. When mm -hmm. it's like, well, they're just being negative about a film. Now you're being negative about them as people. Yeah, isn't that worse? Neuron I activation mean... in this way, just, they don't. I have never met an individual who, like, they see something that has an objectionable opinion in it, like they see a thumbnail or whatever, or a title, and then they go and click on it, they go and dislike it, they go and write a comment, and then they leave. <laughs> I've never met any individual who operates even... in anything approaching this sort of way. 
These are it's, what we call theoretical people. He's highlighting this this scenario where just some hateful goblin person is on the internet. They see this video, it's like Dharma is poopy, and then they're like, "Ah!" Oh. And what is he? What does he think that he's learned from this? Like, see, that's negativity bias. Like, what do you mean? It's like, well, he sees a negative video, and then he gets negative, and so he adds negativity to the video. Negativity bad. And it's like, couldn't you that argue that all that came from him worse. liking the show? That like, would make those videos do worse. I guess he's saying that the engagement of someone clicking on it to hate it is is good too, or like that that adds to the problem. But I just don't get it. At I'm... this point, we're practically advocating to stop being honest about what we think of things. Now I'm just, I guess I'm just thinking about something now. Like, would he like negativity bias? Would would we say that that reflects in like the kinds of movies that people go to watch, like when they go to the theater, or? like actually not at all he's like broaden it out to actively, everything actively go out to well i guess people actively seek out things that they think they're going to enjoy right yeah. when they like pick up a video game or go watch a film and and so it's like oh actively enjoy it's like what does that mean that people enjoy you know the the catharsis of like tearing into something that they dislike that that in and of itself is a kind of enjoyment similar to you know go and watch a film or play a video game but it's it's almost like film criticism isn't treated as like consumable in that kind of way, as like a. Hmm. No, I'm trying to figure out in my head. Sorry. It's kind of. I feel like that was uh, like moving see around. Negative more. movies. People see movies that are like they give you they they're uncomfortable or maybe they have bad endings or they're full of We're talking very about it like yeah like what what is horror games. if not pursuing the feeling of being terrified what which... is uh, playing a really difficult game that makes you mad when you keep mm -hmm. yeah, like people know, would, these true. would be considered negative experiences would they not and then you'd be like whoa 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 they're part of the <laughs> like, yeah they're part of a bit more complicated than that, yeah and you could and then this is this is why it's like really annoying because it's like this is all just normal behavior someone seeing a video that right, says the really thing you like is shit and then you go nah it's not fuck off and then he's sitting there like don't you think you need help like no, no. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is indicative of a wider cultural issue regarding film criticism that stems all the way back to what was his name? John something. <laughs> John Dryden. <laughs> John something. You know it. Uh, John that asshole. Uh, he didn't go that far back, okay? Jeez. Oh no, he didn't go that far back. It was just yeah. Just we don't really mentioned it because. I don't know why, actually. John well, Film Criticism, <laughs> that was his name. <laughs> the yin yang one was the one that baffled me. That one was perplexing. Like, why, man? <laughs> well, it's just, it's just weird. Do you think sure of how you... easy it would be to not put that in your video? Mm-hmm. Engagement, which in turn incentivizes creators to make negatively slanted videos. I hate it. Like, mm -hmm. YMS makes that video because he fucking cares about The Lion King. I, That's I why he makes it. I knew this is where he was going to go. I I'm knew this sure. is what he was going to argue. I really hate this insinuation that these people are just manufacturing their feelings. It's really weird that he threw fucking... A video like the YMS review can only come from a place of, like, sincerity and passion, and you could see that in it, and, um... Absolutely. Yeah, to treat it as anything less than that is, it's it's kind of, it's kind of, it, it is insulting. It's really even got a bad for, why is Lindsay Ellis here? For, what do you... Like, Chris Stuckman making a hilariosity review of the Cats movie is like, yeah, that's probably because that's just the thing to do, sure. Uh, if you told me that it, that was entirely done for the clicks, it's like, I could believe that. I could also believe Chris wanted to give his a perspective on a movie. Most of the time they they come across as all the same, but I don't get why the other two videos are here. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, if you watch Lindsay Alice's review of The Hobbit, it's extensive. Mm -hmm. The idea that she did it for clicks to be negative and stuff is like, ugh, yeah. I mean, and then if he said, and, stuff, like... and if he said, well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that when they created it, they knew that the negativity would be something that would sort of, you know, motivate. They were motivated. They were influenced to make something negative because they knew people would click it. It's like, okay, that's the same goes for positive too. Mm -hmm. That's just how it works. Videos literally incentivizes them through monetization. Making videos at all is incentivized by monetization. Anytime you make a video, yeah. you're going to be yep. getting some money. And you don't know what'll, what'll uh, kick yeah. off? No, you the thing, the thing is, it, it really does depend on the video and the audience. You mm -hmm. can make a hundred negative videos, but the, if the videos are crap, they're probably not going to get anywhere. Whereas if your audience is used to sort of lengthy, in depth analysis of good stuff they will watch it and it will get promoted by the algorithm they're really unfortunately there is no like 
one perfect way to go about doing things. Lindsay Alice has plenty of videos that praise shit that has millions of views as well. Um, mm. Loads of creators do. I just I find this lame. Like they're incentivized to be negative, like also positive, also just making stuff. People are and incentivized the... to do to create things. Mm -hmm. Dopamine hit of watching number go up and up and up. I almost feel sad for him. But... Like you can do that with praise. You can. You look really can. can. Interesting because in this case, it's like he's talking about you, right? He's talking about yourself. Yeah, yeah, because he experienced the fact that his negative video on Dharma as a show got so much engagement that he's now incentivized to keep making negative videos on things. Mm. You I've just don't have to, it. Mr. Monkey Brain. You I've can, watched you don't have the reverse <laughs> happen. I've seen channels that with like fairly low sub counts or viewer counts, and then they make a specific video praising something that's outside of their usual wheelhouse in terms of topic, and it pops off in the algorithm. Gets orders of magnitude more. And literally change the trajectory of a channel. I was yes. my thing was log form breakdowns of video games until it wasn't. It's this Yu-Gi-Oh channel, that's the one I'm specifically talking about, who averages like 250,000, maybe, viewers per video. Then he made an Ultra Kill video and it went to 1.3 million. Damn. Uh, yeah, uh, you can have channels that uh, go hyper-algorithm with two completely different videos, like completely different genres and formats, and it's just like, well, that's how it happened. This idea that it's like, well, now I'm forced to make another, I gotta make another video about another TV show in a negative way. It's like, that's up to you, man. If that's what you take mm -hmm. from this, you go ahead. I imagine that it's not just you being negative about the Dharma series. I'm going to go ahead and say it. That video is probably good. Or it makes some really good points in there. Who knows? And, and and maybe they're accurate according to the TV show and that maybe you felt passionate because you felt some way about that show. And that's okay. It's okay that people agreed with you and found it interesting or maybe were just engaged by it because it was an interesting perspective. Why does it have to be? It's negative and therefore that's why it happened. It's like he's um, ashamed of himself or something. Kind of. Like, this is yeah. his mea culpa video for, oh, I'm not really like this. I know my video did well, but I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I've, never, I've never seen a YouTuber be this upset about doing well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and I do <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's a whole thing. That yeah. is a whole thing. Idubs recently did a new content cop on Idubs. Crazy. And uh, let me just be honest with you here for a second. I'm sitting here thinking, why am I wasting my time making this video about a subject that I'm clearly very passionate about and invested in, that a video that I'm putting a lot of love and care into that I think is important that probably not a lot of people will watch when I could just make eight or nine more videos about why American Horror Story sucks. Um, because like, Different people are motivated by different things. I assume because you're motivated by more than making money. It's because, young man, you see in life, sometimes the things that make us the most amount of money are not necessarily the things that we want to do the most. And so, which way will you go? I was just about to try and be sympathetic, but I've, I'm kind of losing the willingness to be sympathetic with the <laughs> woe is me at attitude towards this when you're the master of your channel. You, do so, you don't want. deserve, you don't deserve yeah. views. Well, doesn't it feel know? like an intro it's... video to YouTube? It's like, you can make something and then it can get high engagement and praise and view counts and therefore monetization, but it could be something you don't want to make. And you go, whoa. Damn. Incredible. So I could make yeah. something that like does well, but that isn't something I'm passionate about. Like, yeah. You know, it's like you can you can like do whatever you want, man. Like, this is yeah. what else can you say to him? It's like you could just you just keep on making whatever you like, want to make. You can make whatever you no, want, the, and also the, the more you the make of a thing, yeah, better, you know, it, it really the, depends how much you care about the numbers. If he's because if he says like I need to make a living, it's like okay, then you're gonna have to do work that you don't enjoy. Maybe you know it's not necessary, but uh, necessarily not, gonna YouTube happen. YouTube isn't the main job you have. Maybe you you know it's okay. You don't. It's not like there's this attitude that if you start YouTube and it's not like your full living, that you have like lost the game of life. If you decide to stop being a YouTuber or to scale it back to do a quote unquote mm. real job, like people think, oh, I've I've lost. I've I like I I I I'm a loser. I could I couldn't make it work or whatever. No, it's fine. It's fine. People quit jobs and leave jobs and get new jobs all the time. It's normal. You haven't lost anything. There are people, it's not a shameful thing. Like 
here's here's the thing as well though it's perfectly fine to keep making negative videos and make a living making negative videos as long as the negativity is at least somewhat like justified sincere and justified i mean that's, that's yeah it's totally unbe like the idea that he's like what do i do just keep making videos about hating and blah 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 and it's like well do you think that this show is bad american horror story do you think it's bad and he says well yeah and they go okay are your points accurate in these videos well yeah and it's like what is the problem uh -huh. Don't you I think that you are contributing money. positively, uh, positively to like film, you know, films in general in the industry? If you make accurate criticisms about things that are bad, yeah. Don't you want to, things to like, you know, learn and grow, and you want it for the best? I mean, don't you? Can't you be negative out of love for something? Yeah, no, you know, want it to do better. I'd want to flip it. I'd be like, so let's picture a world hypothetically where it was the most monetarily beneficial to just be positive, and everyone's being positive about everything. Everything that comes out, everyone's just super positive, everyone clicks it. Any criticism is shut down, ignored, or, or given like the kind of like, ugh, look at that, ugh, gross channel, ban. And it's like, would this be a disaster as well? And if so, it's like, so it's not really about positive or negative, is it? What is it really about? Think about it. Actually, that's like my biggest problem with this like entire concept of like film criticism should not be negative because... At this point, if you are, you know, you are making a statement and we can go down this rabbit hole and talk about it for hours and for like ages about this and circle around it. Right. But like the point is to, you know, get to the point. Right. At some point, we have to stop this discussion and put a period on it where we, you know, draw a conclusion and to get to that conclusion, we need a solution. And there's no solution for this. Like, how can you like fix negativity? You just can't. It's just part of... It shouldn't be fixed. Everything. There's no solution. I think this very concept of this entire video and this title is just pointless. It's meaningless because there could, there could not be any solution because you are, you are basically telling, you know, you, you are um, suggesting a utopia where there's no negativeness. Negativity. What is negativity without positive? Uh, what is positivity without negativity? Yeah. I mean, mean again, is, is it, again, why is, is the negativity okay. necessarily bad? It's like people aren't realizing the, the catharsis of the negativity in a large part, as well as confirmation bias, will also be hearing someone talk passionately about something. People like that, generally. I just, uh, it's been a fundamental for me for a, a while of just, I, I do want to like have a one-to-one -one with people like this sometimes just to be like, so... You know, give me a bit of praise, and then what is the flip reverse of that? And then eventually we, we get to a point where I'm sure you'd agree, like, yeah, negativity is important, and it's, uh, if that's how we format it or categorize it, and they'd be like, and so what about a video that, or what about a film that's almost exclusively that? And you'd probably be like, well, that's not possible. I'd just be like, all right, give me some writing praise in, you know, fucking MOM I'd probably pick. And just uh, go through it until we basically figure out that it is possible to get to a point where the majority of the things you say are negative about a thing, and that you genuinely feel it, and that you feel it's important to get out there for overall like discussion or whatever. And if, when he eventually concedes fully, that video is fine, it should exist, it's sincere, it's even maybe funny, uh, whatever. And it's like, okay, so now what if there's like five of those? Now ten, now fifteen, now twenty. When does it get to the point where you're like, oh no, culture's been destroyed? I just don't see it. And uh, it's really hard to buy when we've got so many positive videos out there. To the point where, you know, people highlight it as a problem as well. Mm -hmm. Right, like, it, it feels like we're only looking at one half of the, uh, the equation. And maybe be able to pay my rent, or crawl my way out of debt. Now... <sighs> um, I'm... I don't know, man, like, you, you're... Spiraling. You're... Your financial <laughs> decisions are yours to weigh up and measure, and... I try to avoid being in debt. I don't know. Hey, right, imagine I said to you, like, I fucking hate how culture incentivizes me to kill people. I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> whoa. <laughs> and I go, listen, okay? It's not really, like, I need to make a living. There are bounties out there. There are hitmen opportunities, dark web stuff, and I need to put food on the table, man. You know, like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, I just, like, what? Like, I, I nearly went a month without killing someone, and I was, I was having ramen noodles. I, I was living in a box. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I to do? You know, like, yeah, I guess there's just no other option, man. You have to make videos that you hate about things 
like you hate making them and you have to be insincere about how you hate something. What's going on? When did we decide that that's the only option in society? I feel like it's it's this combination of your dream job, but there's only one way you can do your dream job, and it's not the dream way of the dream job. You know what I mean? And so therefore, it's like you're in the option. I love how this entire stream just turned into like one-sided therapy session for this poor guy. Kinda. It really feels like it. We're like, just yeah, like, man, it's okay. Uh, I don't know. I guess just learn how the world works i suppose <laughs> sorry that the things you want to do the most are not the things that get you the most amount of money because we're not talking about money versus no money we're talking about different amounts of money that you get so it's not an element of you know it's all or nothing uh i just hmm. uh, i've heard this a lot and um i just want them to admit the you I, i'm willing to be sympathetic to some degree all right like you really want to make this job work that's like the thing yeah. you want, but you know yeah. you could make one of five videos and f all five of them are things you kind of care about, but one of them is the most negative. And you're like, well, I guess I got to make that one because if I want to make the most money, that's a smart decision to do. And then I next week you're like, oh, here I go again, making another one that's negative and again and again. And y y like, I understand it, but to some degree, I'm just like, man, you're making these decisions, okay? I, I think that's uh, something that's worth emphasizing is like when it comes to, because of course they talk about, oh, the algorithm incentivizes this. It's like, there's a lot of things that you are... There are a lot of things that you could do that could get you more views and make you more money. But I mean, you're not making all of those decisions because ultimately at some point, right, there's what you want to do will be more important than how much money you want to make. Like at some point you reach that. And it's worth sort of reflecting on, right? Like if you, if it really upsets you like to do negative criticism, like if it actually makes you like deeply like um, unhappy to, uh, to like do that kind of thing, um, you can always just, you know, you can Don't always do it. Do it what's more positive like you can skew it towards the things that make you happier even if it means less viewership but i mean that's the trade-off right like you might make less money but i mean i mean wh like what is the proposed solution to this problem because it says film criticism should not be negative but i'm pretty sure he said it a couple of times in this video like oh well yeah but i mean nothing's gonna change so, like <laughs> what's the point then you know like what 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 is the what's the takeaway then what is the individualist message that you can but, pull away from this video but he still hasn't made a single good argument for why negativity is itself a bad thing yeah in the first place well, yeah, the, the closest <laughs> he got that. was that it's like a self-fulfilling cycle that the more negative we are the more it shows us negativity the more we uh, like almost convinced that negativity is the only like thing that. that's there and then we more we search it out it's like okay we still haven't gotten to the core problem though have we it's, it's because it's almost baked into it negativity is bad right it's like i mean it depends on what we mean by negativity because like, as we talked about right we're exactly yeah, and it's like, oh, well, what do you mean? Like, why do we need to define those terms? But I mean, it's like, it might be worthwhile, because, like, bad and negative, they're broad. And as we've talked about already, right, people will seek out seemingly negative experiences from the art that they consume, be it, like, frustration, sadness, melancholy, um, like, uh, conflict. Um, a good example would be maybe, like, attention. Like, it's, it's not fun to feel, but in the context of um, storytelling, where characters well, are dealing with something difficult, or... Even as simple as two people who are breaking up as a relationship and you're like, woof, I don't like this, but you do mm -hmm. like it. Oh, I mean, even, you know, exercise, right? That's strain. That's like putting strain on the body. Um, but that's like a that's like a broadly positive thing, exercise. Um, even though it it comes with like effort and challenge and difficulty. Um it, it feels like that we need to be factoring that into the discussion too of like defining clearly what we mean by negative. And differentiating between negativity that is valuable and useful and negativity that is just totally and utterly destructive. Yeah. And it's not even as if negativity is some Faustian bargain with the devil that will guarantee you more engagement. No, you're no, right. It's not. not. There are loads of channels that die when they're trying to be exclusively negative. They're like, I don't get it. Why isn't it working? Mm -hmm. What can you say? channel I just mentioned before, the Yu-Gi-Oh channel, the Ultra Kill video was nothing but praise. He just heaped praise upon the game for like an hour or so. And did? again, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh channel I mentioned earlier. Okay. Uh, he just like he just went off just praising the game because he sincerely loved everything about it. And that was that was the video. And it was by far the most engaged thing he ever made. I was about to say yeah, didn't and um... it's like I feel like people can feel your passion enough to just be interested whether or not your video is negative or not. You people know? love yeah. it when people talk about things passionately. You'll it's love yeah. hearing... passion, mm -hmm. right? It's exciting, interesting, engaging. And engaging can can be positive or negative. 
And passion can be negative as well. Yeah, really, 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 really yep. sensitive. There's a huge hate. spectrum here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so because something I don't buy right uh, is the the point could be made eventually that well, whether or not you agree that negativity is is a a thing on, on its own, like categorically, it being the only thing available, would that not be considered a bit of a problem? Like that could be something that we may agree with, but it's just like, but there's no way you could convince not, me that that's not, the that's case. Impossible. Well, you, it, it, it just isn't, is it? Unless it's not. Yeah. Was also negative. Which, well, so, I mean, it is. That's what I was thinking about, right? Funny. Check this out. You got. H Bomber guy, his video, which I thought was bloody brilliant on uh, Sherlock. Pretty sure that's like hyper engaged with. It's got. I'm trying to find it. Where is it? Sherlock is garbage, and here's why: 11 million views. It's like fucking hell. See, negativity doing mm. its job. You're like, all right, what else we got in his uh, his listing? And it's like, well, he shits all over. Um, uh, well, he's uh, uh, Ruby. I forget what it is. It's like an anime made by... Is it Rooster Teeth? Like Rooster Teeth anime, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, 5.4 million. You're like, okay. Mm. You know, it's still really, really solid. It's just not as engaged as the Sherlock one. It's like, maybe he needed to be more negative. Fallout New Vegas is genius, and here's why. 8.5 million. It's like, wait a minute. That's positive. Mm. Yes. What's going on mm. here? Perhaps we can observe some other trend here. And then you've got... I think he'll Pathologic oh, is genius, a fucking game that most people have never even heard of. Uh, and don't want to play either. And and he even says in the fucking video he probably shouldn't play it. <laughs> you should look at like <laughs> someone explain it. Um, eight million views. Hmm. So what's happening? How do we explain that? And I guarantee you he'd be like, well, but, you know, there's exceptions. Like, uh-huh. Well, it, it is interesting <laughs> to think about, right? Because I, it was something that was mentioned before about, uh, by him about popular subjects. But I mean, there are some creators who can transcend like the popularity of a given. Like, it's just people are interested in what they have to say about anything. Yeah, if is, it's a good personality that is insightful, you, you know, get, every right? time I watch this video, I'll learn something or I'll yeah, be entertained like, by this guy. I've never heard of it, but I'll be interested because you're talking about it, and and that you know that's a that's a place that people can get to as uh, creators. That's probably the place you want to get to, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, just because this guy isn't playing what, what he's doing. Well, yeah, I mean, I because I would say that this channel strikes me as very much fitting into the mold of the uh, the video essay kind of like, um, I don't not not maybe stereotype, but mold, I guess. Um, mold, yeah. It That's feels good, familiar, yeah. and it also feels like you watched too many Marvel reviews in a row that were negative, and was like, okay. Well, this... what inspired this was probably there was something that he it it, it was enough he made that was that positive, he and it didn't do wise. Oh, that it, actually, it's probably yeah, it's probably more likely that actually than what I was thinking of like one too many negative reviews on on things that he enjoyed. Well, it could but, be yeah, it I mean, could be all of it. It could be that that and the fact that his video is uh his negative video has done well, which spells doom. <laughs> like it's like what what spells doom for the entire world? You know, like what happened? How did we get here where people are receptive to negativity? <laughs> oh no, it's uh, we got to stop it. We got to do what we can, even though it's unstoppable and part of even human nature. Yeah. And ultimately, okay. Sucks and maybe be able to pay my rent or crawl my way out I, of yeah, debt. Yeah, I don't, I don't like these I... appeals either of like appealing to your own personal, like, you know, oh, I've got to be I, negative I, in order to pay the I bill. Get, what if everyone felt yeah. like this? Then I guess we'd have to accept that's, the negative that's, culture. That's like a that's a thing that we talk about right now debt, student loans. Yeah, <laughs> like that's how it feels to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, I'm I just not here for the pity party. I'm I have plenty of respect interested. for people who yeah, admit, like, hey, soul. Um, couldn't make <laughs> the YouTube thing work. Couldn't make it work. I went, I, I'm doing a different job now. It's like, that's all good. But people who were like, I couldn't make it work. So I had to appeal to the algorithm. <laughs> make <laughs> videos that I didn't even I really care for. I had to appease for. the algorithm. I had to bring it <laughs> offerings. Yeah, it's and just I like, like the okay. Idea of like a horror movie where the algorithm, it's like, um, he's just there. He's this big entity cackling as everybody's bowing to him. I picture this you know, like big, slimy, gold. black you remember... thing with tentacles, and you, like, you know, drop uh, a thing. I, well, maybe it's like, uh, because now I'm, I'm just going to squeeze the Simpsons reference in. You remember the big, <laughs> giant, golden Homer? You, yeah. You remember when Homer was like kind of in gold, and then it's just him as a giant going, oh. <laughs> That's the I algorithm. Mean, Each of the jewels of a yeah. video. My brain's just him laughing. 
I bring went to a reskin of the South Park episode, uh, the economy ones, you know, where everyone oh, yeah, yeah, cults everybody. around the economy. You yeah, replace the economy, economy with the, the economy algorithm. is God. Yeah, yes. it's treating him like a real entity. <laughs> like, is it, the economy isn't just made up of people. It's like he's a, a an actual person you could appeal to. <laughs> Make sacrifices to get its benediction. Mm -hmm. It just, it, I guess it makes you feel better if you say it's not my fault, it's the algorithm. The algorithm is our <laughs> shepherd. Like, the economy is our shepherd. I think is what he said. <laughs> we shall not want. <laughs> hey, God, Randy. Randy is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's I fucking one of the love best Randy. characters. South Park, it's, it's an interesting evolution where, like, South Park had an initial slate of obviously main characters who've stayed consistent, but also secondary characters. And the longer it's gone on, the secondary characters just got replaced with, like, tertiary or, like, even non speaking characters who just ended up being more interesting and funny and fit into the dynamic better. You remember, like, how um, it was, it was uh, Stan's uncle, um, Uncle Jimbo. Like, he yeah. used to be, like, a really prominent character, but, like, you never see him anymore. Now it's Randy. Do you understand it's Grandpa? Or, he used like, to pop up. Everyone he did him. pop up. And, of course, Butters, like, became essentially almost, like, a main Like, one of the main characters. I mean, he basically is a main character at this point. Yeah, I don't think yeah. he spoke for, like, the first three seasons, but he had other characters, like, um, other, other characters uh, that were just more prominent, but then they weren't as uh interesting or funny it's south park is an interesting evolution over the course of like what 25 years at this point if ever they decide to stop good. it it's got to be it like still... studied as like a holy fuck what an anomaly to have been that good for that long yeah mm -hmm. the south park has That's managed cool, to yeah. remain consistently entertaining for a very long time um and it looks yeah like, you I know what they're ending through negativity years. Th oh yeah, through negativity. <laughs> through South negativity, Park, South Park didn't often end with. You know what? I learned something today, and then the piano music <laughs> yes. as mm -hmm. Kyle or Stan would talk about the lesson that they learned. Do 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 do. Um, do. Also, I I think I'm I now I'm not going to assign too <gasps> much um uh motive you know behind anything, but I did go to the go to his channel. I took a lit. I took a little look here because I was curious and I had a hunch. I wonder if this plays into one of the reasons um, behind this, or, or or maybe this is part of a trend. I don't know. It's uh, now a lot of this is made after this video, though. I think that you know it maybe before this. Uh, yeah. In fact, let me go back before. Well, no. This video. I I guess looking at looking at this rags in terms of the list of videos, the fatal floor of glass onion. It's like, well, that sounds negative, but that oh my didn't go very well. Was uh, HBO is the Last of Us really necessary? It's like eh, it skews a little bit negative, um, and that's forty three, you know, thousand views. So that's a lot less. Um, so I guess that's that's interesting. Dude, he's got it's a view like called The Empire that... Strikes Back is not Star Wars. What does that mean? What does that even huh? mean? Is it gonna but be? Yeah, go... Is it gonna be literal? Like the first one was called Star Wars. The Empire Strikes Back is called The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> If you um, well, then I went back hours. before uh, before this video was done, and yeah, he's got a he's got a couple that did well, but it seems like the vast majority of the videos here are just not really getting that many. You know, getting the well, views it's, re like, it's real and consistent so. is what we see here. Like some of them yeah. are only less than ten k. You got views, a couple, some of them like three hundred. You got a couple hits, yeah. You got you got your two hits with Chicken Little is neoliberal propaganda. Okay. <laughs> And um, why does American <laughs> Horror Story Asylum even exist? Like, those two did well, than, much, much better than the rest. And then he got the big hit with the Dahmer video, but everything else is pretty low to uh, mid I mean, I, views. I think it's a hell, the, the algorithm, as kind of has been implied in this video, is much more complicated than negative wins. Yes, it Absolutely is. Absolutely negative doesn't well, win. All the, time. the reality is that, like, it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to wrap our heads around how these things work. Like, they're, they're complicated. I mean, they're exceedingly complicated. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. He gave me no choice. I had to put food on the table. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny as well because inherently within the way that it fucking works, like it's gonna be exclusive to some degree, the algorithm. It's not gonna be hackable, so to speak. Uh, you'll get people who can figure it out, um, or at least uh, grab onto something, but nobody who can just like ace it to get to number one of trending every single video they put out. That's not happening. Uh, no way, mm -hmm. no. There'd be people who are doing it if they knew how to do it. 
I guess Mr. Beast tends to like yeah. always. The thing with like, Mr. Beast to... though okay. is probably an understanding of the algorithm combined with he does things that are insane. Like, absolutely right, yeah, fucking yeah. insane. There's like, oh, mm -hmm. it's not like he's doing negative reviews of films. And he's like, I know how to title <laughs> this to get to number one. I mean, yeah. his content is quite positive. So That's yeah, true. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. incredibly positive, And uh -oh. you got to remember, like, how many people can do what he does? There's like, it's so hard to replace what Mr. Beast can do, you know? You can't, well, it, it, nobody in their bedroom is going to copy like, that. Like, I'm going to go and cure yeah. a thousand people's blindness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm go. going to recreate the Squid Game set and send a hundred people through. <laughs> Who else can do that? Mom, right? can I it's use nuts. the basement for Squid Game? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, that's actually really interesting to think about because... Uh, that starts to tap into what is it truly that like when when super positive stories about big events are really popular and it's just like maybe it's just you know interesting crazy amazing things and you're like well maybe it's and then you just label every experience across the board of what people enjoy and you're like oh so it's it's not just negativity and then he'd be like well no but it kind of skews that way and it's like okay so now what <laughs> <laughs> like, what have we learned I can't. I can't Don't wait leave. to get to the conclusion part of this video. I just want to know what he says. Yeah, we're, we're ahead I'm waiting for him somewhere. to answer the get to the title. It should yeah. not be negative. Why? We're running yeah, out so of time. Yeah, so what else do we got to do then? What's the uh, alternative? Able to pay my rent or crawl my way out of debt. Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Wait, if is you this like a piano in... rendition of, uh, is this a piano rendition? This is Pokemon music. I saw someone say, um, the health station thing. I forget what it's called. Yeah, I think it sounds like, uh, it sounds like the Pokemon Center. Is that that one? Or am I thinking? Oh, I think it's yeah, like, that's. Oh, wait, no, no, no. It, yeah, yeah, it, so, it sounds <laughs> like it. It's, or is it a town? It's one of the towns, isn't it? Like, uh. New Bach Town, someone said? Which color it town like is it? From, uh, I, this, this is Which from. Which color town? I, I'm trying to. Yeah, it sounds like it's uh it's Pokemon, but it's piano, which is uh yeah, <laughs> soft piano. Remember, fragile and sensitive, always. Little Root Town. Uh, that was from uh that was from uh Sapphire and uh Ruby, right? That's what has been mentioned. I think. Yeah, I I just noticed. What an interesting your... selection of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wonder how he went about curating the music for this video. Songs he likes. Well. Why? Why? Just typed so, in was, soothing music. Big like, bucket of uh, this big section bucket is of... called negativity bias, which you know, starting your little adventure in the Pokemon world, that sounds like a pretty upbeat and happy sort of thing. First time you, know? you have to take your Pokemon to the fucking hospital to clear. You see all their wounds, and you're like, oh my god, oh god. Uh, that's, what, that's what it's meant to be. This music is playing while a horrified Pokemon trainer watches as Pikachu is on the verge of death. Yeah. Well, you have getting revived. You know... A little Charmander, uh, yeah. you walk out into the into the grass and then you come across a Caterpie and Charmander just jumps at it, bites it in half and then burns the remains, you're like, okay. I, I particularly <laughs> do not enjoy the, the, the image of Caterpies in pain. My For my first trading card ever was a was a Caterpie. Was I, never Caterpie? Played, uh, I never played the, the trading card game. I was never never into it. I just Oh, liked, we uh, never played it. We just collected it. I don't. Yeah, I still don't no. know to this day what the fucking rules are to that Pokemon <laughs> card game. Uh, really something about counters? I don't know. Can, from every person I've ever known to collect those cards has been exactly that. I don't know how the fuck the game works. I just, you know, collect it's just super cool workers, collector's yeah. items, right? Yeah, like collect I'll them play. All. I could, I, I could play Magic the Gathering and Yu Gi Oh and fucking Duel Masters. I could play all that, but no one knew how to play Pokemon. What is, uh, what is, what is everybody's favorite starter Pokemon? Squirtle. Squirtle. Oh, Ooh. hey, I'm so glad you said Squirtle. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's, the, he's the best lad. Ooh, that's tough to say. He's, a, he's an adorable little design, and among the three, he actually counters them both if you give Blastoise Ice Beam. Oof. That's, um, mm. Even though, objectively, Bulbasaur is the best, no. I kind of like them all. They all have, like, they're all, like them all, they're all aesthetically different, and they seem to have their own, like, sort of personalities going, uh, but 
Oh, I don't know. I might go with Bulbasaur just because I think he doesn't get as much attention. And he definitely doesn't. You know, everything is the other Charmander. Dude. Yeah, Squ Squirtle and Charmander. Listen, okay, Venusaur turns as he's a fat old man, while the other two look badass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he I, does I have like that. Venus. I like Venusaur, but yeah, I know like, what you mean. Charizard and, and Venusaur's not the coolest of the three. You know, absolute, Charizard is, is like the is a classic the fire dragon. Then you have mm -hmm. the the turtle, yeah, massive turtle with literal cannons oh, coming wow. out of its shell. Yep. And then Venusaur you know, is, you know, he's neat, but he's like a big toad with this big flower on his back. And you're like, you know, that's that's neat. You know, there there is a man. Remember when Pokemon Evolutions like made sense? No, you know, it uh, seemed like it was a deep too long. Well, well, I mean, been... remember the adventure we went on at looking at all of the yeah. star Pokemon and watching the deteriorate? Because I mean, you know, Totodile, Cyndaquil, like they're really cool. I like them. I like Mudkip. Well, I... Uh, I had that arc, I think it was Pokemon Black and White era. That was that's when I dipped my toe back in and I was like, yeah. Oh god, the oh, ice cream, the chandelier, and the keys. That's when I was like, I think I'm done. I think that was uh that was the one that I that was when I stopped playing. I like skipped those that first, one. That was when I lost interest. Those first two, three generations of Pokemon looked really good, particularly yeah. the first two generations. Um And we're not biased toward it because it's the era that we played. No sir. We're not biased no, toward no, it because it's the I best or anything. I, think I, am. <laughs> I, I definitely might be a little yeah. biased, sorry. I but there was way there. more way more clarity in the designs that they had for the earlier generations. The longer it went on, the harder it was to sort of because you've used up a lot of our really good base designs. Yeah. Like, and it, it got to the point where the crazier. The numbers got really high. I remember seeing this meme. It's like Gen One Pokemon is like collect all the Pokemon, and then like nearest Gen is like, and now it's like six hundred and seven hundred, and people are asking, oh, collect all the Pokemon. You know, well, do I thousand, have to? Oh my Jesus! It's uh, a thousand did you, now. Did you guys? Uh, did you guys see the the one thousandth Pokemon? Mm, like the, post the, the it. Do it. On the index. Yeah, do, I'll find oh, it. I think we 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 talked about it, didn't we? It looks like shit. Let's get CJ's opinion on it. <laughs> Allegedly, yeah. looks like shit. Uh, the last, no. the last Pokemon game I played was Silver, so this is all beyond me. Oh no! Do him uh, the keychain that's, one. That's uh, that's that's oh. number one thousand. <laughs> that's the thousandth Pokemon. Yes. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> that looks like shit. What? <laughs> It looks like a cheese string. Yeah, it's a cheese string, man. <laughs> looks like it a looks macaroni like a... mascot. Yeah, it looks like a <laughs> slut <cheese> macaroni. <laughs> Slutty, Slutty cheese macaroni. string. <laughs> <laughs> What's it called? Uh, Goldengo. Oh, it's even called <laughs> Gold Digger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like how that belt is just a suggestion. It's not really anything else. <laughs> I don't get it. Why would it be like some epic, like crazy? You think a legendary... dragon of some kind, not yeah, you'd this. Yeah, think it would be a dragon. Something that harkens back to the classics, you know? Yeah, yeah. look at how fucking cool Mewtwo was at the 150. Hell yeah! Like, Dang, dude, that guy means business, <laughs> and he can talk and call me names and shit. You know? <laughs> Why? <laughs> no way. What? Okay, is that an actual man? <laughs> you kind of want to see him in motion now, don't you? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Oh, what were we talking about? Criticism? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're talking criticism. about something. Pokemon. Take it away, film criticism should not be negative. Self, if you were in my position, if you were sitting in this seat right now, what would you do? All of this is I'd make just... the videos I want to make. Make the videos you want to make. Yes, yeah, make yeah. the videos you want to make. Yep, son. And if someone says, like, yeah, it's all well and good for you, but I want to make money, it's like, then make those videos! You get yeah, a job! No. Let me think. That pays money! <laughs> no, I, I, like, I, I would go further, Rex. It's like, if you're gonna say, like, I have to make money, it's like, then make the fucking video that makes money! What's the, like, what, what? What's the problem? It's like, but I don't wanna! It's like, then don't! Alright, welcome, <laughs> welcome to the nature of jobs. I don't know what to say. It's so Bye. tiring. <laughs> like, make the video. I don't want to work at the, the, you know, retail thing. I hate it. It's like, oh, shucks. Doesn't oh, that Matt, suck? Do you think you have more joy and freedom in what you want to do at your retail job or making the YouTube videos you want to make? Well, Rags, yeah, I, I wanted to slave away the hundreds of hours with horrible customers and just a dying fucking environment. But you, I, I got to pick that over making a video about how the newest TV show sucks. That That's the truly life-sucking job that I couldn't possibly do. I'm not sure I buy it. I'm not sure yeah, I buy it. You can't put your personality and talent and your own personal spin on things and enjoy the creativity of doing that, then I don't know, man. Maybe YouTube isn't your thing. 
And if you hate it so much, maybe that retail job is better. Just maybe you'll find it more fulfilling. Get another job. The world is full of jobs that you can do. I wonder if he did just make a negative review of all TV shows that it would just skyrocket his channel to a billion subscribers. He should do it as an experiment. See if it works. I don't See think it, it would. Works, yeah. It's affecting me mentally much more than it probably should. Like, yes. every time I go to You've the grocery store... You've admitted to it right there. And I'm standing at the checkout line and I glance over at the tabloids. I see them and I just think, these are just YouTube thumbnails. Oh my god, what? dude. No, you've got it backwards. <laughs> what? No, backwards. Break the conditioning. What is going on? In the beginning, YouTube there was YouTube. And then there was the everything else. YouTube, then there was supermarket tabloids. <laughs> Like, if he was going to say, like, no, I, I know they came first, I just mean that it's just like YouTube, and it's like, oh my god, yes! No way. Uh, I'm like, the, these look like a I'm lot sorry, of my but... thumbnails. It... Oh. Um, that doesn't look the same as those tabloids, I will say. Also, I do find oh, it oh, cringe oh. when they're like, they don't want you to see this. <laughs> Scientists hate this <laughs> one easy fact that sort of <laughs> dentists will hate them. <laughs> It's, so it's all the, the one same simple trick. Okay, Dentists that's different. Don't want you to know. <laughs> these these two things are very different. <laughs> Bush yeah, and cocaine in the White House. I feel like that is very newsworthy. I don't know. Like, yeah. I think he's saying like it's negativity bias. It's like, uh, I, well, I mean, it's a grocery store checkout line. It's the same schemes to try and get you to turn off your impulse control and just say, F it. Kit so Kat be the bar. change you want to see in the world. Make those positive videos bar. that you love. Kit Kats look like in America. Is that what Kit Kats look like in America? Yes. They're, well, they're well, more clear. But yeah. Kit Kats in America. That packaging is very different from Kit Kats in Australia. Mm -hmm. it's oh, really? Browser. What do they look like in yours? Yeah, uh, let me see if I can find. Uh, let me see if I can find just. Uh, well, they're selling. Yeah. Well, they're selling Hershey's. Those this are an American thing. Reese's uh, looks the same. And Hershey's, yeah. yeah. And Kinder. Well, I don't know if it's well, they sell well they sell around. Reese's and Kinder in the UK as well, but we don't. I'm pretty huh. sure I've never seen Hershey's in the UK at least. I have, but it might be what? in like American themed stores. But the Kit Kat one looks different. The design. So now I'm so curious as to what why is it that apparently Australians are more receptive to our version of the Kit Kat like logo? It might to the literally American be one. two segments of the company that made their own logo. I was gonna say this is what the British oh, one looks like. Love, as well. I love Oh, we're comparing the, the packaging of Kit Kat. <laughs> in the country. Yeah, no, I didn't know. That's, <laughs> that's what we do, man. That's how engaging the video is. This is EFAP. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's just... Yeah. He's that's made that retarded do, man. point like... again, though. Like, if we are going to go back to the fucking video, it's the... I mean, Kit Kat wanted to make their rappers, like, more positive and everything, but they just... The, Ugh, the negative they rappers, appeal. they just sold more, you know? So, um... <laughs> He's describing mm -hmm. this transaction as this horror, right? But you just, you're just guy. You come home, turn on the YouTube. And you're like, oh, I just came home from watching that dumb movie, Gooba Gooba. And then someone's like, Gooba Gooba is shit. And you watch it. And you laugh. And you go, oh, wow, that was really bad when uh, Google's parents did that. And, and you go, yeah, and the ending didn't really make any sense. And my God, this, this is the future of the Indiana Jones franchise. Can't believe it. Terrible, terrible. Terrible. Oh, that was a good video. That was fun. And then he's sitting behind you like, that was terrible is what that was. <laughs> you just came home with a negativity bias, and you watched a negative video, and now you feel even more negative about everything. And it's all a big cycle, and that person's going to get paid for being negative. The algorithm literally just hijacked your brain and turned off your impulse control to make you click on that. Who feels like the negative-focused person this in this, this, <laughs> this whole thing? I don't know, man. <laughs> like, I feel I like that... the way he... Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. Um, I mean, too... yeah. Go for it. Go, I... go, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the way he reduces us to like, not as content creators and someone who you know makes content that they're proud of or puts a lot of effort into it, you know, or tries to be creative, artistic, whatever, and reduces that to oh, we're just spreading negativity, negativity, and we're just here to make everyone depressed. Like that's yeah, we're only machine. here because a machine tells us to do things, you know. I mean. He said not take it to not take it personally, but it's pretty personal to me. I mean, I put a lot of effort into what I do. I don't want to well, be. He, just, well, yeah, you know, he treats us like we're all just flesh puppets at a like an assembly line for content that we're not like artists. Mm -hmm. 
when it's you like know? stop projecting yeah, I mean, bro <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just thinking about how negativity bias is like Ares and and Wonder Woman, right? Like he's just whispering into people's ears, make negative videos, <laughs> do it. Well, and then you know, Wonder Woman says, "I believe in love," which you know, I guess that's like the opposite, right? Like that's positive versus negative, and then the algorithm gets really mad and screams, "Then I will destroy you." <laughs> <laughs> that would never. Then I be funny. then I will ignore you. You have. <laughs> And I will ignore you. Yeah, exactly. Like five guys make a video on a video e a thing each, and they all share it with each other. And like, yeah, this bad, this bad, this bad. And then he's just over there being like, "Fuck you guys, ruined everything." <laughs> <laughs> they're like, "Oh, it's chill. You know, we we actually like a lot of stuff here." And he's like, "No, no, too late. You've been puppeted." Them, and I just think <laughs> these are just YouTube thumbnails. <laughs> like these, these look like a lot of my thumbnails. It, it's. It's all the same sh It's a grocery store checkout line. It's the same wow, schemes man. to try and get you to turn Jeez. off your- It's so weird because he's actually Jesus. implied that the YMS video is this. And it's like, dude, that video is yeah. so insightful. Why are you doing this? I think he hasn't seen it. Well, he claims he just... to have just watched it being like, yeah, kill I guess, Disney, I yeah. Guess it's, uh, I guess it's it's more lame that like he doesn't, that because he. It, I'm sure that he did see it, but it's almost like he saw it. And he came away with, like, a very different valuation of that. Yeah. It's, it's almost like he couldn't tell the difference between that YMS, you know, review versus, I don't know, just a, a review that is just, like, cynically shitting on something. There well, is a should difference be, between these things. We kept in mind that he contextualized all of the new film reviewers, including, but not limited to, I Hate Everything, YMS, even Lindsay Ellis, as, like, derivative of Plinkett, but without the sincerity and the humor. Like, that's one of the like most insulting parts of the video for those creators. I'd be like, oh, damn, yeah. dude. Uh, well, now he's just going hard on, like, everybody. Well, now he's saying the solar stuff criticism. that we're all being tricked into watching. Yeah, shut off your brain, watch this crap! <laughs> Why don't you make that's the fucking good. video that's so insightful? <laughs> he's like, I would, negative. but it won't hit the, the, the algorithm, so why would I? Which is so lame! If anything, surely, isn't it... If if there wasn't if there wasn't negativity and if there were only positive videos, wouldn't that in itself encourage us to just kind of shut off our brain and just Yes, I don't think he's ever acknowledged that. Positivity. Toxic positivity. Yeah. Is what that would be. <laughs> don't you know, don't ask questions, just consume products. Just, well, it's just this is fine. It's the this is fine fella sitting in a, a you know a well, fire. That, it's like well, that's not very productive, is it? That thought experiment um reveals that it has nothing to do with negative or positive. Got nothing to do with it's it. It's just what is prevalent. Mm. Which and is a weird metric to determine that something is bad because it's prevalent. And, you know, it'll come all the way back to the thing we said. Most, most important thing, be fucking honest, be passionate, and be sincere. And we should encourage yeah. that. And there are ways to make money on YouTube and engagement on YouTube where you block out all three of those or you go against all three of those. And it's like, yeah, you can. And we should shun it. We should be like, hey, they lied about that or they weren't sincere about that or they blah, blah, blah about that. Which we do, I think. Everybody does it you know, about each other's content and stuff, and that's a totally fine little ecosystem that's happening. But he's just like, no, it's the negative portion. It's like, man, you, you cut out a swath that includes just everything. Your impulse control and just say, f*** it. Kit Kat bar? Hell yeah. Wait, Brad Pitt said what? I gotta read that, and I suppose by deductive when logic... When have you ever read a supermarket tab? <laughs> yeah, whenever. <laughs> Because I've never read one in people, my life. People do. On but, well, yeah, right? but I, I, I'm going to go, defend it, all right? If if they have a front cover that says, you'll never believe what Barack Obama said about Pac-Man, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, <laughs> indeed, did he say? what did he say? The, and only then... thing, at that point, the only thing I'm thinking is, uh, can I find and read this article before the two people ahead of me get their groceries scanned in? <laughs> yeah, like, I need to know. You Google it on the phone, and you're like, oh, he said that it was one of his favorite games of all time, but that he'd never play it again because it's too addictive. You're like, I guess what I'm okay. finding interesting here is, like, this isn't negativity, it's clickbait, right? Like, it's it's clickbait. Yes. This yeah. is more what you would be talking about with supermarket tabloids, is, like, mm -hmm. the most yes. eye-catching, attention-grabbing, uh, not necessarily incendiary, but, you know, often incendiary. It's... It, so, but that's a different discussion, I would say, to, like, negativity bias. Yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like this video is secretly about clickbait, but he doesn't realize mm. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you know what, I think... I, I don't I'm think he knows agree. what this video is about, because, I mean, look at the title and look at it, what he's not talked about. The which pretty should implies a why. 
Yeah, that's yep. a normal well, domain. It's a it's a minutes, so yeah. Who knows? That's true. That's true. Yeah. Get Kit Kat bar. Hell yeah. Wait, Brad Pitt said what? I gotta read that. And I suppose really? by deductive logic, that just makes me a tabloid journalist. No, a tabloid uh, reader. Uh, no. A journalist. Oh, uh, he's saying that that's as what a YouTube he does maker, on YouTube. a YouTube yeah, creator. Yeah. As a YouTube. Um, I'm really, really sorry that you view producing YouTube content in that way. Maybe this isn't the job for you because you seem to be miserable and cynical about it. Uh, and it's your own work. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, it's, I guess it's a damn shame. You don't, don't have to. Oh. You don't have to play into these quote unquote schemes to generate engagement if you don't want to. If it mm -hmm. really weighs on you mm -hmm. like this. You could yeah. do what you want. That makes you happy. You could produce the content. <laughs> you could do you what happy. you want yeah, to be I, happy. I <laughs> I would say there are, there are definitely YouTubers who would count as tabloid journalists because that's yeah. the kind of content that sure, they make. Yeah. But what this guy makes doesn't ca like what we would all make, I guess, and what the people he's talking about that do it doesn't count. It's such a weird comparison to me. The I guess equivalent would be is if you saw a magazine that said um, Thor: Love and Thunder is awful, and you go whoa in big big letters, you pick it up. And it's fucking like 60 pages of arguments and references and callbacks to all these different things. You'd be like, well, yeah, that was, that's, that's I, I was sold a thing and I got it. Like, what, what, I just don't ever understand the problem. As you guys just highlighted, it's like, is he talking about false promises when you get told you're going to get a thing and you don't? Or, like or an exaggerated mm -hmm. version of the thing? Because, yeah, that, that is true. Um, <clears throat> we still haven't really gotten to the title of the video yet. I assume we will. I the hope funny, so. The most... The most it's ironic no thing. The most ironic thing about this video is that it's more negative than any film criticism I've seen lately. <laughs> like I, it's so negative. It's making me depressed. Yeah, kinda, like. it is actually. You're right. This is a very negative video. There's something to consider. Someone up to doom and gloom about. Something to consider about negative criticism is that whenever and this doesn't always work this way, but you'd kind of expect it to. Someone says like this thing happened in the film or TV show, whatever. And that's bad because, and then they give a reason, for example, it's incongruent with this other thing. The implication then is like, so if it were congruent, it would be good, right? Like the, the inherent in a, in a negativity is, is like a, an equal and opposite, presumably. And so that person has their scale and the, you know, anything that qualifies for that would then be positive. Like they're, they're setting everything out. It's not just like, you, I'm almost picturing that he thinks of it as just, you just, you are that monkey with the bone hitting stuff. There's no rhyme or reason or, or scale or intention or goal it's just nothing it's just all we're just we're just swinging around our bats at stuff because that because we've just become so reduced down into negativity wins just like i don't i don't i don't think this is even mm. remotely close what videos are you watching yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if all your video if you if you look at candy bars and you think like oh youtube content and, and it's like i don't know it <laughs> Watch different videos, maybe, or how do you trap yourself in this kind of a rut? How do you get in this ditch of like YouTube videos are just it's just fast food, it's just candy, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not a like a proper meal, it's not substantive. And at that point, you might need to just, I wouldn't mind him doing this, explore what you find meaningful about videos and not because that might be more the actual thing. If he, yeah. if he really hates Cinema Sins, but he really likes uh, maybe YMS, for example, it's like, why? What's the difference? They're both negative. So what's happening? Mm -hmm. Is it because one yeah. of them makes better points, more insightful points, better editing? Who knows? Maybe one. Maybe you need to ask yourself, why am I a YouTuber? That too. Anyway, um, we're going to be done talking about this now. And you're probably thinking, I spent all this time talking about YouTubers and There's the platform the and the songs. algorithm, but, mm. but what about the movies we're shitting on? Aren't they really to blame? <laughs> you know, aren't movies just getting worse? Now, I will say that <laughs> the theme for Animal Crossing Wild Worlds is stellar. I <laughs> always love the theme for uh, Wild Worlds. I would just open that game up and just let it play on my DS. Um, it was, oh, so I'm surprised good. you Animal were Crossing just, just up here. overthrown by the fact that he's finally introduced the idea that films are pretty bad right now. Or a lot of them I was are. too busy thinking about Isn't the crazy? Animal Crossing Wild Worlds <laughs> theme. To I'm just, even, I'm just you know. glad that it's getting a mention. The films have been. I didn't bullshitty. honestly think it would. Yeah, I didn't I mean, think he would tackle this. He thought about it ahead of time. He's like, "Wait, people just say films are really bad, though." 
But what has he got for it? Aren't they really to blame? You know, aren't movies just getting worse and worse? Isn't cinema dying? Maybe. Well... <laughs> Over the course of the past few years, you've probably heard prolific filmmakers like Steven Spielberg or Quentin Tarantino or Martin Scorsese. I'm Martin Scorsese. Hello. Talk about the death of cinema as it relates to things like streaming services or how Marvel movies aren't cinema or how Disney has a stranglehold over the entire market. And I feel like the conversation's already over then. We've done it. All of the most prolific directors of history have said this is an all time low for film. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I mean, that's probably pretty compelling. I, I guess we're still in the negativity portion. For maybe. Yeah, they're, they're only already. saying it because they're negativity bias. <laughs> <laughs> what it produces. And while it would be easy to just dismiss all of this stuff as old people complaining about how things aren't like the good old days. How the fuck could you do that with the Disney versus Hateful Eight thing? But if for anybody who doesn't know, that was basically theaters were told, do not allow Hateful Eight to take up spaces for Disney films, um, or we uh, yeah, will refuse was, uh, to allow you to show the Disney film whatsoever. I think yeah, was, yeah, they, they do that regularly. Tarantino is yeah. 100% correct. How could you possibly phrase that as like, oh, that's just boomers being mad at the modern. It's like, no, that's just like, no, it's, that's it's awful. That he had an arrangement to play his film at the Cinerama Dome, I think it was, for like two weeks. But then it was just another big company basically saying, nah, nah, no, that's our, those are our screens. What's that got to do with like, yeah, new versus old or whatever? Hmm. I think it would be a gross oversimplification to ignore that there definitely is, is like a paradigm Nintendo shift Switch going on Wii? in the world of this cinema. This is Wii it's... music. Yeah, yep. this is Wii music. It sounds... It's not a... I think it's the, the one shop. that everybody uses is... Is it the shop? The shop one is a... Uh, or this is this later the in the shop? Because the shop is like... Do, 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 That's the shop one. This one sounds a little bit different. Is this a... Uh, is this like the Weather Channel or something? <laughs> No, this is top ten know, movies of all time gross. Ugh, idiot. Or <laughs> weather channel. No. Which 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 one is it? Oh well, we'll figure it out eventually. I'm sure <laughs> someone in chat knows. Ignore I that care. there definitely <laughs> Definitely <laughs> is a paradigm shift going on in the world of cinema. It's mm -hmm. been really fascinating to see how something like changing the way in which we consume movies has changed our perception of movies. I think Martin Scorsese, yeah. I'm Martin Scorsese is right when he says that basically consuming movies the exact same way we consume social media has shifted the perspective of movies from art to content. That's how you use YouTube. Um, yeah, so this is complicated, because, like, uh, there's, there's, there's definitely angles here that I'd be more than willing to agree with, but, like, at the same time, mm. great, incredible movies have come from fucking random Netflix, like, you know, deals and put onto streaming. Like, well, and mm -hmm. I guess the, uh, the, the lens of content is, like, a, um, that's, like, a big conversation. Um, I, I feel like streaming is a part of it, but it's, like, it's, it's, it's only a part of it, you know? Um, it seems like, like, franchising in general as, like, an objective, um, seems to become more and more prevalent in the last, like, 20 years, because it's a safer investment than, you know, doing something totally new and original, and how much of that is influenced by streaming, you know? Yeah, because, uh, we get to a dangerous position of, at first you're like, yeah, you're right, it is all, like, fucking sludge everywhere all the time, and then it's like, well, I mean, I don't know, man, like, Arcane was pretty fucking good. You're like, yeah, but mm -hmm. it's created like a streaming environment. It's like, that's not even a film. You're like, okay. But like, they're, you know, everything everywhere at once. Does that not it, it feel like yeah. a film that's like spread mm -hmm. around all kinds of streaming? It just, it just feels always like maybe it's more to do with just we're going to do the thing we always fucking do at EFAP. Maybe it's just the writing is pretty bad right now. That could actually just be it. It doesn't actually have to be because of a, a shift to streaming or theaters getting shat on or COVID ruined everything. It's like, I feel like all of these things don't wouldn't change if if uh, like wouldn't make it so that we only get bad stuff if the writers were real fucking good. So you know, <laughs> Gary said. So it's the audience's fault. It's always the audience's fault. It's the remember it's our negativity bias that caused all this shit to happen. I guess. Mm -hmm. Exact same way we consume social media has shifted the perspective of movies from art to content, which is really a devaluation of cinema and on, on streaming platforms to the level of, quote, content, unquote. That's what it's become 
the goal I of how any much streaming of this is upset that this sort of paradigm and uh, of how movies are produced and shown is Didn't Martin like Scorsese it from the thing. Irishman? That was a Netflix film, right? Yep. It yeah, was. I don't. Th are, you, are you saying like you wouldn't consider that content? You'd consider it, a uh, you know, cinema, right? But it's, I mean, it went straight sure to he, streaming. Is it yeah, I'm sure that he. Maybe he would say yeah, but it's it's it should have been well, in a theater. Uh, are get, maybe <sighs> yeah? Are the old you know are the are the old guard of cinema? Are they just lamenting that the theater is not like the the only experience that a movie can be? I mean, we kind of, of enjoyed in or we've gone through this shit before. Where you know take um just, there's some guy out there who's like man, I fucking hate going to the cinema for all the different reasons a lot of people do. It's got nothing to do with necessarily just enjoying the film. It's just more to do with just the environment, the people, blah blah blah. And then they're like, I've got my projector at home, my mini theater or something, and I want to, I can have my streaming service get me the film immediately, and I can put it up there, and I can I can thoroughly enjoy the film, likely as it was intended. Something that I doubt even Martin would complain about, like if they just, just consumed it that way. And you're like, oh, well, that's in the era of content, of streaming everything. Does that not devalue the cinema? And it's like, sometimes I just don't buy this at all. I get it. When you see someone who's like, I'm going to check out fucking 2001 on my phone on the plane. you are like, okay. <laughs> like, that's, that's probably not a good idea. Um, but, you know, there are films that kind of are fine to watch that way. Who are the, Like, ones that are almost trash. But then there's ones that uh, are much better suited for a theater. But then there are mm. people out there who are like, I don't fucking like watching films in a theater, and that's okay too. Um, you, you, you know, meeting, as he said in the beginning, meeting a film where it's at, I feel like the theater is not the only place you can do that. I agree. Service. So yeah, I, I just, I would rate that the, um, I'm curious if he's going to get to the right and quality of movies uh, as opposed to the advent of streaming taking over and stuff. Well, it's a big part of the conversation, isn't it? is to have Why? as much content available on their platform as possible. Because if doesn't it feel weird I mean, to you guys? That, like, we have such a different... There's so many different levels of quality in this era. To say it's all, like, yeah. the same is weird. I mean, this is, is, this is certainly... This is, an, this is part of the conversation. I kind of agree with it. Yeah. The notion that, like, there was a big incentive for companies to basically pump stuff out, to mm -hmm. buff up the, the library. And now we're seeing the consequences yeah. of that, because now Disney's even pulling stuff that they essentially push through to buff up their library because, you know, it didn't do well. Like, Willow's getting removed from the service. Um, I think Netflix has even removed some stuff from their service, so, yeah, that's definitely... And, you know, obviously the Warner Brothers just yeeting a whole bunch of their catalog, just, like, locking it away forever. That's definitely yeah. feels like it's part of the, the downsides of this current era of, like, content. You know, that content brain sort of focus of studios. Sorry, it sounded like you had something there, Das. Oh, no, I was just kind of wondering, because didn't Netflix just, like, shaft a lot of, like, animated content because it, like, it was too expensive to make, so they just kind of uh, said they weren't going to do it yeah, as much they, anymore? They cut back on a lot of animated uh, animation projects, including, I think, some that were already, like, in development, like, already, uh, you know, yeah. getting worked on. <laughs> because money and we see a ton of landfill forgettable movies being pumped and dumped onto streaming services again and again since X I, bet I, those I love this shit like man to video, how, you know? what, the absolute lack of self-awareness this whole video is about how it's <laughs> fucking wrong to be so blatantly brazenly negative and then he just goes these four movies fuck them Fuck those four. Absolutely amazing that we just did that with no no awareness at all. It yeah. Happens, though. It always happens. Because like, if anyone was ever confused, no, I'm not defending any of these. I've seen Red that Notice. Unfortunately, I've seen this movie. I watched it with rags. Yeah. <laughs> Been dumped onto streaming um, services again. Gray, I've seen the Gray Man. Yeah, I don't think these movies are good, but like that, it's so funny just to see him shit all over him because these don't even count as films, okay? So it's fine. Oh, for a second there, I thought that was the Dawn. See, it says a Russo's Brothers oh, film, yeah. but that's a lie. Right, this is man. content. Uh, so that fucking. Was, that's the most expensive film that Netflix has made as well. So that wasn't meant to be something that got dumped on the platform. That was meant to be a big deal. Oh, and it's Gray totally man a film. Was? Yeah, yeah the Gray if man you is the most expensive uh, Netflix film. This is the other oh, side of the coin that. problem, too. If someone's like Scorsese or, or, or him would just say, like, see the Grey Man's fucking content movie, I'd be like, yeah, okay, but like, it would have been, like, when I watch it 
in you know on my TV or whatever, I know for a fact that I'm probably going to have enjoyed it more in a theater. Um, and it came out in theaters. And like, so what are we like? You know, the advent of streaming doesn't mean the gray man is now like. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it's so well, all over the place. It's weird though, because content mo Transformers: Revenge of the Fallen is a content movie. It was something that yeah. they wanted to make because the first film made a lot of money. And there's a lot of films like that that just get pushed out there to make money because they can. In fact, all the Transformers sequels are... The first one, you know, you could... I mean, it is content, arguably, right? Like, adapting a big, popular merchandise franchise. But, like, you know, there was something there. But the other ones, like, goddamn. Like, it's not new for studios to make something basically just for money. Like, with no real creative, like, goals or intention. Well, and shitty, as you mentioned, yeah, shitty content movies. We've been around forever. Uh, I think mm. straight to DVD was like the way you would categorize yeah. it, right? Well, um, yeah, like all of the Disney animated film sequels, right? It's like, ooh, that's a that's a real. Uh, I think Red Light Media talked about it with Best of the Worst. The amount of videos that they have from people who are copycats or just trying to bank on particular trends and stuff. Yeah, it's been around for I mean, ages. Exploitation yeah. films are that's literally a thing. So hey, I liked I liked The Lion King. The, thing yeah, since the, 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 the one that went straight to uh, films. Yeah, what was that like called? Mind King, King uh, 2? Two. Two. That's Pride. one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah it's, it's that was a pretty good one. Yeah, that's right. Like that one. Simba's Pride. Yeah. Yep, I know it well. And, uh, so with that in mind, it's like, yeah, streaming didn't make these happen. These were going to be happening in other formats all the time. They always have been. Um, so could it just be that these are really shit movies? And that we've had a lot of shit movies lately? And that it's okay to criticize shit movies just like you just did? Pretty abrasively too. Like I said, there's no arguments here. He's just like, nah, they're just shit. <laughs> to fill Damn. forgettable movies being pumped and dumped onto streaming services again and again. Since economics and again, art Vietnam are forced to intersect at all times, despite having wildly disparate goals, it nope. follows that as the supply of movies increases, the demand for them starts to decrease. And when we live in a world where we're so um, inundated, with no. Uh -huh. That's it's, not quite. Um, it's not that the demand. Just because there's more yeah, movies, that doesn't mean I not. want them less. That's it's not, kind of funny, that's not right? It means I can consume <laughs> less of a percentage of them the more that there are. To say that the more movies there are, the less demand there is for them, it would be like, well, but that doesn't account for like, look at look at Maverick. Like, there's been loads of movies. How come that movie did so well? Do we have loads of movies? It's like, well, the, the, well, pro the problem is like trying to apply su supply and demand. It's like, oh, well, movies are the supply. It's like, yeah, but like they're different though. You know, like there's so many they're subsections. Not, they're not like the same product. So mm. I, it's it's uh it's it's not it doesn't really map on very well. There are no like, like units internet. of film. Exactly, exactly. We're like, talking. It's, it's different to like units of you know like an iPhone or something or uh or like a PlayStation Five. Multiple markets crossing over in all kinds of different ways, all kinds of interests. The idea that different countries. I, you know, yeah, we we released uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, The Good Place, The Good Wife, New Girl, and so therefore we don't really need to put out a new Star Wars. It's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> the, the, you're like, well, they're all movies. It's like, oh god, yeah. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> what? What is happening? Or like, sorry, those are TV shows. I was just, it doesn't. It's so. It's so fucking weird to to look at it this way. It's so much more complicated than that. With so much content. It becomes hard not to see it all as meaningless, and it becomes very difficult. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, when so sorry. Uh, when, uh, when did we get to a point? I don't understand. It's, 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 it's always been this way. There's always been shit tons of stories to consume. I don't understand. That it makes it meaningless. What do you say? I don't want to be like annoying. Are you okay, dude? <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm it's like. I feel pissed. legitimately sorry for you that you feel this way. Like that must be really. Like, mm -hmm. depressing. Nihilism is coming. I mean, but the, the logic he gave us was there's just so many, and it's like, there's always been loads. They will never watch all of them on Best of the Worst. There has always been more books, films, TV shows, music, video games than you will ever be able to ever watch, yeah. Yeah. Life. watch, read, play, listen to in your entire life. The first thought I always have when I go to the library and look at a bookshelf is, man, there's just so many books. <laughs> it's yeah, so I'm meaningless. Be able to read them all. Yeah. I'm just, just so you know, I give up. Yeah. What's the thing, man? They've released the released so many like Harry Potter books. Thinking. There's no need for another Game of Thrones: a Song of Ice and Fire book. That's how that works, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Every book written is one amount, book said less that needs to be written. The vibe I get get from him is that he's doing everything to avoid the avoid answering the question if movies are actually getting worse or not. 
Like yeah, so he, far, he yeah. has done everything to not say that. Well, I think this is possibly the worst point he's made in the whole thing. Like, there's so many movies, it's just it's just meaningless, or it can be meaningless. It's like, what? Well, I'm still waiting for him to explain why film criticism shouldn't be negative. Yeah, well, yeah this feels like a tangent of a tangent, which depressed. we're very familiar with. <laughs> I, I get the feeling we're not going to find out. <laughs> hey, I'm some faith what here. Is... We've still got some time left. He didn't what is so the much... secret to Mario's jump? <laughs> <laughs> Tell, Tell us, you secrets. coward. Content. It becomes hard not to see it all as meaningless, and it becomes very difficult not to posture ourselves above all of it. A lot of times, the controversy. Uh, in that feels like such a leap that, it like, becomes hard not to posture. Or, like, we're better. Remember, than you it? mentioned this earlier in the video that, like, when you're being negative about something, it's like you don't want to you see yourself above it. You are so you know you're like this thing that happened in the movie was dumb. And it's like ah, so you're better than it, are you? You're like, wow. I, I mean, mean, I, mean, I, I do, dumb, think, I do but... think I'm better than shit movie. But... <laughs> I'm better than Velma. Yes. How dare you? I don't, yeah. So that's weird. But also, little platoon. And neurotic. They're not. Oh, I thought you, you say that like they just arrived. <laughs> they did no, arrive. Like, Look, they're right there on screen. Are you here? <laughs> it's like, oh, little platoon, neurotic. What's up, guys? Woo. Like you just opened the door and you raised your hand like, oh, uh, hey, th th it that is, is literally what I looked at the screen it. properly and I was like, oh my, I have been faced with such wonderful. Go check those videos out. Uh, they're, I'm sure they're all wonderful. And you, even Book Furnace's book. I, I uh, the real reason people hate the Wings of Power. Hey, watching as a writer. Hey, how about that? All right, what does he got to say about these videos and how they're evil? Okay. Also, he said in the corner it says this is obviously not an endorsement of these videos, which is kind of funny. Not oh, to posture ourselves gonna, hey, above he all. Of it. A lot of times, the controversy well, and discourse surrounding a film or show is oh, movie cynic was there too. Well, oh, yeah, more entertaining and interesting power. than the show or film itself. You know yes, what? Rings of That's power true. Sucks balls. Yes. All the discussion will... about Rings of Power was way more interesting than you Rings made of Power. A point. I will easily watch random film talk talk about Rings of Power way more than I will ever actually sit down and watch Rings of Power. That show sucks balls. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people are into hate watching. I'm just into like watching mm. other YouTubers hate criticizing. I hate. I might hate. <laughs> I don't I, like hate a lot watching. Of, a lot of criticism. A lot of people do that now. Well, yeah. it's become a, a full-on thing. They they enjoy the TV show of people reviewing movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. That is their TV show. And I think yeah, it's valid because it's more fun, much more fun, and more creative, and just overall if, better. <laughs> if you me, are not more entertaining than the criticism of your own thing, then I mean, yeah. And instead mm -hmm. of no, like it's resort something. to it, like a oh no, that's just like no 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 no. Think of it positively. It's an art form. It's really entertaining. It's another avenue for people to entertain each other and for yep. cr for creation to happen. Like, stop dooming. It's annoying. <laughs> it's all <laughs> terrible. It's like, what we take away from this is, wow, Rings of Power was shit. They should get better writers. There we go. Moving on. <laughs> But really, in regards to commodification and oversaturation, is Netflix really any different to the VHS boom? Of there you go. So what was all that shit you said earlier? Yeah, that's what are we doing <laughs> <laughs> of the 90s like do you see how many terrible videotapes that red letter media still has yet to watch in their office we've been doing the pump and terrible. dump thing what with home video about? releases why are you, why are you so negative you're so negative, you're negative dude you're assuming, you're assuming they're bad you haven't even seen them wow <laughs> the dark is probably really good it's pat probably has a lot of real good thematic he's heavily contributing to the culture of negativity with his negativity bias he's, i mean he did say like he is a hypocrite right like everybody you know, which makes, well, it, makes it okay hard. as long as you yeah, but this just time kidding. he's not being self-aware about it. It doesn't count. Say at the beginning, so. I'm a hypocrite, and you're good. <laughs> it's done. Mea culpa, you finished. Carry on. You know, we're yeah, all I feel like if oh. he was going to go this route, he might as well title the video differently. The more mm -hmm. the video goes on, the more that tattoo seems like a cope. Like, I have good taste in film. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you might actually be right. I don't know, but that's like a legit possibility. Would I, I do like this, this if I didn't have so good much. taste in film? Like, I don't think wish. a film could be good enough to where I'd make a tattoo of it of that kind and size so not that kind and large yeah like if it was maybe like a subtle symbol somewhere 
somewhere hidden away that only maybe my lovers would find it. And then, okay, it's just, you know, all right, and it's fair enough. What's that on your butthole? It's like, oh, it's just a little, yeah, it's just a little. It's 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 the ring. It's going. It's it's my it's my ring of power. Um, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, Why the witch? Because it's really good. It is really good, but like yeah. good enough to get an arm tattoo of. Yeah. <laughs> don't you want don't you want to get a tattoo of the witch? I like I, I got a tattoo of the witch on my forehead and it's at the end. Well, well I guess I can't. I'm not gonna spoil it, but um <laughs> but like everyone I had the entire the script. Witch. It's way better than this video. I had the entire script <laughs> very, tattooed very on my body because I was just a big fan. I had the entire script tattooed on my cock. It is that big. I can't fit that many words on it. Uh impressive. Very Since impressive. For a while. I guess you could argue that the difference is that physical releases were more profitable than streaming, at least as far as we're aware, it's more profitable. It was considered like a secondary box office market. Well, that, that caveat for film industries, not artists. Like what, sure what what. the people who make the movie are the artists. And if they make if the film studio gets more money from it, then the artists are probably gonna get more money from it too. Hmm. It's not always how it works. I'm not quite sure of, uh, did anyone as far how we got here? We were like, you know, the proliferation of content through streaming as it almost makes it feel meaningless. However, we have gotten to the point where, you know, that was the case with VHSs. However, that was like a secondary market in which they could make money. Like, what does that have to do with the meaningless part? What does this have to do with film criticism should not be negative? This is hard to follow. I don't know if, yeah, I feel like you guys can't help me out. All right. <laughs> I shall I continue to wallow in the, in the abyss. But the difference is that physical releases were more profitable than streaming, at least as far as we're aware, it's more profitable. It was considered like a secondary box office market. And so since the home video market is essentially completely relegated to streaming now, there aren't really a lot of people buying physical media, then... We have been seeing a paradigm shift in terms of what films studios are willing to make, as you may have seen in this viral clip of Matt Damon on Hot Ones. The DVD was a huge part of our business, of our revenue. Uh, have you guys seen this clip before? Yeah, I have yeah. not seen was, this video gonna before. Because um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to probably deliberately butcher it, because I don't know if this is copyrighted, like this actual... Probably. Um, but you, know, you just repeated that. The DVD market could. We actually talked about that. Oh well, it's not out yet, but <laughs> we talked about. Yeah, I know. I know you're talking about. Uh, Gary mentioned that what saved Austin Powers was not its theatrical release, but its DVD release. It was so popular, they were like, "Holy mm -hmm. fuck, let's make another one," and that was a Family way for movies guy. to win. Uh, and that's Family what Matt Damon talks about uh, in this clip. Brought back as well. But that's that is original. dead now. There is no like, oh, it releases on DVD and does really well, and therefore blah blah blah, because people are just not buying physical as much. They're relying on streaming, uh, which, by the way, don't. Like we talk about this a lot. Don't <laughs> rely on streaming for your favorite things. By yeah, the way, I mean, there's a reason oh, why. Oh, I, I mean, media, VPNs guys. are useful to have. Yeah, that region locking for streaming and stuff like that. You know, stream. Uh, as for how this plays into the video, no idea. And technology <laughs> has just made that. Uh, Obsolete. Just gonna just being careful. Yeah, yeah sure. that's a good idea. There, look, it's Matt Damon. Look at him go. Eat me. <laughs> I like the meat. copyright bot is like he's raising the gun, and then we pause and go. Blah, 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 and he's like, mm, okay. So, God in a video game. Playing stealth. Yeah, exactly. The movies that we used to make. What was that? Then we pause. We hide. Like, okay. You really? could afford totally to not fine. make all of your money when it played in the theater. That's true. Yeah, That's you I heard something. Yeah, one hundred. Mm -hmm. oh, what's mm -hmm. that? Oh my! It must have been the wind. Must he said as an arrow sticks out of his neck. I must See what you got to do things. is put a dancing anime girl on the screen. <laughs> well, I could. Problems. The way I could really sort this out is by muting, putting up the cover, and then hit play, and now we'll be absolutely fine. You guys can enjoy it in its fullitude. The people at home won't. I can just keep talking. Keep them busy yeah, for, until the clip ends. For a second there, for a second there, I thought his pants. I didn't. I, I didn't. His pants were really tight on his leg, and it was vaguely kind of like skin tony colored. And I thought, dang, this guy's showing some real leg there. Damn, <laughs> underneath that table. And then I was like, oh, it's it's his pants. Okay, all right. <laughs> like, look at him go. Really? Does, does Matt choice. know? <laughs> Is that the reveal that Matt doesn't know on the other side? <laughs> You're doing this thing bottomless. Okay.
And uh, yeah, you know, just still, still going, and it's gonna be end of the clip any second now. Doop de doop de do. Yep. I mean, it, yeah, it's good to. Okay, oh, good. There we go. There we are. All right. Excellent. Beautiful. Okay. Filmmaking has been dominating the box office for so long now that I look at the top 10 highest grossing films of all time and I get really, seven. really depressed. Yep. Oh, because let's see. Avatar wasn't yeah, very I guess, good. I get, I guess was the summary of this I get depressed looking at the top 10. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Shit, well, let's depressing. count the good ones. Um, well, wait. Should I we... mean, Titanic is all right. Titanic's like, okay. Titanic's... Infinity Wars got some stuff in there. No Way Home's but, got some. I, stuff I in mean, there. It, but it, but those are both like even that. Avengers like, is um, good. <laughs> Avengers is da, 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 good. Avengers um, is good. Furious is Seven. Avengers the best. Wait, wait. Is Avengers the best on that list? Um, I mean, I. I think it is. I mean, I prefer it to Titanic if I had to choose between those two because everything else there I'm looking at is just like. Listen, I haven't yeah, seen Lion Furious remake, Seven. Okay. No thanks. That's true. Uh, discounting Furious 7 because I have not seen it and I, I don't want to be negative and say that it's shit without having seen it. I think that The Avengers is the best movie on that list. Uh, top 10? Uh, yeah, probably. Well, I mean, the, the, so just to clarify, right, the, the primary reason, I assume, for the cast here of why this list isn't that fun to look at is because we believe them to be mostly badly written films. Mm -hmm. Yeah, The Lion King yeah. is horrific, Jurassic World's terrible. Um, but but there, there is something to be said, which I'm presuming is actually something that I would probably agree with this guy on. If you go back, like, 20, 30 years ago, top 10, like, highest grossing films list was comprised of a lot more just standalone films mm -hmm. that weren't meant to be part of some big franchise, yeah. or, like, original films, original screenplays, like, and in any given year, you would see more of those, but it's like... Ever since we entered into the 2000s, it was like that gradual shift. And then thanks to Marvel, like, I mean, you know, the 2010s saw the complete and utter shift to like the only films that would get up the top were like big franchise films. Because um, from of, this you know, list, big blockbusters. It looks like what, like seven of them are essentially like sequels or franchise movies. So uh, well, well, Titanic is, is original. Avatar, That's not based on anything. Uh, well, it, it's true. That's true. Yeah, it's true. No, it's, it's, no, it's no SX. No, it's Avatar. no I would so say Arctic, every single but... one of Avatar is now a franchise. Um, yeah, yeah, but at the, the time it wasn't. That should count <laughs> as original. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, count I mean, Avatar as original. original. Is that a line of coke you just took there, Dance? <laughs> no, just, uh, <laughs> that line of pure depression. <laughs> well, serious <laughs> negativity. Serious <Avengers>. ah. <laughs> and by the way, to be clear, everybody, the Lion King that's on that list is the remake, not the original. Yeah, it's the remake. Yeah, the, remake. the original didn't make one piece. You think it's anime? One point seven million. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the original was the highest grossing animated film for a long time. It made, I think, it made like nine hundred million dollars, which back in nineteen ninety four, like ooh, that's Lion insane. King was good. Yeah, Lion King was tremendously successful. Mm. I think it was one of the highest grossing films of all time, like when it came out, like it. in the top ten. I think I the it. Lion King is the worst one out of the list. Like it's the most depressing. Uh, Endgame. I. I mean, I think Endgame. <laughs> okay, is but I was gonna say yeah, Force I mean, Awakens. Quality wise, <laughs> 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 yeah, it's Endgame. Yeah. I like how we're all very activated by several of these. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, the probably Lion King Endgame then just... Lion, then the Lion yeah. King first and second. The Lion I King think. just represents so much in in itself like the fact that it made into this list and it's a remake and it's just such a like a shot for shot remake it's just so depressing to me it's How the so fuck is it on there? yeah i don't understand uh, i was on there because Blanking? the disney live action remakes make a lot of money aladdin made a billion dollars uh beauty and the beast i think made over a billion dollars um, what was oh, Jungle Book made a billion dollars? Uh, I know Maleficent made a shit ton of money. That Alice in Wonderland remake made a billion dollars. Um, these films are like super fucking successful. Yeah, I don't pay any attention to them. I had no idea they were yeah, that dude, successful. I mean, the, you know, the reality is like the Lion, uh, not the Lion King, um, the Little Mermaid, they probably, I imagine Disney wants that to make a billion dollars. That's their expectation. That would be my guess because mm. that's how reliably profitable these films have been. Until, you know, COVID stuff derailed things, and now it's a little bit more iffy how successful these are. Mulan didn't do very well. Um, Cruella didn't do very well. Uh, they apparently did well enough to justify a sequel. I don't know how that happened, either. It's... Yeah. And then plus, there's all the remakes that they've pumped onto the streaming service, but I don't know how well those have done, like Pinocchio or uh, uh, Lady and the Tramp was one of them, right? I think that was a launch... 
a launch title of sorts for Disney Plus. They even did Lady and the Tramp. I, like so, yeah. many, they've spammed these Dumbled to the point it, where I, I forget. It, it, at this point, if you were to think of films like Disney animated films, it's going to be uh, if you exclude the last 10, 15 years, it's going to be hard to think of one that hasn't been uh, adapted or isn't pending. Because of course, mm -hmm. you know, you got like um, the, the Snow White is happening, uh, Lilo oh. and Stitch. Um, I think that other ones have been announced. Moana? I think they did. Yeah, Moana just got announced, mm -hmm. so there's that too. Yeah, Frozen is a matter, that's only a matter of time until they, they do Frozen. Yeah. Also, is he about to just casually shit on all these, though? Uh, <laughs> yes. Just the negativity sorry. is bad. <laughs> yeah. But this, is, but this is also due in part to cognitive bias. Recency effect, AKA you're going to remember what happened five seconds ago well more clearly than you are going to remember what happened five years ago. When they gave a name to that? Was that necessary? <laughs> it just seems like normal to me that you like remember things that happened recently more. I don't know, it just seems like normal. Recency effect, sure, why not? All we're right. asking ourselves bias, if movies right? are truly getting worse, and we're, we're looking back, yeah. back... Oh, so he's gonna... the point will be then that they've always been bad, we just remember recent... Wouldn't that go both ways? We would remember the good more than before? Do you know what I mean? Uh, like, I guess it's just a feeling to nostalgia, right? You discard and don't think about all the stuff that you didn't like compared to the stuff that... But that seems like a different thing than recency bias. Yeah, I was gonna say right? that would be... Because if the, if the meme is... We remember the bad things recently, but we don't really remember the bad things before and, and a while ago. And surely that should apply to positive too. We remember the positives mm. much clearer than we remember them back. And it's like, well, no, he's going to have to argue the opposite of that. Well, I mean, especially when we talk about the negativity bias. Why do we remember old stuff positively, but the negativity bias, you know? Like, how do we square that one away? Well, then, and, and I, I, just, I don't want to submit to his crazy assessment. I, I feel like we try to remember the good and bad of the past and the present. So mm. I mean, I remember again. I remember how bad Transformers Two is, and that. Film's I remember like plenty of shit old. films that came out <laughs> across the ages. Yeah. I know that's a thing. Yeah. However, yeah. there's gonna be a time where the density of bad is gonna be dominating the most, and I feel like, uh, particularly, we're there. You know, in the in the year of twenty, maybe twenty eighteen to twenty. Well, just say to present. It's been weird, man. We've had a shit ton. Not just bad films, but films that annihilate IPs. Ugh. And, uh, you know... And I, I, given it, to it, people that hate the source material and the audience. Well, it's like a strange thing for them to keep doing. Mm -hmm. It's not that it never happened before. It's just that, uh, man, it's been happening a lot recently. Because, you know, Terminator Genesis was what? 20... Was that 15? <laughs> 2015, oh, yeah, Jesus that Christ. And then... Yeah, yeah. You know, and... and, and Halo 5 was 2015, too. And people uh, would often say, like, X-Men 3 was, like, awful, but I think yep. if they watched it again today, they'd be like, that wasn't that bad compared to the stuff we're getting right now. I mean, it's, it's bad, but it's not, yeah, like, it's not as catastrophic. The bad of, uh, that's, that's the video I would make if I was him. Feels like bad has changed. The scale of bad has gotten different. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, we got some, we got some art. We do, there he is. Oh, the little rat is celebrating him. And then some guy says, your art is bad. <laughs> oh, he looks like he's gonna cry. And the rat's sad, too. The rat's sad, too. Yeah, rats rats are like dogs. Rats are really... sort of, they, have, they can sense the emotions of the people around them. When you're I happy, really like your the rats drawing. are happy. Yeah, I like it, too. Ugh. That's cute. I think good, he did a great job, Ugh. and I can't wait for the sequel. Oh, no. Uh, no, it'll franchise it, it and ruin it. <laughs> Yeah, I think it speaks for itself, so... I really like it. I really like it. <laughs> All it needs is, like, an extra frame of being like, your, your, your negativity bias is ruining. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have negativity bias. Very, very toxic to artistic creativity. At me with, all me of these movies now. of the past with reverence and looking at all of the current films with disdain. And I can't imagine fucking why. Oh, let's see. What do we got? They're, they Wars, are that bad. This, this is one roster. I can't believe oh, Black man. Adam's the best one. I can't one. believe it. Black Adam's the best. I was just about to say Black <laughs> Adam is the best movie on this on this well, assemblage. Well, I seen Dominion. I seen we don't well, need to have I, seen Dominion, okay? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna i I'm gonna gamble and say that Black Adam is better than Dominion. You I'm know just why I know? Gamble. Because I've not heard a single person say Dominion is good. 
Never. That's true, yeah. Nope. All I've heard is horribly negative things. Black Adam, on the other hand, plenty of people there like, There are okay. some good things yeah, in there. Defend it. Yeah. There are some good things in there. It has the Can most annoying kid actor in history, but it is. But... <laughs> there are some imagine... good things. <laughs> Dr. Fake had his own movie. Years from now, looking back and saying, oh, maybe I judged the rise of Skywalker too harshly. I was, I had a negative. You know, negativity what, what bias. You call it? Yeah. No, yeah, yeah I just don't buy Rise it. Rise of Skywalker wasn't that bad. Rise of Skywalker, Multiverse of Madness, Dominion, like these are they, they're part of all this era, and I can't wait for us to get out of it. With it's like, wow, how did that get made? How did that cost hundreds mm -hmm. of millions? And you're like, yeah, I know. Someone was paying a lot Monuments of money to, make to hatred stuff. of the craft of writing. <laughs> yeah, like why do you hate art? Stop. And anger. We're forgetting about so many things from the past. We are looking- I know the bad films existed before. That's not revolutionary. I'll do you one better. I haven't even learned about some things from the past. Whoa. To forget them. Yeah. So, why not, yeah. Jeez. Take that, your pipe, and smoke it to the bank. Damn. Please, please tell me Smoke that it to the bank. Point, like... Listen, CJ, you're about to find out there are bad movies that existed before 2010, all right? Yeah, you're sorry ready? to tell you, man. Here we see, go. Some of, some of us oh, elderly oh, you're folks ruining here. my nostalgia. Oh. Which is funny again because if you're like, hey dude, maybe you shouldn't be saying these movies are bad. You're adding to the negativity culture. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> the highlight reel, not the entire picture. You look back at the highest grossing films of years past and there's just so many of them that we forget about completely. And I'm not even saying that any of the films I'm about to list are definitively bad, but... I you, but okay, we covered our tracks. What does definitively bad mean? Like, uh, uh, I, are, we, are we allowed? Are we allowed it. now to call they things definitively bad? Like and if something, is, and if, if something is definitively bad, should you say anything about it? Oh, but if yeah. it's exactly. Not being negative, just casually throwing Ooh. that out. They do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> definitively bad. Can't keep what getting away with it. <laughs> I can't keep getting away with it. <laughs> I really don't hear people going around saying things like. Man, movies used to be so much better back in the day. I'm talking Airport 1970. Why do you think they label the films they remember and are great? Because those ones are the ones they remember and are great. <laughs> That's probably is, we why. Have, we have had a lot of time. We've had many decades to filter out a lot of the stankers in terms of music and movies and things of that nature, which is why a lot of people don't remember a lot of bad stuff. And um, so there is a little bit of uh, the, the fact that we're living in, you know, the current era and movies are coming out. And we saw we generally see most of the releases that come out or no. Hey, Rex, them. tell me, list me all the bad movies that came out in 2022. Go. Oh, good. I, you know, I, I think it is against the spirit of this video for me. Uh, to do that, that doesn't make sense. You're supposed to remember all the recent ones. So I it's not about remembering. It's about keeping within the spirit. And yet, of, um, you consider it to be video. a weaker time of film, even though you can't remember all of the great... It's so funny to me, because, like, what he's highlighting are going to be movies, yes, that are in the top seven of all the year or whatever, and it's like, they're not getting mentioned. There are fucking films that I'm not going to mention from a year ago that were in the box office top ten, the ones I haven't even seen, ones I don't even know if they're any good or not. Yeah. It's, it's fucking annoying, because it's like, why are you guys bringing up Raiders of the Lost Ark? And it's like, probably because we've got a new fucking Indiana Jones on the way that looks awful. And it's yeah. like, okay, why are you bringing up Aliens? It's like, I don't know, because the newest version by the same fucking guy was horrible. Why are you talking about, like, I'm, oh, Terminator 1 and 2, they were good. It's like, oh, I don't know, because all the new ones are horrible. Like, I'm more than happy to talk about Morbius and Moonfall, but, yeah. It's almost well, but also, it, it's in a suit in suits, like, puppeting these franchises directly invites negative comparison with the past. Well, and he's like, why aren't you saying, yes, uh, Dial of Destiny looks bad, but you know what was bad? That movie that came out in 19-whenever that was bad. It's like, so really, nothing really has changed. It's like, what? Who's it? Like, he's implying that that's, like, the normal way to talk about this, the biased way to talk about it is to say, like, oh, film is heading into a bad place. Even though he's already acknowledged, like, almost every corner of, like, critical thinking has decided that this is a bad era for film. It's gotta mean something. What other metric can we go by other than there's loads of bad films, and the people who make films say film is in trouble, and the people who review films are saying film is in trouble. If there are any movie historians out there who are aware of what movie critics from 
the 60s, 70s, 80s or whatever might have said if there it, maybe some people out, you know, from back then said the same thing, but I don't I don't know of that being said. And of course, I wasn't around back then. Well, that would make I'm for a really interesting sure. video if he could like but, get quotes and analysis that is almost very reflective of what's being said today, but about like the 80s or something. Well, I'm not it's saying like it's when not, people, you know, it probably does exist. It would be interesting to look there, at. We kind of got this a little bit when a lot of the people who were who 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 are coping about the Last Jedi said uh, that oh well, if, if the if the Empire, Empire Strikes was... Back was released yeah. today people would hate it and right. even back then it was like oh people you know because um because that, that's just what they're trying to believe um yeah it's when you ask anybody who lived during that time and they're like what do you mean Empire was hype as fuck. It's regarded as the best Star Wars film to this day, and it probably made a lot of money, and it made people extremely excited for the sequel and what was to come, whereas TLJ left us sad and depressed. <laughs> it deconstructed my uh, my enjoyment of the series. It, it deconstructed my that. enjoyment of film. <laughs> it, like, the only yeah. vague enjoyment or like excitement for the rise of Skywalker I could see is people just going, I don't even know what the fuck they're going to do. Curiosity. Yeah, I was morbidly like, curious. What the hell are they going to do? Yeah, that's the position I was in. What can they actually do? Because it seems like every plot thread has just been shot in the head. Do you remember that um, tweet? It went viral both for people agreeing with it and viral for people making fun of it. Um, I think I shared it at least with Franny, but it was something like um, the 2010s doesn't have culture. It's just cultureless. It's just a mess or whatever. And it's like, eh? Like, like, like as though we'll hit 2050 and we'll be like, yeah, 80s, 90s, uh, 2000s, oh, 2010s, 2020s, there was nothing there. And then back to having culture again in 2030s. Or, it was just like, well, it's a it's a weird time, right? You know, 2010 to 2020. But it's, I think that as time goes on, it'll be captured in the form of like individual, you know, fucking fashions or ideals and stuff. It seems that that happens, you know, no matter what. It always happens. But... Um, that's supposed to be an argument that's indic indicative of how art has gotten strange and and uh, damaged and stuff. And it's like, I don't know, what's to talk about? I'm not going that far. I'm just saying films are really badly written as of late. That's all. There does seem to be a very... I, I think it's kind of the um, like the foundational issue. People don't seem to care about writing anymore. Mm-hmm. You hear about what goes on behind the scenes for play things like Multiverse of Madness, and that's the only conclusion you can really draw. Is there's just no respect yeah, for writing. At that mm. point, it's not even that the writers are bad, it's that the craft has no respect at all. It's considered like something that just doesn't really matter. It's like ultimately yeah. when it comes to making a film, the script really isn't important. It's like, oh okay. Like, and I, and I just don't think that that was a cultural uh, issue back in the day. There was scripts that would sell movies. That used to be a thing. But it just doesn't feel like in the in the hyper high budget films that scripts even matter. It's the it's like an event is organized and then the script will come in. You know, it's that famous little quote from Michael Waldron that he was panicking during the filming of the second act because he hadn't he hadn't had anything for Act Three. He didn't know what was going to happen. They were filming the second act. How does that happen? I'm talking flash dance, the best little whorehouse in Texas. Fucking. Mm. Bit Reynolds is in it. <laughs> you also uh, flash dance. I've heard people mention. I've heard of flash dance. I haven't heard of Airport 1975. I've no. heard of Airport. An airplane. Shampoo. An air bud. The entire conversation surrounding the filmmaking landscape of today versus the filmmaking landscape of 50 years ago is so deeply entrenched in our cognitive distortions and biases that it always is there's never a time where we all have perfect clarity of what everything's happening in industries allow me to uh show you what memory is and how it works i don't even like <laughs> we we have a uniquely uh a unique more clarity these days than most because of the information can be found in terms of uh the past, mm. how it ran, and the currently in, in present. The fact that I, I never even understand why Disney released those behind-the-scenes things for uh, Marvel movies. They're always incredibly embarrassing. They talk pridefully about how they skip and cut corners all the time, or luckily stumble into having things just happen, and they're just like, fuck it, whatever, that works. Mm -hmm. Like, isn't filmmaking great? And you're like, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I Like, I just don't the idea that it's like, oh, we've got a lot of biases right now in terms of our analysis. Like, yeah, we always do. 
But there's also a lot more voices than there's ever been in terms of what's recorded yep. and put out there into the world. Landscape of 50 years ago is so deeply entrenched in our cognitive distortions and biases that it is damn near impossible at this point to have any semblance of an objective conversation about it. Some of my favorite films... I don't even know what to do with that. I, just, I, I don't... Yeah, I was... Yeah, I didn't think like, you were going to say that. <laughs> I started to think, but I was like, I don't even know what to really do with that. It would take more effort than it maybe deserves to like try a, and The first thing is like, that. what does he mean by it? And it's like, I'm never going to find that out. I haven't found out what the title is yet. I don't know if he knows if you asked him what he meant ever, period, have released within the last 10 years, and yet my own cognitive biases like negativity bias or recency effect or just my general disdain for the oversaturation of big budget franchise filmmaking has me thinking about things like Jurassic World Dominion or <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. So he has 10 movies. These are very popular and very highly advertised all the time. Yeah, well, he's talking about how like there are several movies that are his favorite of all time that have come out in the last 10 years, and yet he's thinking about Rise of Skywalker and Jurassic World Dominion. It's like, so Seems what's like wrong? Negative. Seems like a personal skill that, issue. Absolutely, it's a skill films. issue. <laughs> a skill yeah. issue. <laughs> I don't think about these films ever, dude. I'm done thinking about Rise of Skywalker until I need to talk about Rise <laughs> of Skywalker. Like, it's... <laughs> It was fun, you know, <laughs> it, it, we, we had a good time talking about how shit it was. We all did. The internet, we had a field day with it. It was fun. But, uh... Because like, you, you know he's gonna be poking at the fucking algorithm monster again. He's like, you're the reason I keep thinking about these. The algorithm monster, like, holds <laughs> up a mirror. The big reveal at the end of the episode. As we you. stare into the algorithm, the algorithm stares into... It's the same as the conclusion to the South Park episode. Hey, it turns out the algorithm is us. You know, yes, dun, the economy dun, dun. is exactly. It's that's the Walmart, you know. Yeah, Walker. that's right. You know, it's, it's what it's we made the, it. The people, the you know. Except the thing was, even though Walmart, the heart was a mirror, it was literally the mirror. So if you destroy it, the Walmart dies and then poops itself. <laughs> <laughs> poops itself. <laughs> yeah. Good old South Park. That's someone to highlight as well. He's been awfully negative about negativity. Yes, he has been yep. very He's been yeah. gooming and glooming for like 20 minutes He's now. been laying it on hard. I'm just waiting for him to come up with a uh, alternative to you almost want to see the video. I'm waiting to hear why we shouldn't be negative. <laughs> you also He's see really video effective in making a video. <laughs> you have this like used car salesman type character being like, ain't negativity fucking great? I love the fact that we can just run in there, be honest, and look at a thing and be like, you know what? There's no amount of like, oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. It'll prevent me from letting you know that you fucked up right there. And that, you know what? We can learn from it. We can grow. And eventually, we can build up to creating something great. Like a video that's all about this subject, but just strictly positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, this is fun <laughs> and good. Paul Goodman trying to sell you on negative. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because moment... this is it's just depressing, this video. <laughs> the moment he... Um, mentioned movies in a positive context right now, he straight off cut it off just to again mention movies negatively again. He just put up like his favorite movies for two seconds and went back to talking about the movies shit. negatively again. And uh, if we look at that set, okay, so. Blade Runner 2049, I mean, that's talked about quite a bit. Lighthouse was talked about by a lot of people. Uh, it's the whole reason I found shit. out it existed and watched it, yeah. Um, Nocturnal Animals, Under the Silver Lake, and Swiss Army Man definitely sank under being discussed. I've heard of them, but uh, not talked about that much. And then here, I don't see really anybody talking about it, but I thought it was an awesome movie. Uh, and when people do talk about it, it's overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, so... What what are we highlighting as the issue? It's he's saying that like how could all of these films exist in this era and yet my mind is focused on the negative, and I just be like oh well so ignoring all the stuff we've already said about the issue, uh, it's really weird <laughs> to highlight like look at these thousands of movies that have come out. I liked six of them and yet I overall feel that there's a negative like you know there's, there's, it's bad movie era. It's like well yeah if there's a thousand bad movies and one good one. It's bad. It's very bad. Especially if they're all the highest budget ones you're looking at. When we go to uh, 100 million plus, the quality fucking tanks. Why? We that's, that's a problem we need to solve. We need to stop doing that. That's really bad.
you know, it's not uh, happening every time. There are plenty of good movies that come out that have high budgets, but uh, it feels like the ratio has gotten really bad lately. And just because very, very hard. Just because you enjoyed fucking the lighthouse does not mean the the era is doing just fine or the same as it always has been. In the last ten years, and yet my own cognitive biases, like negativity. Also, yes, I said, why isn't the witch there? I'm pretty sure that came out in the last ten years, right? Oh yeah, where is that? Yes. Yeah. Bias or recency effect or just my general disdain for the oversaturation of big budget franchise filmmaking has me thinking about things like Jurassic World Dominion or <laughs> The Rise of Skywalker. And and then I just sit there and I go, maybe we should just be done making movies now. Maybe it should all should Jeez. <laughs> Oh, you see it? Okay. <laughs> fucking negative Nancy? Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay, now you can see why down. he made the video. He's been consumed by, <laughs> by the negativity. <laughs> I Get can't over take it. it anymore, you guys. <laughs> it's funny to me because <laughs> he decided <laughs> that Rise of Skywalker and Gre they're just so bad, he's almost lost faith in filmmaking. It's like, why can't the guy over there say that in his video? And then that guy say that. And then many of them say it. And that we could all just recognize, like, yeah, Rise of Skywalker was shit. Instead of being like, wow, you guys are all being rather negative. <laughs> Burn it all to the ground. It'd just be over. I really, really try to keep in mind. Is that Last of Us? What is Last of Us? Yes, it is. It's the, it's the music for the credits. Hmm. That things aren't always changing for the worse. Sometimes they are simply changing. <laughs> And yet, again, when I look at films like Rise of Skywalker or Jurassic World Dominion, it is so hard to not feel personally insulted. Like, these movies- Get over it! <laughs> it's okay to <laughs> feel personally insulted. I'm feeling, yeah. Okay. You know what? <laughs> Maybe he's onto something. Those movies are kind of personally insulted. I don't know, this is funny. At this point, They're shitty know. films. I don't know, if, they, if it makes you feel this horrible, I have to wonder about your attachment to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Still, <laughs> you're gonna be fine. <laughs> You'll be okay. Yeah, no, you can try and counteract. A really funny film. <laughs> These think that I am stupid, it. and they are laughing all the way to the bank with my money. It is so hard. The, you, they don't oh have to God. be. You don't have to <laughs> buy them. You, you, you can, can go, man. If you had just listened to a negative review, you could have saved money. <laughs> yeah. He oh. is spiraling. Yeah, don't fucking watch them, like... <laughs> <laughs> to all of us, it's like, oh, you could just... You just not watch them. Yeah, or, there's plenty of no. negative reviews that would have warned you, my friend. <laughs> what you could do is you could use your platform as a YouTuber Ooh. to try and counteract the negativity by creating positive things. That doesn't work in the algorithm. Telling us all what you, you love. Make it. Okay, it. You can make a negative review and yeah. earn all that money back. But just like, how are we doing this in the film criticism should not be negative video? I don't get it. Does he? Does he know? Mm -hmm. Does he know? <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone told him? Not to just rip them to shreds, to just lay into them in these hour-long video essays that I could possibly make that would provide all this catharsis, not just for me, but probably for an audience of people. I'm waiting for the negative part, because we're finally here, yes. right? He's going to explain to yeah. us why this is a bad thing. Do it. Yes, tell me why <laughs> film criticism like, should not like be negative, politics. please that would be more than willing to watch that, you know? More than willing to support that. And it, it would make me feel really good making it, and it would make everyone feel good watching it, and it would feel good to see all those people watching it. Man, he's really making a good case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally everyone benefits. You I would get paid for it. Make, people would be happy. Make other people happy. Yeah. <laughs> but... However, here's where it all but becomes bad, shit. Boys, but it's bad. But, but that's kind of my entire point here. The goal of criticism should not be to destroy films. Film the goal of criticism. Some of them deserve, some of them deserve, it. Some of them deserve it. Some of them deserve it. The goal criticism of criticism should not be to destroy films. <laughs> we are single-handedly <laughs> destroying doing? cinema, you guys. So dramatic. I mean, well, yeah, guys, I guess he's... He's doing it. The positive music is up. He's yeah, a pastic well, so, positive. Did you notice like it's kind of <laughs> sneaky? He went from tongue in cheek to taking it literally. I thought he was like, you know, when someone says like, I'm fucking rip this film to shreds, like, oh, you, you know, a lot of people will be hurt if you do that. 
And you'd be like, what do you mean? It's like if you rip it up and tear it into pieces, the film, meaning everything that was involved. He's like, what are you doing? No, I'm, j I'm just going to rant about what I didn't like. Is that okay? I, I said at the beginning, this is all just my uh, feeling, you know, feelings and opinion, and it's just what I think, and it doesn't mean anything, I guess. Like, I'm picturing his, like, if he was, like, a family member, and he's like, you know, you come home from watching some of these films, and you sound very abusive. You're like, I will rip into this. I will destroy it. <laughs> Perhaps films should be treated much kinder and not so aggressively. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, dude, it's, I, I didn't mean to upset you. I'm just, I'm using words that kind of imply a sense of, uh, an emotional state. I'm that's not actually going to start punching movie. the screen and stuff. I'm, I'm okay. I'll be fine. And you, you will be too. So we should not be negative about film be to protect people like J.J. Abrams? I don't know. Hurt. Stop trying to be an authority on criticism. Criticism can be whatever the critic wants it to so be. There is no explicit goal. Of that film? was actually where I was going to go next. Uh, who decides what the goal of criticism is? And who who's who's the moral arbiter on that one? Why has it been decided that the goal is often to destroy films? You know, because he's like, spent to too long them. staring at Jurassic World Dominion, and he's decided <laughs> the world sucks. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> How could a world create the rise of Skywalker and be moral? It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the problem of evil. He looks at the, the Jurassic <laughs> the World Dominion, and he starts to lose his faith in a higher power. I think. How could this be? Part of what I'm fascinated by as well is that if, if you just had someone who's like, I, I want uh, Disney Star Wars as an IP to stop, and to do that I need to be critical of it, and to, and to do that effectively I need to rip it to shreds, I hope it's destroyed. If he said like, well that's not what criticism should be, you'd be like, okay, why? And make a compelling argument, please. I'm, I, man, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear why it shouldn't be negative. I mean, it's the title of the video, point. and he's had half an hour. I mean, you know, we... Criticism it not, should it not arbiter. be negative. Not to say that you shouldn't have negative critiques of a film. This oh, okay, cool. I'm fine, what? then. Uh, not to say that you shouldn't have... You, what? The, that, oh, exception, to... that exception clears all the negative videos. Cool. Except and it also that... is... Cut. Nullifies the video. Himself. Yep, it nullifies the video. The video is called film critics. There you go. That's the big reveal. It should it's not. Okay if it is. Should not it be turns negative out except I when was it is. Just fucking lying. <laughs> <laughs> like it's the most insincere of disclaimers. Like yeah, you can have negative videos as I just shit on them for a good fifteen minutes or so of this video and use that as the title to draw people into watching this video. Yeah, like not not explicitly. I mean, not... Most of the time, I'm not shitting on them, but. Implicitly, oh, yeah, I'm devaluing this, the work. He says this, but there are so many po both positive critiques and reviews on YouTube and more balanced takes as well. And also negative reviews that weren't necessarily made with the intent of tearing the movie to shreds, but because it's bad and the, that is how the reviewer genuinely felt. Not that they're necessarily relishing in it, but that's what they did. Just, I, I feel like has he only watched like three or four reviews and gone? This is what mm. all reviews are. That's the thing. I, I, th possible though, you know? like, I feel like we're in a better time than ever for finding the thing you want. If you want a positive review of Love and Thunder, just type it in. You'll probably find it. Someone out there said it was good. Yeah. And that's more now than ever because there's just more people doing more of it. That's just how it is. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're like, yeah, but that that video only got seven views. It's like, okay. <laughs> It's because seven people agree with you. And if there being more people doing it does mean there's going to be more people doing it wrong, or like doing it poorly. But that's just how it goes. That's fine. They're entitled to say whatever they want, because, you know, then someone else can tell them that they're wrong. And that's also fine. Also, um, all that shit you said about tabloid journalism and stuff, to then have a video called Film Criticism Should Not Be Negative. Now, that's not to say you can't be negative. It means... Uh, <laughs> It's like, well, how the fuck are you qualifying just, this shit I mean, now? Just, I'm this is just a lie. He's a you know? <laughs> hypocrite. The world is ending. You open the page, it's like, it's not ending. The world's <laughs> actually <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> it's coming to an end. Theoretically. Film criticism should not be negative. Not to say that you shouldn't have negative critiques of like, a film. But that film then what are these sentences? Consecutive, <laughs> these consecutive I feel like sentences. Maybe the video should have started here. <laughs> this is the real starting place. You shouldn't have negative critiques of a film, but that film criticism should not be this negative force that seeks to destroy movies to the cheering of millions. We what a okay. worthless statement. This that is one. insulting. <laughs> this is this is insulting. Now, I agree. It now is we're at the point where it's like you are a liar.
So it's the popularity of it? Like, if I release a scathing, rippy a party video, it's okay, but as soon as a million people are cheering me on and saying, yeah, rip it apart, it's like, oh, now we have a problem. Can we just, can we just run through that sentence? Film criticism should not be negative. Not to say that you can't do negative criticism of a film, but you shouldn't do negative criticism with the goal of destroying, like, art. You know, murder <laughs> shouldn't be allowed. Not to say you can't kill people unjustified, but... <laughs> I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't really get what he's after, because even if he was going strictly with motive, we're never going to know definitively if someone makes a video and says, I strictly did this because I just hate art. I remember, the big, a big <laughs> portion of him actually delving into motive was the motive of the algorithm, not like the motive to destroy art. Remember, that was a huge portion of the film. Uh, not the film, <laughs> huge portion of this video. And I do that all the time. It doesn't seem to be factoring into his conclusive statement in any way, shape, or form. Why isn't it... Film, it, it's not, the problem is I can't find a way to work it to where you say film criticism shouldn't be negative, but you can be negative about films. It's like I think, a fundamentally incongruent like statement. I think this opinion comes from a person who like literally just does not enjoy, does not understand Anything. how to take joy in ta making video essays. And he's like projecting onto all of us. Like, it's become a job that he hates or something. Yeah, he well, can't understand trapped. how we can, like, make this content without, like, sheer will and motivation to destroy something. Like, like we can't enjoy our craft, actually. Which we do, most of us do, but obviously he does not. And it seems like he's projecting, really. Yeah, I would actually ask him, like, did you hate making that Dharma video? Did you really not enjoy it and you only did it because you had to get that out there as a thing but you just hated the process of it. It's like, if you really enjoyed making it and you felt like you said something that wasn't quite out there and it did well, is that okay? Are you okay? Is everything, that's, that sounds, it's like that thing earlier where he was like, you're happy, the people who watched it are happy, you managed to make a career out of it, so let me tell you why this is awful. You're like, oh, I feel mm -hmm. like it was okay. Someone said like maybe his point is that as a whole it shouldn't be negative. It's like, it's not and it never will be. Um, and if, and if it's referring to any, you know, specific individual video, I mean, if it ends up being wholly negative because that's <clears> the main <throat> focus of the critique, you know. Yeah, no, that's, that's like, totally fine too. The thing is, in a theoretical world where every single reviewer was negative about every movie ever, I feel like something's changed. Like, we're not even human uh, anymore. Absolutely. I don't, exactly. That just seems like a bizarre world that doesn't exist. And uh, if he was like, yeah, but we're close enough to it, I'd be like, no, we're not. The, the, uh, we uh, still have to talk regularly about how the things get overpraised and uh, toxic positivity is totally a thing that people don't like to address. But, yeah. Sorry, man. We're, we're, we're certainly in the era of negativity and positivity being everywhere. You just gotta go click for it. And then you're like, yeah, but the algorithm, it skews negative. It's like, oh, no. Oh, nine. But again, the algorithm skewing negative has nothing to do with his statement that you shouldn't be negative to destroy films. What does that have to do with the algorithm or like negativity bias? Also, in, uh, and, and, and how that drives the kind of content that's being created on the platform. As Jay just said, there's so much to be said for learning by watching the deconstruction of a bad example. Yeah, and, and just this, I hate this idea that we just know the mind of a creator is strictly negative if they're being critical. It's mm -hmm. just like, what, what, what is that? I don't like that. I, yeah, it's a shame. Being negative is, uh, or at least being critical, it's super fun. Especially if you're covering something that is, like, hilariously bad. Or if you find a lot of satisfaction in looking deep into something that's been created. Well, like, imagine there's, like, a fight scene where the hero is in a tough spot because a bad guy's got a knife to their back. And then the editor edits the knife out. That's hilarious. They, they wouldn't do that. It's too <laughs> obvious. Well, no, not in like a big budget thing. Maybe in like a B oh, movie, okay. like a like in an indie movie. Yeah, like a one million dollar like thing. Or, not like a. Or if it's maybe their first movie that they've made. Not like hundreds um, of millions of dollars into a well known IP. There's you know, nothing like that. Yeah, Imagine like, like a I'm coffee cup appearing in like a medieval setting. Yeah, or a water bottle. Yeah, I mean, it's just fucking I mean, funny. Any cup that has coffee in it is a coffee cup. So Everyone that laughs. About right to me. Everyone points it out, they airbrush it out in future streamable versions of that episode, and life goes on. And he sits there crying, saying, we've ruined everything. How <laughs> could you? <laughs> it's like, oh no. What he should have done is just... Wouldn't it have been hilarious if Game of Thrones did, like, a partnership with Starbucks or something after that? They totally owned it, and they're like, yeah, we fucked up, and the, the you know, it was like a ha-ha, laugh about it kind of thing, and... Uh... 
or in every season or in every episode they secretly left it hidden in the background somewhere a starbucks coffee cup and it became like an easter egg hunt <laughs> then you'd have a reason to watch the eighth season by the way, uh, again, even by his own video standards, then it seems like it's not about positive negatives, it's about motive. Right. Because I could. I what if I guy. said I'm I'm planning on destroying the film industry and art? And you're like, oh my god, and like, and I'm exclusively positive because I believe if I keep running everything up to the being the best, like all these really bad movies, eventually I'll convince people that this is good, and then I'll crash the industry down by having them make more of those. Would he then be like, wow, <laughs> film criticism should not be positive? No, he'd never make that video, so. Look <laughs> at <laughs> some crazy light Yagami like scheme <laughs> the entire world. <laughs> like, films are good, so that it's bad, and then he actually, you know, destroys the film industry. This negative force that seeks to destroy movies to the cheering of millions. We all <laughs> love movies. I, I, you know what? Yeah, I, 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 like, uh, I like movies. So. I do well, picture yeah. the well, Disney. I used to love them. Before the, this video, I can picture eventually the Disney castle, pieces of it falling off, it's all in flames, and this huge crowd of millions cheering. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, to be to be to be honest, I probably would cheer too if I saw that. Yeah. The the tyrant has been overthrown. Yeah, like it's the, like watching the Death Star explode. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Maybe that ain't so bad. <laughs> like it's... Right. Like that, that's why we're doing all this. That's why we are picking them apart and analyzing them and having all this online discourse about them. It's because, it's because we love them. Because we, what we respect it? What, is what is going on? It's the, mu it's the music and it's talking about love. It's, it's the music, it's the music that's getting me here. It's funny. It's, uh, it moves it's along. self-awareness. It's like we're standing on a, you know, uh, on a cliffside with the sun rising Setting above the rising sea, out. you know? <laughs> the like art less. form and we want to see it get better and grow and thrive it's it's not just like to feel child. better about ourselves to feel intellectually Whoever superior said it was like, about who that's you maybe uh, but, if, if that true. was his problem that should be the problem not film criticism being negative i i guess i just find it it's like you know it shouldn't be about you know inflating your own ego or just for the sake destroying of destroying art tearing something down it's like that's not that's a different video. We we, we, yeah, that's because that really has nothing. To, that's that could be applied to positivity as well, right? If yep. inflating your ego or the catharsis of you know building something up that you put a lot of stock in that you know maybe isn't so good, right? Yeah, it's divorced from whether it's positive or negative. Yes, that's that's been the biggest like, takeaway uh, for me on this. It's hmm. like the cross of changes by Enigma. It's like you finally reach the end of LSD. And you're like, yes, yeah, we're at the end. It's all blending together. We did. We're it. here. Like, we do want movies to get better, right? We all want to reach that state of utopian bliss where movies are so good. Um, fine. I'll take the, maybe the unpopular opinion here that we do, I think, enjoy it when there are bad movies getting released anyway, as well. The idea that, uh, yeah. if we were told you can make a deal with the devil, it wouldn't be the devil, whoever, fucking wizard, that, uh, all movies will be great. <laughs> It'd be like, okay, that's cool, but I do like seeing a bad movie every once in a while. It can be fun. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, that's true too. And so it'd be like, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing either that we like watching bad movies. I don't think that's, I don't think that's a negative or that it's, it's toxic in any way. It's just kind of like having fun. And I mean, look at the room, right? It's probably the best example of all time. Mm. It's enjoyed. Mm -hmm. People love it as a bad example. Bad uh, Emic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first one anyway. <clears throat> yeah. No, but we have no second. right to complain anymore. We, we do want good movies, right? Yes, but we also like yeah, having a bad movie every once in a while, sure. Yeah, I really enjoy watching bad movies. There's just something about them that gives me energy. But, but isn't that partly why we complain about the bad ones? It's because we want the good ones. Well, and it's um, frustrating. Because, like, like, for example, the new Star Wars movies, like, we wanted them to be good, right? Yeah. I hope we were going to. And it's, it's frustrating that they aren't, but it's, it's definitely, I feel like, cathartic and fulfilling for us to talk about it. I think what he's trying to say uh, is the my brain is melting. <laughs> he, he he would say like that that's essentially what he's trying to say, but in reverse, he's trying to say that uh, isn't the core goal that we want good movies? It's not all about just enjoying ripping apart bad things, right? Because that that sounds really bad. And uh, I guess all I'm saying is just can can it be both? Can it be that we also want good movies, but we also enjoy watching bad movies? Is that a problem? Yeah. 
Sure, you know, yeah. You're watching yeah. bad films get ripped apart. There are bad films I've watched that I fucking hate watching, and there are bad. Uh, there are good films I've watched that I don't enjoy watching. It's like yeah, you, get, yeah. you get the whole yeah. thing. Tar. Yeah. And the bad movies make it so much more rewarding when actually good ones come out, you know, mm -hmm. and you actually see something that you're, you know, excited about. It's very important to understand, I think, especially if you consider yourself into movies. Oh, well, I mean, I, this even goes past movies. This is just a general life thing, but it's really useful to know why you like the things you like and yeah. why you don't like the things you don't like. And getting both sides of the quality spectrum allows you to identify that much better. And sometimes mm -hmm. it takes other people like explaining this is why this thing in the movie's bad and you go, Oh, I, I didn't like that part. That's why. Like I didn't quite I, I I didn't like it, but I couldn't quite piece together why I didn't like it or what was rubbing me the wrong way about it. Don't just want to feel terrible and wallow in our own mis- oh, so, so, ooh, so this is another <laughs> big leap. I don't feel miserable when I watch things that are bad that I enjoy watching. But also, like it, I, thought, I thought it was described as you were doing it for catharsis or to feel better about yourself and inflate your ego. So how is people feeling miserable? <laughs> Isn't the problem the opposite, that people are doing it to make themselves feel better? I don't think people are that miserable when they watch something that they think is funny bad. That's just not a thing. Yeah. Um, I I well, I mean- it, it it varies, right? Some movies that are bad make me miserable. <laughs> you know, well, I, I, I baked bad in comedies are the worst. I baked bad in that is funny bad. Like it's yeah, it, when you get funny oh, bad sure, and you sure, pursue sure. funny bad, like Batwoman. Oh, like, funny bad is is, which is, is hilarious. Like, yeah, funny bad is, is like oh, it's wonderful. But as opposed to I, you know, like Multiverse of Madness is just like pretty painful. What, that's like not. What I think he's referring to, and I'm not going to say these people don't exist, uh, surely, it's, you know, everyone's out there, but people who, like, pursue misery, they're like, I like being fucking sad and angry about everything. It that gives point, me power or if something. You were, if you're pursuing misery, at, at that point, you know, that's, again, the conversation of, That's like, a different people... video. Yep. Again, it's like, it's like, I can see what your issues are, but it's got nothing to do with being negative when it comes to criticism. That feels intuitive to you, probably, but it's got nothing to do with your actual position. Misery, passing time until our inevitable death. I guess I can really only speak for myself. And that's what you said you were doing. <laughs> yeah, you said that at the beginning. Remember, it's just your opinion. Was this whole time Dude, we were supposed to believe oh, something man, else? Like, have we been bamboozled? All of these like mm -hmm. unnecessary caveats getting thrown in. It's just like gets in the way of coherency. Oh yeah. And I love films. I love the process the of thing. filmmaking. Yeah. I love film criticism and analysis. I love. I almost feel like I wish he what? was monotonously delivering this because it feels less genuine the way that he's doing the acting of like I. It, do it does love feel less genuine, film. doesn't it? Yeah. I would prefer the YMS of <laughs> I love film. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, all of like it. he's trying to sell you something. Yeah, it does. all of it. Mm -hmm. All right, I just had to yeah get some. All of what did he say? Film. We roll back just to. He loves all of film. That's yeah. a lot. He loves film. That's he actually. I didn't even film. think of that. He's like, what do you mean you love all of film? He didn't say that though, right? I thought he just said, let's, I love films. Check. Oh, let's, I love we'll, we'll, films. Okay, we'll do it. We don't just want to feel terrible and wallow in our own misery, passing time until our inevitable death. I guess I can really only speak for myself. And I As in all things. love films i love the yeah, process see? of yeah, filmmaking I well no Ra rags kind of on point if you say you love films you, it's like it's kind of like the title it's like say, we might need well, more qualification said, wait, on wait, that wait, one he, uh, well, it's because really? he said all of it yeah okay i had to get up to do something i came back and he said all of it and i'm thinking like and i want to get oh, yeah but when he said all of it he was talking about like the filmmaking process and criticism so he's talking about the tangential aspects of films so not just films themselves, but like how they're made and people talking about them. But he has clearly not stated he does films. not love many uh, portions of it, right? Well, yeah, sure. But I, if I say I love video games, that doesn't mean I love every single video game ever made. Well, but when I, you say film criticism should not with. be negative, technically speaking, he hasn't said that it's all. Oh, sure. Um, but I, I guess I, I just don't see that as something you would read into it. When somebody well, I guess says, what I'm, I love films. What I'm saying I is it's interpretable and like, he should probably develop it. Um, just like he's developing film criticism should not be negative into it mm. shouldn't be motivated by destroying art. That's what he means when he says film criticism should not be negative. It's yeah. not very intuitive, is it? 
no, that's not intuitive. But like, if somebody said to me, I love like television, I, like to me intuitively is like, oh, I like watching TV shows. Yeah, you know, but he just said, I love films and filmmaking. And it's like the, I, I think that especially after watching this video, especially all the said uh, about the creation of film in relation to streaming services and content and stuff. It's like, you clearly hate a lot of what it's become. You, you would, would consider it like detrimental and almost um, a perversion. At least that's how, uh, Martin Scorsese is, can come across with it, so me, yeah. feels like if you're going to have all that in the video and then end with like, oh, I just, I love me films and filmmaking, it's like, well, it's been, maybe it's time to have a bit more of a nuanced, straightforward answer of, you know what, I don't love all of it, but I don't let that control me, I don't let it be my entire personality. Um, I mean, I see what you're saying, but I, I guess I just, I don't, like, when somebody says, I love films, I just presume that that means that they love, like, films, broadly speaking, as, like, a medium of art, not all of them, or, the you know, even the majority of them. Well, give it another go. Let's see how, let's see how it comes across. Okay. Misery, yeah. passing time, until our inevitable death. I guess I can really only speak for myself. And I love films. I love the process of filmmaking. I love film criticism and analysis. I yeah, see, bullshit. Liar. Yeah, then he can't say all of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. he can't oh, say sure. all of it. I don't, it. I don't I believe don't, you. I, don't, okay. I, mean, he, I mean, it's uh, like a huge portion of this. You, I mean, like, film criticism should not be negative. It's like, damn, man. That's like a, that's a lot of what, like, criticism that's half of it. will contain. <laughs> you know, kind you know, of. Both that's... positive and negative. Especially if, you know, a lot of people define criticism, like, with the negative framing. Though he used the more neutral It's one, totally... The, the thing I don't like about this is just like, uh, we know you don't love all of it, and that's okay. I don't love all of it either. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that part is, um, because it, it would be like if I said, I love video games, except for any that are a third-person perspective. Well, that's, so like, that's the equivalent, uh... right? If you said to me, Nicole, I love video games, I love the video game making process, I love video game criticism, I'd be like, whoa, 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 come on. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, right. We've talked forever about how uh, fucked all of it is. <laughs> so, like, let's chill out a little bit. And this yeah. video is about yeah. how fucked it is, so it's just strange. I love all of it, and that is why I am doing this right now. I, that is why I am deconstructing it. No, I want not. to see it reconstructed you haven't, you haven't deconstructed you, you haven't answered the title you haven't done yeah. the title <laughs> you lied well, you did the worst you, you not only didn't explain it you lied he feels he's explained it right he's talking about people who are motivated to destroy art slash want to live in misery those are the things you shouldn't be which doesn't really feel like it's a promise like upon the title compass really like even even a, a noticeably a not like how many people who make like film criticism want to destroy films? I well, I mean, I think almost all of them really like the film medium. A That's very what uh, us to talk about it. Very straightforward comparison would just be if the title of the video was "You Should Never Ever Kill," and then he only talks about murder. And that's it. It's like, well, there's a lot of other things that come into the thing you're talking about, and you've highlighted them too, but you seem to just be okay with it. It's like you've picked. How many people does this really apply to? And can it provably apply to them, or are you just assuming? Are you like, oh, look well, at how can you ever, how can you ever definitively know, right? Like somebody's motivation for like cinema sins clearly only ever wanted to destroy art, and he's a miserable man. It's like I doubt uh, it. I think he just wanted to talk about films. Yeah, in I'm sure he just wanted to have fun. That's it, and that he likes films. I'm sure. And yeah, there's people behind. It's like, when did you deconstruct? When did that happen? He didn't. Like, I, I mean, he didn't deconstruct, deconstruct. He didn't. He didn't deconstruct film criticism. You can't say Aristotle and think your job's done. You're gonna have to actually <laughs> really get in and explore. If you were better at, I don't know, maybe criticizing or something. What about John Filmsbane, he mentioned him. John Filmsbane. John that's true. <laughs> that guy. That guy. He. Let me tell you one thing. That guy hates movies. John Filmsbane. He knew they were coming. He warned. Right now, I, that is why I am deconstructing it. I sure. want to see it reconstructed and built upon. How? I, I why? want to see it continue to thrive and improve. I want it all to, to just. I mean, get does he think people better. like YMS don't? Wait, that's, what do that's the crazy better? thing. He's yeah. literally highlighted the Lion King video mm. from YMS as example of bad. How? That's like one of the best ones. Yeah, yeah, he I'm never said how. He should just be going after the sharpness of the criticism and maybe point to like if you still want the. Film criticism should not be negative. Go after the general, like, I don't know, outrage framing that a lot of these videos or have. If you really feel like it. 
Yeah, you know, bad faith. faith criticism, like go after people where it's like, man, you're not being fair to the film at all. Like it just seems yeah. like you're fishing for reasons to say it's shit. Like that's that's a that's like a good that's that's an agreeable statement, right? Of like if somebody's just being hyper bad faith with like every film that they ever see ever just to make it look shit. It's like, well, yeah, that's a shitty way of going about it. But just negative broadly in general as like a thing that should be avoided when like that negativity can be derived from like earnest good intentions. The negativity yeah, and... often is derived from that and derived from, well, it's predicated on some investment. Yeah, passion and love for, uh, yeah. for films, like as a medium. People just said he Captain Falcon does. You gotta do better. Oh. Like he <laughs> quickly ran away from his <laughs> yeah. point, or well, like like acknowledge there's a lot of stuff going on here, but just went, ah, fuck it, you just do better. <laughs> You're like, okay, kind of. This video's just shit. Want you to know? see it just continue bad. to thrive and improve? I want it all to to just get better. And you <laughs> like, should love negative criticism. I want to live in a golden yeah. age of films where future generations can look back on it and, and with the oh, same wow, amount of reverence that we I don't I don't really know what and we have to <laughs> if if you want those things then you're going to have to encourage good negative criticism that's helpful Wait, but he said a golden age of films are you, are you implying that if we were much more positive we'd be in a golden age by like by saying we are because well, if, if you we wanted to do that, you would have to... Happy pills and... Well, well, the the is that, happy? It's something that he hasn't done in this video. He would have to establish some kind of feedback loop of the kind of negative criticism that he doesn't like leading to worse films. Like, in order like, to make that claim. I know, like, um, I think Mola mentioned earlier, was it... Um, not Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but one of the Marvel movies was written to be, like, Cinema Sins proof. Right. But aside, aside from those very few examples, like... People who actually make mainstream film, they don't really give a shit what mm -hmm. YouTube reviewers and YouTube video essayists have to say about their work. They'll just carry on and make stuff anyway. The fact that people make negative reviews of their work, it doesn't stop them. I really don't see how it makes a difference in the big picture. Yeah, Let's it, imagine it, it, a world where everyone who made videos did keep in mind to at least some degree, like, hey, when people you know, on YouTube and critics and stuff, when they look at this, should we construct a story and construct a movie with those, um, you know, with those criticisms in mind so that we, you know, don't have them in our movie? It's a, I mean, surely that would make, movies would almost certainly be better because of that, especially when it comes to writing and just basic logic and, you know, character, you know, construction and things of that nature. I think what's amusing to me too is that I completely agree with CJ, but the, the era we're currently in, and I'm talking like last year even, seems to be the most significant the crossover between filmmaking slash tv show show running and youtubers has ever been which is still tiny yeah. by the way and yeah. the primest yeah. example i can think of is the showrunner for picard season three interacting with youtubers and what was picard season three it's like well it's considered a radical change from season one and two for the better that's how it's considered oh, by most okay. people so it's pretty yeah. interesting to think that the most inf the most connected to youtube film criticism show that I can think of that, that has tried to appease fans is the one that like actually managed to turn the ship somewhat. Yeah, but would they have done that had YouTubers not been so critical of seasons one and exactly. two? Exactly. I don't know. Who knows? Who's to say? But like I don't see that like he's he's like it really comes across as desperation to be in a golden age, whether or not we actually are. He he wants us to just just chill out and be happy with the films that we've got so we can look back and be happy on it too. If we did that, then we would still have the original Sonic design. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's a good that's example. A, yeah. 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 Example, yeah. If there was no negative criticism, then we'd have this. You you wouldn't have gotten a Sonic. And by the way, there wouldn't have been no, one. Like, mo movies don't stop being bad because people stop making negative videos. About exactly. Them. They'll get worse. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If people don't. If people are not kind of like pushed to improve and criticize, then they'll keep carrying on thinking, oh, what we're doing is good. We, why change? In which case, mm. the goal should be to improve the quality of the feedback. So it's not about whether it's positive or negative. It's a matter of accuracy and intention. And if... Because um... negative feedback ain't going away. That's a That will never change. It will never go away. So That's yeah, just not core as, human nature stuff. That ain't like changing. An and if consequentialist stuff doesn't... You like like convince anybody? Then I'll just appeal to basic honesty. I want to be honest about the films that I'm reviewing. That's it. This guy is basically asking us to become positive at the expense of our honesty. So, you know, I don't know how yeah, justifiable is... that is. 
this is like Brave New World kind of <laughs> like. It's either that or it's just the most frustrating insinuation of bad intentions on everyone's part against well, you, like mm -hmm. everyone doing it. You know, if you genuinely believed that part of the problem was people pursuing a state of misery, that we've got like a serious psychological issue and some people just like being miserable, it'd be like, man, that's like, that goes well beyond film. That's something else. Yeah. Like, a, and, and maybe that does need addressing in some way, shape, or form, sure. And, and then, like, you know, the whole destruction of art angle, he said, like, you shouldn't have that as a motive. It's like, that's something to be explored. What does that even mean? Someone who wants to destroy art? Do they love art at all? Or do they just hate the concept of people feeling things? Like, what? I don't understand. Like, <laughs> you know, it, 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 to brush over those so quickly when I believe, from what I've gathered, that that is the clearest I can get of his, his issue, because it's got nothing to do with being negative about stuff. It's not it do for the 70s and the 80s and the 90s I, and today I want the divide between critic and audience <laughs> to heal i want people to, to heal nah to heal huh? they they gotta stop shit first off they need to stop shitting all over us and destroying our stuff secondly they like. need to come back down to earth oh. and mix in with the humans and realize because <laughs> some of them well, say think... some shit that's fucking bizarre yeah i mean i think that a lot of um, critics he's talking about, the negative ones, are actually a lot more in touch with their audiences than the people that make the films that they're talking about are. Since they I mean, do a lot of their shit online, they get feedback, those critics, and so they know... What they, Grace Randolph is one that just shocked me. Movie Bobs shocks me. Like, they, they have perspectives yeah. that are absolutely batshit insane, but you get plenty of people who are normal. They're just like, yeah, I thought the movie was kind of neat. It has this, 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 and this, this, this. It's not quite as good as this, blah, 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 you know? Seven out of ten, whatever. Perfectly normal. I doubt he would consider them a problem, but I'm sorry, I just can't get over the whole, like, we need to heal the divide between critics and audience. That's funny. <laughs> this, guy, this guy started yeah. writing an essay, skipped over an introduction, then in the middle part he just rumbled his way through. It did and feel very instead of conclusion, he inserted Gandhi's or some quote. This shit <laughs> was written the night before, if we're using essay analogies. You know? Yep. Hyped up on coffee, pulling an all-nighter just to get it done. Mm -hmm. He had a couple of realizations, but they were very half-baked. He wrote them in notes and then sort of winged it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. to well, be able like, when you... This is why when you're growing up and you have those English or literature classes that talk about... Like, you know when, um... You know when in you and when you were you were growing up and you learned about the scientific method, like form a hypothesis and all that sort of stuff. That's like a guideline to you know explore the world and to you know find the truth and to see how things really work to kind of weed out your biases. Like there's literate there's literary versions of that that you use when scripting. Um, you want to have like a general premise and then you want to eventually answer it. Like we all this is all in school. I, I hope it still is. But, um, like, the fact that the title of his video remained basically unanswered and then lied about is sort of indicative of you just weren't really thinking about this when you were writing it. You just sort of wrote this stuff This video would take fucking whatever. ages to, to, to make if you really wanted to be definitive about film criticism and whether or not, like, what role it plays in culture. It's like, oh, that's a, a chunky topic. ...to see that criticism can be validating. Just like when Roger Ebert helped legitimize Martin Scorsese. Roger was the, the very first person, very early on in my life as a filmmaker, uh, to call attention to my work. It was 1968, I think. And over the years, he's championed my movies. He wrote and spoke about them with great care and insight and criticism, and was always so this is the thing, right, that I think about. Clearly the point being made here is that Martin Scorsese is one of the best directors of all time, and the criticism slash, like, an appraisal of his film is, is helpful of what brought him up. You're like, so you're saying good creators being given more exposure is good, correct? And you're like, yeah, and we're like, now let's flip it. Bad creators getting exposure of how bad their shit is, that good as well? Or is that one bad? Or is it bad? Should we not do that? Should we? And if we shouldn't, then how do we expect them to improve? If the score says he should rise, should the Uwe Ball fall? Oh god, you know, please don't remind me of his existence. <laughs> we watched an Uwe Ball movie recently. That was we did. Fun. That was something. That was something. Well, which one, oh, which was, one that? was that? In the name of the king! It has Jason I Statham see. in it.
It does. It has Jason what? Statham, and it has it has actually uh, quite a few people. It has Shaggy and <laughs> Burt Reynolds is in it. <laughs> How, how and Hellboy it has, um, to that. It has Hellboy, yeah. Um, it has Gimli. <laughs> it, has, it does. John Rice Davies is in it. Oh my god! How does this man do it? He doesn't do it he anymore. Doesn't. He, he, <laughs> he doesn't do it, and he doesn't do it. He failed okay. to do it. He's never been able to do it. <sighs> He's there, really, for me when I needed support in one kind or another. Like me, Roger cared about the history of seven a... minutes and, and its preservation. He cared about its place in our culture, in the culture of the world. Thank God he Scorsese insists... is here to offer some insight in this video. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, uh, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, the Matt Damon portion is really good too. But hey. Yeah, the Matt Damon <laughs> thing's insightful. That it be accorded the respect it deserved. A really, really disgusting spectacle of rotten tomatoes in cinema score. Uh, Aggregate sites, my man. They just suck for the most part. Yep, they really do. I mean, I think he would have been railing against it and throwing the money changers out of the temple. And then when Roger Ebert said that video games can never be art. Oh, yeah, that was a really just bad perspective. That's one of those. That's one of those OK Boomer moments. Such an old man type. <laughs> This is so wrong. It's there wrong. had to be medium someone of conveyance to of go ideas could never be art. Oh, it's so cringy, isn't it? But that's okay. It's, Ebert it's no said that vi video games can never be art. There had to be someone to go out there against him and say, no, playing Halo split screen till 3 a.m. was an extremely transformative experience for me. Video games are art, and I am taking them That's seriously. That's the argument I'd use to say that they're He's art. A, he almost is That's half memeing. It's like, don't meme. Yeah. Video games are fucking art. Yeah, yeah. don't meme. Yeah. 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 Sounds like yeah. 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 They're beautiful. I love them. Good for them. Thumbs yeah. up. Yeah. Video games, you'll get the respect you deserve as time goes on. Trust as me. As soon as you one. start respecting You're... yourselves. <laughs> There's a little bit of that, yeah. Good on that you, video games. is what criticism is all about to me. It's what? about legitimizing art forms it's about reaching should we delegitimize any art forms and do you think that negativity plays a role in delegitimizing art well i is, wonder is, is film, if film criticism is negative is it inherently delegitimizing if the answer is no then this title is just like it's just a this is just like an incorrect statement or or at least like according to his sort of like normative claims right like why would you make that point so that would be the question what if my art it, form it, is negative I right, go for it. Let's just. What if my art form is setting fire to things that don't belong to me? Like, that's that's an expression. <laughs> you just legitimize so, I mean, you know. that. Is that a legitimate art form? Yeah. Well, because as well, he's. I feel like he was about to get self-aware. He's like the 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 critic has put out a point of view, an expression of his point of view, and someone else has been critical of it, which is important because he's delegitimizing art. Uh, sorry, video games as art, and so they they're countering that with what it would be a negative video. No. Saying Roger yeah. Ebert is wrong, that is negative, and yet it's creating a positive. How does this, why, I, I, I feel like I, the video's I, just started, like we've finally gotten yeah. to something. Like this is the second, this is like second minute material here. Yeah. But we're almost at the end, we've got like less than a minute left, and we have <laughs> like really not at all explored this concept. Maybe Thank this God is part one. <laughs> out to the audience and reassuring them that yes, this stuff is meaningful. Thank you. It's a positive okay. force that will hopefully help us. It's so weird because, like, what, when when I say something's on? bad, no it is meaningful <laughs> to me. Stop with all the sentimental bollocks, dude! Come on. But the implication is that when we're negative, it's meaningless. It. Yeah. Well, it's, that's not it's, true. It's, it's isn't it? Like, the implication is it's meaningless, it is, uh, oh fuck, now I've forgotten the word I used before. What did he say? Oh, delegitimizing. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still kind of stuck on that. Like, what if, what if the negative criticism isn't delegitimizing, or its intent isn't to delegitimize, then is it okay? Yeah, what if, I don't know, I go out and make a film, and then someone who's a close friend, or like, I don't know, student of mine, or whatever, writes me a letter of criticisms about the film, like, very sincerely, because they really want to see me succeed. Mm -hmm. What now? I mean, but that's they, what teachers that's should do. Imagine like if teachers really... never offered negative criticism. 
Well, it's just, is that something they shouldn't do, that they ought not do? Yeah, and are they obliged to not be scathing when they do so? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, are like, they obliged they to, like, blunt that? the edge yeah. of the spear for no reason? Um, what if what if they have the attitude of, like, I don't know, that's that's what they need to do. They need to be, like, super raw and honest about what they thought, that they shouldn't yeah. treat someone differently just because they know them personally. Like, what if that was their attitude? It's like, again, is that something they ought not do? Because that's the, ti that's the claim that the title suggests. But I mean, I feel like the title hasn't even, like, really addressed this... Or not the title, the video hasn't addressed the central claim that film criticism should not be negative. I think it's done a very good job of that at all. Well, and not to mention this uh, idea of... So, you know, like, uh, legitimizing, delegitimizing. Can I delegitimize? Because I, I, I don't want the uh, writing a script as we're filming the film to be considered a legitimate form of script writing. No, I don't want writing. that to be the way that we do things. Yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't Is that like okay? That Can we delegitimize de de that by being critical of it? I hope so. Yep. Or, you know, delegitimize practices in the film industry, like working VFX artists to the bone mm -hmm. on, like, incredibly tight deadlines to push these films out as quick as possible. And then if you were to talk about the negative outcomes of that, how it reflects in the work and how it's bad for them, like, that would be negative, right? That would be negative film criticism. But, it, again, like, if the intentions... Man, like, this is, like... You probably could have never actually meaningfully addressed this topic in 25 minutes. But, like, even then... You could have done a decent job. I mean, if you were really on task, you could... 25 minutes, you could say a lot of stuff in the 25 minutes. The conclusion was always going to be... Incredibly unfocused. The big problems with any video come down to if they're lying, if they have no passion for the topic, if they're solely trying to make money in a sense that they're... Even that's not really a problem, it's, it's really the other things. If your goal to make money Those leads you to lead being to insincere, that's yeah. the problem. Like, it's... Mm. Th that should be the conclusion, that he feels... And I wonder if he would agree to this, I don't know, but if, he, if the film criticism community on YouTube has become much less sincere... It's it's unfortunate how people are not sharing how they actually think and feel about a thing. They they instead share what they believe will make them the most money, whether or not they believe it. Like that's a video I can buy, sure. Um, I would still argue that that's just a thing for all of humanity at all times, and that uh, you know, you can you can tell the levels of sincerity with individual creators, their accuracy and their passion is just going to be, and you'll never stop it. You'll never stop people trying to make money, or um. <laughs> People always seek personal success, wealth, and, you know, all that good stuff. Reach mm. new heights, and, and maybe, just once, help us reach a state of content, rather than... I don't want to be content. I don't know, I don't like this world, yeah. <laughs> this, I don't this like world this world. Sounds, content, but... sounds like it's, equilibrium. This is like someone selling me drugs. This, this is brave <laughs> new world shit. Don't you want to be content and safe? So when you want it to be that we every day turn on YouTube and we just go, ah, oh, movie has released. Movie is film. Wouldn't um, you like it if everyone just said everything was good? Not even mm -hmm. thumbs up or down, just thumb. What? <laughs> like, thumbs sideways. up is implied. Just sideways forever. <laughs> yeah. I, in a constant state of contentiousness. This music! Oh, see, you see what we did. <laughs> Join me in my world of complete We've contentment. we got our Family Guy speech. Everything's going back to normal, guys. You'll never have to think outside of the box you're safe in. Contentiousness. You know what? That's some wordplay. That's kind of all right. I disagree with the broad <laughs> statements of the video, but, you know, hey, you know, good job, you. I actually don't, I don't mind that. <laughs> to be honest. I like the idea that you give something four thumbs and people are like, out of what? You're like, or thumbs. How'd you do that? You just, but that's the thing, like, in this neutral world of his, <laughs> where nothing is, you just, I give this thumbs, and you're like, oh, I, I sure. In this neutral world with the four thumbs, that it's like, I give four thumbs, and he holds his hands up, and then he starts just screaming thumbs. his thumbs split in half to turn into two additional thumbs to give the thumbs up. But this fractal of thumbs coming out of his hand. A fractal? Oh, what, like, um, like, uh, in Doctor Strange with all of the little fingers growing out of his hand, you know, out of his fingers, more fingers and fingers. This sounds like a scary place. Oh, is that is the this end? a scary place? He had a moment there. Oh, he thinks he was, like, uh... meaningful or something. No, I guess not. Cool.
We well, never no, found he, out he thought that, that was meaningful. Was. He just put a bip in to be like, hey, you know, calm down. It's not, it's, we don't have to do too deep here. <laughs> I'm not perfect. It's, you see, I'm joking, so you can't criticize the tone yeah, because it's, I'm it's self-aware, you see. Ooh, he's got... I have no strong feelings one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what died, that's what it truly feels like he was. said hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got the oversimplification of film criticism there. From him as well. The I wonder if that's just about Rotten Tomatoes, oh. I guess. Well, These numbers mean nothing. In there. The numbers it's mean not that they don't mean anything. I mean, it feels it's suitable to, to maybe check that out on top of this one quick. See what he says. Uh, yeah, sure, we can uh, take a look. I'm curious. <laughs> okay. Feels like a good All time. Right. Yeah. Let's have a look. I'm curious about that Star Wars one about uh, The oh. Empire Strikes Back isn't really Star Wars. Hold on. Okay. Me. Is movie good or bad? 100 years of arguing between critics Why are we doing and audiences music? has led us okay. to this hey, glorious moment cool, where we can now I like it too, but like, what's clearly it got see with that we are not even f***ing <laughs> close Nothing, just thinks it to sounds answering sure it that it's question. A but does that question serve us in the first place? I've had the idea for this video floating around in my head for a while now, and I was just kind of debating whether or not it was worth it. Don't need this spot. It's all right it to really make but between the right <laughs> the answer is yes it's implied that by movie, the fact you made the it. YMS oh, well, it okay, i remember that i do remember that yeah we, we talked to him about it about it it's yeah, yeah it's the do you finish films before rating them thing the fantano gives every denzel curry album an eight controversy and this weird morbius tweet uh <laughs> I feel like this topic has now reached critical Wait, mass. What, Wait, what was, what was that? I've never seen what, that. What? I've never seen that before. Audiences love more views, but critics want, want you to see it. The question is why? Trust the people and see for yourself. <laughs> oh, you're a, you are a liar. <laughs> the critics don't a, want you to see it. Brand. <laughs> Morbius, oh the my god. Don't want you to see me. That threats weren't allowed on YouTube. Nope. Morbius tweet. Uh, <laughs> I feel like this topic has now reached critical mass, and I'm going to talk about it. All I feel right. like the real root cause of all of these things that have been popping up that I just mentioned is really just a case of human beings loving to simplify things. We love to boil Isn't things Isn't that so down. interesting in the context of the previous video? Yeah. Loving to simplify things. Not even Why, yeah. categorizing like a lot of the time. And it's a simpler way to categorize. We like understanding the world around us. We're wired to do it. ...to their essence and make them as digestible as possible because we're lazy and thinking is hard. Ever since that... I don't like that as the hard. reason, but all right, we'll go with it. ...piece of shit, lungfish surfaced. Literally everything has just continued to get worse. Human don't consciousness was... He's just the lungfish. He's, he's he doing do? his best. He's just got, got a, he just got out of the water, man. We really house. got a lot to yeah. thank him for, pioneer. okay? Yeah. He is, a, he is a real pioneer, that one. Thank like God all for the human fish. conceptions of life itself, it seems that the ways that we engage with art or criticism are no stranger to societal simplification. Let's go back to the Rotten Tomatoes page for the Uncharted movie for all a right. second. How uh, 90 exactly of people did enjoyed this that? 41 percent really? get calculated? Well, to give you the simple version, basically, if a film critic gives a film a 6 out of 10 or higher, that is considered a fresh review. This is why I don't like Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's out like 5 out of 10, isn't it? Or lower, uh, no, that six, is considered... 6 will be constituted as, like, positive, so it needs to be a 6 to be fresh, oh, okay. and uh, then if it's, like, 5.9 or lower, then it's rated as rotten. And this is why Metacritic is better than Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. Giving mm -hmm. me like the average of the number score is way more useful than yeah. just telling me yes. what percentage of people. Yeah, this is a yeah. weird system. Good always has bad been. because it's a very skewed. Well, it's just skewed good. Metric. What does good mean? You know, if you give it like a six out of ten, that like it could be that a film gets a hundred percent because everybody gave it a six out of ten, and it's like yeah, I think exactly. people will look at that one hundred and go, "Oh my god, it must be a masterpiece." It's like no, mm -hmm. it could just be that everybody thought it was really like slightly above average it was and really convert... slightly above average yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it, it's whereas again with like metacritic which even then using like number aggregates is still like eh you know like but at least it's the aggregate of the number score that was given to a film that's yeah. way more useful i can to me. see all those one to fives they don't just disappear you. you take the total amount of fresh reviews versus the total amount of reviews period average that out and boom 
You got your tomato meter score. The entirety of the site is dedicated. Yeah, there it is again. <laughs> again? Yeah. Yeah. The beautiful tunes. Yep. To boiling reviews down to was movie good or bad and barfing out a percentage based on that. It is far too simplistic. And honestly... Yeah, I mean, true, it's but it's simultaneously, design. that's what it is. Yeah, like it's... Yeah. Who's going to it being like, I wish to have a complicated review that has thumb up or down? Or just thumb. Okay. I, hey, I hate all of these sites, and I don't use them, but this is what they do. If you think that... Mm -hmm. I, I don't, do you want them to be more complex? I don't understand. You'd be like going hey, to someone who makes a six-hour video being like, why can't you just say movie bad? Did y'all yeah. know that uh, know. Cuties is sitting at 87% with the critics still? Oof. Oh. Yeah. That's why, that's why Rotten Tomatoes can just Maybe we don't heal now. the divide between <laughs> critics and audience somehow we leave it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this a mistake. video... Mm -hmm. It's gonna turn out, but I think it's it's a bit stronger than the last one in well, terms of its like. I think most people hate the introduction, Rotten Tomatoes especially, but the aggregate sites as as like a form of approval of film. I'm I'm not against mm -hmm. that idea, but I am kind of like it's like oh this is too simple. It's like it it is literally meant to be simple. That's not the criticism. Mm -hmm. Simple isn't oh. bad. Exactly. Metacritic is simple. Steam if anything, when Steam says is more simple because it doesn't even like do anything to it. If I'm, it's like if you want to, if you want to be clear, don't speak in parables. You know. If I'm considering picking up a game, uh, and Steam says overall reviews are overwhelmingly positive, I'll be like, oh, so this is easy then. Yeah, bye. If it's negative, I'll be like, no fucking way, I'm touching that, because uh, that is definitive at that point. Steam's pretty reliable. It means that something mm. went hideously wrong with the game if it's overall negative reviews. Probably doesn't even fucking work. A good chance, um, you know. Yeah, and I really do appreciate Steam's reviews being the overall and the last thirty days. That's yeah. extremely useful. Good stuff. Yeah, if I didn't read the Steam reviews, I wouldn't have realized that that Last of Us PC port is absolute dog shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Misleading, yes. Even if Rotten Tomatoes has an entire page on their website dedicated to explaining all this, remember, our little human pea brains don't want to do that much thinking. Thinking is hard. Uh, speak for your fucking self, Dan. Jeez. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. Stop with the, like, when I see the Rod Tavares shit, I'm always just like, hmm, I wonder what that'll mean. Once I've seen the film, I'll be able to know, probably. Um, because, like, you know, if they say, like, Indiana Jones is the Dial of Destiny, if you, if someone told you it has 100% fresh, you'd be like, eh, okay. And if someone told you it has 0%, completely rotten, you'd be like, wow. Uh, Okay. But is that going to tell you whether or not the film is any good? It's like, we all know no. We, 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 we all know that that's going to give a shit all information. Because critic scores are weird. But it's kind of the same with audience scores. You get that every once in a while, where audiences are really yeah. happy or sad with something where you're like, what? Why? No average person who isn't cannibalized by internet movie culture the way that maybe you are and the way that I definitely am, the average person is not going to read all that and they're going to have absolutely no clue as to how all of this works. Wow, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them. Chat. Um, I... Find that the, the I guess the point then is more so the damage it does to the average uh, viewer of this site. Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. I just I feel bad for anybody who thinks that like fresh or rotten is definitive and reliable. Like, oh, yeah, that sucks that you didn't know otherwise. Right. Oh, it's um, you know, it's it's something that's uh, it's something that people have kind of aware of when it comes to like video game reviews from like outlets. Um, it seems like people are less aware of it with films. It's like. What it, what is an opinion worth if you don't really know like who said it and what their metric is for like good or bad, you know? Mm. Like well, so that's the thing. arguments in favor of it. If a family or, member yeah. of mine was like, I went to see a fucking new Marvel movie and they said fresh on Rotten Tomatoes and I didn't think it was good. And I was like, Oh, you you thought it was well, gonna be good just because of that? Yeah, like who's they? Do you often agree with what they have to say? Like who are they? You know, who are these critics? Whose uh, perspectives and wh and why? What were they looking for out of films? You know, because uh, everybody looks for something different out of films, right? And to be honest with you, it's I've talked funny. to plenty of people who are quote unquote normies when it comes to film. I don't remember any of them talking about how Rotten Tomatoes is reliable. No, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Well, let's well just no, take Grace Randolph speaks very highly of Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I will have you know. Which is funny so. because she's subsumed by like internet culture, and yet she's That's like true. Rotten Tomatoes. Is she reliable. should be the person who is most wary of it, but uh. uh. Tomato meter score out of the equation entirely here for a second because I don't think that's the biggest problem with Rotten Tomatoes. To me, Rotten Tomatoes' biggest offense is that in its attempt to simplify everything into two rigid categories, critics and audience, good and bad, etc. Basically, in doing so, it is completely alienating the user from actively engaging with the criticism. Aside from giving time what i feel like don't you just have to click? nobody yeah nobody has ever used these scores as a substitute for discussion you can just click them no one and you'll yeah read them. like yeah. it's it's i know yeah it, it shows you which critics from where and then it has the link to the full review and the date of what they said and if that got a six or less that's what uh, i mean oh it even says the specific ratings there i'm happy to hate um, on rotten tomatoes but this doesn't seem fair it's like if they're looking yeah, for the number a... they'll go and look at the number and they won't look at the rest but if they're looking for reviews they will look at the reviews mm. these two things aren't like mutually exclusive with one another it's not like people are doing one at the expense of the other tiny blurbs from the critics or generalizing the overall critical opinion into a consensus, Rotten Tomatoes is not really interested at all in allowing you to interface or- Motherfucker, you've got a link not, to full a, review. Not, oh, well. Look, you have all of, all <laughs> of right the there. people that are registered to be critics on Rotten Tomatoes. It has links to the full review, their original scores. It has their little blurb, the date. It has, I mean, that's just not true, man. I don't think this is fair. Like, you can't, <laughs> you're showing the thing. It's on the screen and you're saying that it's not like a At thing, this point, but you're showing it. You need to take issue with the people writing the reviews. Like what What else is Rotten Tomatoes supposed to do now if you agree with it in like, but you're being like, oh, there's just not enough discussion happening. It's like, you, you got to do some clicking. It's right there. You might have to do the, you. I mean, if you got to Rotten Tomatoes, that's arguably more difficult than clicking on the full review link. I don't know, Rags. I feel like he's delegitimizing this art form. Oh, yeah. This is some negative criticism of Rotten Tomatoes that I, quite <laughs> frankly, don't appreciate. I would like to be much more We content. need to mend. We need to heal. Yes. The divide heal. between Rotten Tomatoes and humanity. I agree. Yes. <laughs> Otherwise, engage with any of the reviews. Oh, yes, Rotten yes, Tomatoes Rotten does Tomatoes allow users does... to see which critic reviews are posted and gives the users the option to read the full review, but you and I both know that isn't the objective of the website as a whole. So here's the thing, what? I kind of think it is. <sighs> Rotten Tomatoes does not, if it wasn't their objective, like, it's a lot of work, I guess, to Why do Why wouldn't that? they just not have sure it as an option? Yeah, stuff. fuck it. Yeah. It is, like, I don't agree with their, their, their their methodology for determining determining freshness right i don't i don't like that i don't think it's really that helpful at all but if you go to rotten tomatoes only to find a big list of all of the critics of the internet and what they say it is basically a hub for you to get easily to all of their original articles in which case rotten tomatoes is actually really damn useful I hate to say it, but I know it's viable to get a good handle on a lot of review critic people's opinions to go to Rotten Tomatoes, click in, click in, and find out. The idea also, that Rotten Tomatoes is like, no, no, fuck, they clicked in, fuck. <laughs> no. Oh no, they're engaging with the website that we created, oh Shit. no. Yeah, it's also they're totally just cope. The objective of the website isn't relevant here. No, they're becoming accustomed to the yeah, service um, we provide. However, the fuck you no. determine the objective. Well, the thing no. of the, the the through line of thought here, it's like person's experience with Rotten Tomatoes is the problem. What is it? It's like, well, they basically only experience it through is it fresh or is it rotten? You're like, um, okay, there's some viability to that. We discussed that. I was like, okay, and he's like, and you know, there's just no real way to just like get a good discussion on the movies. It's like, well, well, there is. You click it, and then he's like, yeah, but that's not the point of the site. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, you know what? I guess wow. that makes it a bad website that's really useful for this thing that it doesn't want to do but did, or whatever. It doesn't change anything. So weird. Views that the data is being pulled from. 
There is nothing personal about this at all. It is just numbers. Personal? You'll, you'll it leads you to the individual <laughs> opinions of people in their entire articles. This is just like, about passing information. Like, what you got here is what they're presenting to you, which is you get everybody's perspective uh, rounded up or down based on five or six, if you understand the rules, and then aggregate it out. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. And if you're like, yeah, but that's not yeah. very personal. It's like, yeah, of course it's not very personal. What does that even yeah. mean? <laughs> Isn't that the point of rating websites to make it less personal and objective? You know, try to calculate it. Yeah, there's. To make, there's... I think making it less personal is probably just a natural byproduct of you know objectification in some elements. Yeah. But um, I mean, simplifying I it all the way up in tiers. Rating that's... without you know. That's what we're How doing here. Is... Halo gets seventy percent. I don't care. Well, Fuck so I was, like, I was about to say actually. <laughs> You can scan through these lists, and the interest can be like, oh, is there any 100%? Oh, there is. Peaky Blinders Season 6. Oh, I wonder how that got 100%. It's like, well, it's probably just a series of, you know, 6 out of 10 pluses. Probably some and high ones in there as well. All the reviews hyperlinked in a but it, organized columns. Well, that's the thing. If 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 you then said, like, more, why even look at that? You can't gain anything. And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm just curious about the overall score. If I am, if I want to know why, I can click it. This is the most, like, basic interaction. This is, if anything, good... I'm kind of baffled. Like, oh, this summarization of the scores of these things are all very impersonal, unless you click them, which the, the site doesn't want you to do. Apparently. Very strange. Numbers and symbols that inherently mean nothing to you. For example... Okay, so... Well, they mean what they mean. mean. <laughs> they... So, all, so numbers and symbols, generally, while they don't have inherent meanings, they have what we call shared understandings. I don't want to have to explain what language is, but I feel I, I don't really want to get into it. I'm very it's weirded numbers. out by this. It is an aggregate site. It's it's on the tin. Mm -hmm. That's what's promised. That's what it means. But the reason why we don't think it's very meaningful is because of the fact that the people who are telling us these numbers all change all the time. It could be a different group of them. It could be they feel different things on the day. Who knows what they value? That's why I prefer individuals. And when someone I trust recommends a movie and says like, "Oh, it's it's." about as good as this other movie that I have opinions on. I was like, oh, that, that translates an idea very quickly. However, if I want to know how the world feels about anything in particular, I'd rather go to Metacritic, because I think they're much more straightforward. But you could go to Rotten Tomatoes. You could check out. You could. This is, it's not an it's a, It seems like it's a decent, essentially, hub to find links to all of the individual articles written by internet critics. That does seem like it, it's quite useful for that. But Didn't whoever you... does that, that's the problem. How many people do actually click through and read yeah, any of those? No How many of them even read the blurb? But you that's know, not a fault of the site, can... though, is it? That's... No, 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 no. That's a, fight of, that's a fault of the user. The, the site presents you all the information you need to get more information. It's just a lot of people won't pursue it. Yeah. No name for me. Just one. Just one critic whose reviews regularly go up on Rotten Tomatoes. Movie Bob. Bob Chipman. <laughs> yeah. Movie Bob, movie, wait, the movie Bob's reviews actually yes. get on Rotten Tomatoes. You know who yeah. else is doing? Yikes. Chris Randolph. Chris, Duckman, Randall, right? Chris yeah, Stuckman yeah, yeah, yeah. too. He got his on Rotten Tomatoes oh, as far as I know. Oh, well, really? who's the who's the boring guy? Um, Chris Stuckman. <laughs> Chris Stuckman. Yeah, his his reviews <laughs> yeah. probably go up on there. Um, <laughs> I love how you knew exactly who it was. I mean, it's yeah. All boring these guy. a lot of YouTubers and stuff. They their their stuff goes on there. Mm hmm. Tomatoes. Besides, maybe. Chris Stuckman, Damn it. or the infamous. <laughs> oh Armin my White. God! Because we didn't mention Almond White, so there you go. We won. We got two. That's a very. I was. I was fucking. Though. I was really hoping he didn't say. Don't mention Chris Stuckman, Grace Randall, for movie Bob. He'd be like, no. <laughs> Titans of film the... criticism, like yeah. movie Bob. <laughs> First to admit it, I can't tell you a single name, and I have been looking at scores on Rotten Tomatoes for at least. So who's the problem? And pay attention. Who's the no, problem? No, no. I it's a matter of paying out there. It's, um, they they are out there. Some people, but I mean, it could even be like different writers at the same you know uh, outlet, like the same newspaper, and those people don't necessarily stay there forever, or they get shuffled around. I can understand why you wouldn't remember any individual. That's why YouTube is such a. Uh, good system for finding individuals um, well, because you can it, get direct information from. If he said to me, why don't you know any of the critics on Rotten Tomatoes? Because I don't fucking care about Rotten Tomatoes. Because I don't go to Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. And then and then <laughs> if he said, well, well, I do, so why don't I? And I'm like, because you don't look at the names? Don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah. This is a you problem. I can't explain why you don't know the names. They're there. You know more than we would. At least the past okay. 12 years. I can't tell you any of these people's names, 
I can't tell you what they regularly- If you are using the site, I don't know why you don't recognize the names. If you, yeah, I- It's a yeah, you if problem. You're a if you visit it enough, and read enough reviews, like, I, I feel like you'd eventually just get some names by chance. Like, I love that he says, like, you can't you count Chris, and it's like, why? Why not? Why can't you count Chris? Do you like Morty loves... Critic? Yeah, I mean, Dislike. this guy loves to villainize, like, things, right? The last time it was, like, you know, these YouTube film critics, right? They're villains, they're destroying, you know, movies and cinema, and With now it's Rotten Tomatoes, like... Who are we destroying, actually? Like, what... In every sense, we are coming off as villains. The Rotten Tomatoes is a villain in this case. Well, I mean, who are we protecting, really? Like, what is his point? I'm so confused. So there's this theoretical person who looks at Rotten Tomatoes, sees that the witch has a low score, or, you know, that's not the case, but let's just pretend it is. And they go, ah, well, that's not for me. And he's there like, it would have been for you, but you trusted a site that is so bad in the way that it aggregates things, and that's bad. But then, like, he's got... Th th there's something to that. That was the one of the first points he made that we were talking about. Like, eh, okay. But he started going to these weird fucking things. Like, you can't yeah. discover any discussion on Rotten Tomatoes. It's like, yes, you can. It's like, but the site's not built to support it. It's like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And he's like, yeah, but Sorry. you don't know the names of the reviewers. It's like, you don't. You what? don't know the names of the reviewers. And I don't know why. If you've been reading it, I don't know why you don't know the names of the reviewers. Like, this video is fucking strange. I can't tell you whether or not they're engaging with the films in good faith. Hello, then look! People! You can tell from the reviews, can, my you man. Can, you can, yeah. The, all of the information is there, and it is not hidden. Like, okay. I'm trying to be so... I can't believe it's making me defend Rotten Tomorrow. It's sad. Like... If I, I'm like, oh, that new, yep. you know, Avengers movie is coming out. I check the Rotten Tomatoes and it says the critic score is 83. Like, hmm. Click into it and it says, this is a fun romp filled with all kinds of cameos. You will be excited to see the next chapter after this one. And then the next review says, like, I just, oh, it was a laugh a minute. I couldn't stop laughing at all the amazing cameos. <laughs> and you just like, you start to get a picture. You're like, oh, so the movie's going to have this, this. Okay. Like, I don't like Rotten Tomatoes, but you can actually get a grasp on what the movie is uh, from reading several reviews. I've done it a couple of times on Real BBC now. It's, uh, and it's often interesting to get into the minds of the critics. They are weird sometimes, the things that mm -hmm. they celebrate or uh, criticize. But, you know, he's saying now, like, my problem is I don't even know if they're genuine. It's like, oh, well, I mean, I guess that's always going to be a problem for you. You'll never know for sure what everyone's saying. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes is known as a site filled with shills on the critic side, but that that's just down to you. That's what you think. Maybe if you learned their names and you learned their work previously, you could have a better grasp on it. The singular biggest reason that YouTube has become an overwhelming hub for film criticism is because it is inherently more personal oh, okay. than a website well, you just said like what I said. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes could ever hope to be. If you subscribe... I don't even know if that's fair, though. Well, Rotten... Rot I mean, it's Rotten Tomatoes is like more of a gateway to those individuals rather than the hub for it, you know? And Grace all Randolph's and YouTube channel is much more personal than Grace Randolph's articles reviewing films. Like, well, yeah, because she's like vlogging. You can even see her. She talks about more random shit, I guess, because the articles are much more focused. I, I don't know. It just seems like, yeah, of course they are. ...to this channel. It's probably not just because I dissected a film or a particular topic, but because I made you feel something <laughs> while I did it. And the more films that I talk about, the more that you will understand my tastes and the more that you'll hopefully relate to them. And oh wow, this is all just like, yeah, so information. Well, well yeah, so the, could, you, could you get the problem maybe? You starting to gather like the amount of time it would take to do that and how much time people don't have to spend on things like that. Yeah. This is why when people say like, oh, don't worry, season two is really good, or that this video game, you might not like the opening few hours, but once you get fully, a lot of people say like, I don't have time to waste. I want to play games that I'll enjoy throughout, or I want to watch stuff mm -hmm. that I'll enjoy throughout. You know, the, the, there is a thing about that. So like a lot of people use Rotten Tomatoes because it's fucking quick. From there, that can help you maybe trust my recommendations 
or heed my warnings. On YouTube, you are pretty much required what do you mean to I engage we're not meant with to be the doing actual criticism. Or when did this video come out? <laughs> that <laughs> probably came before it. Before it. Yeah. Here, I'll, I'll take a look. This came out a year ago. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Well, Substance. Yeah, I guess you changed your mind on that one. <laughs> review, at least if you want to get anything meaningful out of it and you oh by the way the top comment that he loved is your production value is so good i don't know why you're so unpopular uh, oh unpopular I, is he unpopular or not i don't think he's, he doesn't seem unpopular to me yeah he, i feel like unpopular doesn't mean that like you're not like unpopular is almost like infamous right like it's maybe more, he's, kind of, yeah. maybe the commenter just misworded it like why don't I you have so. more views mm. Oh, here. Oh, Meep Top's response. If I had to guess, it's probably because semicolon. I cover a variety of topics on a platform where catering to a, sp a specified niche is preferred. The topics I choose are not often ones that align with common or trending searches, and my average click-through rate and average view duration are somewhat low across the board because of the former things I listed. Also, I'm not very fun at part, but who knows, really? That I just being said, at that point watching the video all the way through and engaging with it in the form of a like and comment helps a ton, so thank you. You just want to this ask him, right? YouTube. You want to be like, you you should be popular, shouldn't you? And he's like, yeah. You should have lots <laughs> yeah, that, of views. Yeah, because what he said was weird. Why wouldn't it just be like, oh, you know, who knows? You well, know, I mean, he's doing everything right. Like, the production oh, yeah, is great. Uh, you could just say, like, you know, I'm getting there, you know? Yeah. It's just Rather that than, stupid well, algorithm. Here's the reasons why it's I'm not very popular. Okay? Like, I don't get that. That's, yeah, it's a little bit odd. Use the platform. Oh, also, well, before we carry on, um, does one of our knee, uh, what, one of our one of our cast members need to head out? That is very much true. But before he does, that gives you a clue. That knocks it down it, significantly. It's true. It could be anyone except for Nutsa and Theo. True. Well. It is CJ. I'm so sorry to oh. reveal it. That was going to be a oh, season-ending finale thing, but I spoiled it early. Yep. Um, uh -oh. but, I mean, everyone go home. It's uh, it's it's been a it's been a journey. I I think you've come you've learned a lot about film criticism. I think this is going to feed right into every video you make going forward, right? You have learned a lot. No, I'm going to stop. I can't carry on after this. <laughs> like, my, life is, my life is over. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. Well, oh, before, what can I, I do? I randomly looked over a telegram, and it just so happens that someone posted this picture. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that's relevant. This is relevant to CJ leaving, yes. Uh, <laughs> playing movies are good. But before you go, tell people where you are and what you're up to, and what they can expect to happen next. Adventure um, on your channel. Well, well, I'm uh, back from a holiday and uh, working on videos again, hoping to get the next big video out uh, sometime in June, uh, probably late June. At this rate, um, the, the Scooby suit may appear again. We will, we'll have to mm. see. It, I don't want to give away too much right now, but it might be the most controversial video I've ever made. Oh, in terms um, of what's in it or just a broad opinion of it? In terms of what's in it. Okay, all right. Like... I'm not sure how I'm going to get this video monetized, if at all. So mm. we'll we'll see. I can have it for any out. reason. Yeah, but I'm excited. It's going to be uh, going to be controversial, huh? Yeah, Link. So, yeah, it's Serbian film. That's exactly it. I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna no. do a frame by frame breakdown of a Serbian film. Well, link in chat and description. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for All right, five thanks hours, for having me. Again. It was really fun. Good to yeah, see man. you. Always, yeah. Toodaloo. Always fun. You That's have a good night now. Toodaloo. Bye. 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 All righty. To its greatest potential. But of course... We're not just gonna sit here and sniff our own farts. YouTube is not perfect, <laughs> not even close. I mean, for starters, the algorithm oh, pushes no! the hell. Oh, it's, oh, it's, oh, it's no. the, we're back. It's the proto oh, video. This, this is where we're all developed. I love the Sim soundtrack. It's so great. <laughs> Reaction. <laughs>
ordinary videos, oh especially God. if those videos are going to elicit <laughs> anger, which is, <laughs> it comes with a whole slew of problems. Oh, wow. One we, of which no, being that these this. videos no. are... Mate, this will give us insight no. into like how he got where he was. Maybe we'll hear something yeah, new here. Yeah, the development of his, his, yeah, this thought. A whole slew of problems. One of which being that these videos are often very devoid of substance or critical thinking. And also... Ooh, see, this is, oh, that's a completely that's, different that's, issue. That's a very different issue. Yeah. Devoid of substance or critical thinking. It's like, if you had made that video, I would have fucking agreed with you. I'd well, have been yeah, like, yeah, that's man. That's something that's better to substantiate and I think pushes it in the right direction. Oh, well, that's a way better video. Make that one. So as of late, the algorithm seems to prioritize shorter videos, which kind of throws depthful analysis. I'm not even, I don't know anymore. Long is quite liked by it, the algorithm. It seems to depend yeah. specifically what you're doing. In criticism, long is definitely on the rise. It's, yes. uh, yeah, it's, maybe it's more complicated than length now. It's something else. It's out of the window unless you are willing. I, I, I mean, I know for a fact that people talk about like back in the day when it first started, it was just view count. Then it was view counts on longer videos. Then it became audience retention. I think that's the, currently the most important thing. How long can you keep when it comes someone to on a video? Money? Uh, algorithm. Like, what what YouTube likes. They want I you to think... make videos that can grab people in for uh, as long as possible. Yeah. Essentially, the more and the longer that people watch a video, the better. Yeah, because um, people might say, like, what about shorts? It's like, that's still what shorts are, right? They're, they're, they're like a hot potato. They pass you on, or pass you on, pass you on. It's like, as long as I can grab you for 10 seconds, and then the next one does too, and the next one does too, eventually you'll be grabbed for hours on end, which yeah, is also something a long video can do. You will see some ads. I don't know how shorts work, because the interface and the like design of them is so shit tier that I just don't even engage mm -hmm. with them. But, I mean, hey, remember, I you know, the, the whole Vine thing started it all. Yep to make hours long videos on the regular that people are willing to watch all the way through. Not to mention that the YouTube community often loves to just take a critic's score or rating at face value, even though, as we've already established, they've already those scores mean nothing. The work being reviewed, nothing. I'll never understand. Scores mean nothing. Don't only a summary Why does it mean nothing? That creator's and how, point of view. And how does that factor in with his little asterisk down there? What was the asterisks? Roll it, roll it back just a, just Especially a bit. if they've already formed their own strong opinion of the work being reviewed, which I will never understand. Wait, what? Okay, we need to roll him back even further, because now I'm getting a bit lost. Imagine that the YouTube community often loves to just take a critic's score or rating at face value, even though, as we've already said. Oh, especially if the viewer has already formed a strong opinion. Okay. So, they will take the creator's... <laughs> score at face value even if they've already got their own point of view that's you can't know that you can't that's a huge generalization right what's bad about it though is that bad? the format kind of necessitate hearing out the creator well but like so if if someone says ymes thought of about the batman is a six out of ten um and i have my own view on the batman what is that bad that I now take his score at face value? I believe that he believes... I'm just confused. What's the problem? It seems like he's building, like, a strawtism where, you know, you see someone gave a film you, like, a 6 out of 10 and you just write them off. Oh. I, I think that's what he's angling for, but I have honestly no idea because most, like, number slash rating style things are usually towards the end of the video. So you kind of have to hear them out unless you just skip through. Hmm established, those scores mean nothing without the entire context of the rest of the review. And critics... Uh, they don't mean nothing, but they don't mean nothing. They mean, nothing. They mean, uh, they mean less, they, but well, not well, I hate, I I hate to say it, but they less. mean what they mean. And you'd be like, it's what? And you'd be like, of something. Madness. They mean what they mean, and I mean by that is the, the context around them. What does a number mean that's literally a number, and that's it, delivered by Bob? It's like, well, it's not really much of anything. I guess I could get an indication. But if I'm familiar with all of YMS's work and then a number from him... That that means something very significant and specific compared to Bob. I, I don't even know why this is difficult. It's it's a number. We're again talking about that speed thing. I get to know something really quickly. It costs me nothing. Mm -hmm. Versus watching an hour long deep dive. I could do that too. But that's going to take an hour. I, I, why are we shitting on numbers <laughs> for being quick and simple when that is like their point? Why they exist? They do quick and simple.
general, but also especially on YouTube, have this horrible tendency to just take the exact template that has been laid out across various screenwriting books, or Joseph Campbell's Hero with a Thousand Faces, or previous films in a series. They just they just take all these ideas, they take them all, and they just yeah. slap them on to what? what... Why would you do that to those books? Why would you do that to those books? Nazi over here. <laughs> Ever they're watching and just put it up against that without any regard to the filmmaker's intent and oh I yes care I don't intent. care yeah I'm fine with that you go nuts the I don't know what they intended and I can't know what they intended and I don't want to know what they intended sometimes it. if yeah. I know it might fucking affect my ability to properly explain how the thing came like, to me instead of it's the, it's the perfect triplicate I don't know I can't know and I don't want to know <laughs> yeah I mean that's about all of it. Just call that a review, which... Uh, uh, fuck I... me, this guy has become so, like, the more you learn about it, the more you're like, you're super elitist, aren't you? Like, you just don't want to admit <laughs> it. You're like... I, the thing that really strikes me, and it's just, like, stayed with me, is this petulant view of, like, how dare you be so critical of all these movies, but then he just simultaneously, without realizing it, threw a bunch of them in the bin at one point in the video. Like, look at these yep. fucking worthless pieces of shit films. It's like, whoa. You are the person that you don't like. <laughs> and you'd be like, yes, I've been hypocritical. And I'm like, no, it goes a little further than that. <laughs> and don't get it twisted. I am not advocating at all for anyone to just I don't know completely why you're disregard the, the history of their crafts. Just... I'm bored of these fucking caveats. They suck. You'll make like well, some really broad and strange well, statement and then you'll just yeah. immediately say, no, not that though. <laughs> like, okay. Right. It's caveats just injected into scripts can like seriously damage the flow. Of an argument. Damages my mental health. I'm fine with caveats, but his <laughs> ones have been retarded. <laughs> Film criticism should not be negative. But that's not I'm to not say it can't be negative. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Success, especially if they want to be a filmmaker or a film critic. All I'm saying is that... Nah, they don't need to know history of film if they want to be a film critic. I've talked about this no, before. I am no, fine. Don't. If, in fact, I'm kind of interested in the idea of listening to someone talk about movie? film when they've never even known what film is as a concept. And also, where do you begin? And how do you know that you have a sufficient understanding of the history of film before you are now allowed arbitrarily to be a film critic? Yeah, I don't like it. I don't like it. I just want to listen to what they say it's based on what they urge. saw and heard and... No, um, we need to it. define whether they are critic or not so that we can, on that metric, define whether or not we have to listen to what they have to say. Yeah, because the most insightful thing you ever hear from anybody is not made more or less insightful by knowing that they are aware of, I don't know, film history, necessarily. It's usually the thing they said. Something that's often been, well, not often, but occasionally gets said is that it is really very interesting to see what somebody creates when they aren't as familiar with all of the tropes or uh, storytelling devices or three act structure or things like that. Yeah, when that you're not can sort like, of inform, like where you've learned a real so much fresh about take. Him. Yeah, exactly. I want to. I tell you, I want to go back in time and then snatch Deba from the ancient Egyptian days and show him a movie and mm -hmm. be like, "What do you think of this? Why him specifically?" Um. Well, so a long time ago, I watched a little. Sort of like documentary thing on the History Channel is many years ago about the construction of the pyramids. And it was told from the perspective of someone whose brother, Deba, died in a construction accident when they were making the pyramids. And so for whatever reason, that name just kind of stuck with me as an Egyptian name. Also, um, uh, Austin said, not really for any uninformed creatives taking over properties they don't care about has not worked well. That's clearly That's, not what's being discussed we're not right now. Saying, we're not saying we give a random not person even, control over Star Wars. What I, said. Right? I don't, and also, those I don't aren't think... the people we're talking about. Those people are, if anything, extremely influenced by tropes and modern movie expectations and storytelling stuff. Yeah, what you should draw from what Freeney's saying instead isn't we give Star Wars, for example, to any random person, even one that has no familiarity with film. It would be, there should be no one who is exempt from trying to make a film. Just because they have and no familiarity with film doesn't mean they can't try to make one. We should allow it in the same way. Film and, and talking about film. Yeah, and talking you know, about that, them. The, it, you should not worthwhile. be like, when you're about to upload the video, it's like, well, how familiar are you with film? It's like, fucking whatever. <laughs> like, Why should that be a roadblock, you know? Yeah, when it comes to, like, IP familiarity, like, yes, you should probably hire people who fucking know what Star Trek is if they're going to make Star Trek. That would be neat. Yep.
That'd probably be worthwhile. The way in which the tools at a critic's disposal are used can make a huge difference in how said criticism is perceived. To quote the late great Roger Ebert, oh, it is true. not what a film is about. It is how it is about it. And I feel like this is true not only for films, but for film criticism. Oh, we're back to using the, uh, the, the Pokemon music. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, As we're well, back to it. I am just over being oh, it's, invested oh, okay. in so whether uh, or not a critic or a conglomerate of critics has come to an overall positive or negative conclusion about a film or any other piece of art for that matter, or okay. whether or not that conclusion that they've come to perfectly aligns with my own opinion. I okay, what? what? Okay. Sure, man. That's totally fine. I mean, the m vast majority of people who use Rotten Tomatoes is literally just going to be a time saver. That is it. I mean, like, is this thing... G Ooh, that's rotten. Uh, maybe I'll go with the fresh one. And as simple as that. And I think he's like, you're missing the detailed and further understanding the heart of the creation. You barely understand anything. It's like, yeah, I know, I gotta go to work tomorrow. I need to watch a fucking movie. <laughs> Chill out. I try my best I have to, pick to a movie now. Ju judge a review based on I gotta on go to the how... sawmill. I gotta wake <laughs> up at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that person engages with the art. Girlfriend Reviews and Nakey Jakey walked away with completely opposite emotional reactions to The Last of Us 2, and I think both of their videos on the subject are brilliant pieces of analysis. Again, Why, it is not- What does that, okay. One of them was negative though, People damn. People can form different conclusions. Yeah, one of them, one of them was yeah. negative. That's true, yeah. one of them was negative. Oh. Oh. Well, this was, this was a different time. This, this was, was a different him. time. This is the old uh, him. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Not the opinion <laughs> He's of evolved as a that critic. <laughs> ultimately matters. It is how that opinion was formed and how much you yep. personally resonate with their approach. Because sure, an opinion one, can't be accurate. wrong <laughs> or, what, or whatever. Wait, but oh, wait, 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 wait a wait, minute. Wait, you, wait, have, you have stumbled uh, into a minefield here, my friend, can't be of which wrong. you are unaware. Saying an opinion cannot be wrong in a device. I fucking point. love this shit. It's priceless. <laughs> we get made fun of for this all the time, yet all of them think it. They just don't if say I, it. If I stepped outside and said, it's my opinion, it's thunderstorming right now, ain't no one would say that that is a valid opinion. No, that's just not an opinion, Rags. See? That's, that's, how, they, that's how they get around opinion. that. You don't have an opinion oh. there. You just, you're just wrong. Yeah, it's not, it's not, you know, you can't have opinions on matters of objective reality, I guess, or something, whatever. But the, an opinion can be horribly misinformed. Ah, there say it wrong. is. Say wrong, say wrong, say wrong, say wrong. Or say wrong. otherwise in bad faith. Do you no, seriously- No, that's not the same thing. No, being being misinformed and being in bad faith are not the same thing. I just love it though. Oh, he's he's said... managed to squeeze himself into being able to be like, your opinion's shit now. And it's like, whoa, you can't do that. And he's like, I can. Because I <laughs> said I could. <laughs> It's pretty negative. That's yeah, that's pretty negative. Fringy. This is the old. He moved on from this. This is him before he he. This is him before he is a caterpillar, and this is before he has cocooned himself and his chrysalis, and he has, I don't know, blossomed as a beautiful butterfly. Full expect of happiness me to and treat a detailed and knowledgeable analysis of the Batman with the same amount of value as somebody just giving it a zero out of ten on Metacritic because their six-year-old pissed themselves while they watched it. I don't understand the point here. Like, yeah, of course. I guess is it because like this comment? What? <laughs> he pissed himself because he was scared of Riddler. <laughs> Thanks I Hollywood for scaring, scaring my child. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't take your six-year-old to see the Batman. No, of course <laughs> not. What the no, fuck? That's the... It's Hollywood's fault. I took my child to this. He pissed all over me. R? Fuck you. Uh, no, that, yes, it's PG-13, but uh, uh, so that's but on the still, parent. Right? PG-13 parental guidance that's recommended. That's on the parent. Yep. I mean. Come on. This would normally be the part of the video if where If your child I can fit inside kid. the popcorn bucket, they should not watch this film. I just can't believe that we got to this far. It's near the end of the video and his final thing is like, I don't take as seriously a review that someone got, like, pissed on as I do an hour-long deep dive. It's like, Yeah, yep. like, thanks for the insightful commentary, buddy. Great. Everything who disagrees with you? Clear... Nobody disagrees with you, except I guess maybe the person who wrote that review. And maybe they don't disagree with you, you know? <laughs> you know, all I can really say they're... about that opinion is, that's safe. Hmm. Point, but that kind of 
is the point, isn't it? That Mm -hmm. nothing about the way we engage with art can be perfectly condensed into a compact little YouTube video. Thank you. Numbers aren't perfect. To consume, they never. They were never going to be. Never intended to be. They were just indicative and quick. That's all. Art is human. It is messy. Oh my god. It's complicated. (laughs) Dude. Dude. Art is is human. The elitist. Shut the hell up. (laughs) Have you ever considered that art is human? It's fragile. Don't like, I just want to know, it's like, very vaguely. You're doing your Bruce Wayne voice again. Think about this film. <laughs> That's a Bruce. I wonder if I wonder yeah, if dolphins that that is, hot, You know, if dolphins are swimming around and they're like, I'm arranged some seashells to look like a, uh, like a, uh, I don't a know, dick? some seaweed. Oh. Look at that. No, like seaweed or something, or like a, I don't know, a fish that they've seen, and then the dolphin is like, Yay, I am expressing myself, <laughs> like a, yeah, like a happy, a happy dolphin that I am. And then another dolphin says, know, but... that's not very good. And then this guy comes up with a fucking chainsaw. Like, fuck you! You've ruined everything! What? Chops the dolphin up with a chainsaw. <laughs> Negativity <laughs> is begone! <laughs> and it can't be boiled down as simply as we think it can. But to make this video I don't feel know like that it's anybody, worth it. I don't know that anybody nobody, you can. Yeah, he, like, he's... Nobody agrees with that. It's like... I think that most people will accept that a number, for as imperfect as it is, is a shorthand for like some broad statement, right? If a yeah. film gets a nine out of ten, I mean, it's it's reasonable to assume that it's probably quality, at least in that person's perspective. Um, like, and if they give it a two, you know, then the opposite's the case. It's useful in that regard, but obviously, if you know, it's like this movie is a nine. You couldn't really say anything about whether the acting's great or the characters are great or why. Of course not, but I don't think anybody would say otherwise, right? Unless they're, like, insane. I just feel like every time he, like, highlights, you know, someone summarizes the acting, the soundtrack, the pacing, the cinematography, the, the whatever, and then the other guy says, it's a six. And then he's like, see, there's much more insight in the first guy. And it's like, yeah, but the second guy's quicker. He'd be like, well, but... Well, you, 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 well yes, because it's just a number. Cool. And it's like, yeah... Do you see how this happened? Because then the guy who said all the things that you said was more insightful, he's pretty quick compared to the guy who does the hour video. And then that guy's pretty quick compared to the other guy who does the seven hour video. And so on. You're wild. Here's some final thoughts. It's important to have a nuanced take on a film and to try and engage with- Is it? Gonna be simple? <laughs> Can you be like, that was shit? I don't know. When you see cocaine bear, could you just be like, well, that was fun. No film is undeserving of the nuance, Theo. I don't know, man. Fast and the Furious. <laughs> no, get you know, your they nuance. Worked, they worked hard on that movie, so I think it deserves, you know, a bit of nuance. Hell yeah. If nuance leads me to more inaccurate, uh, accurate observations and conclusions, then, you know, sure. With the film on its own terms, don't attempt to oversimplify everything. Use your brain. What, like Think saying critical. that negative criticism should not, like, exist? I don't know, man. Yeah, this is getting a little bit weird. It sounds like he's saying think critically, but also don't be negative. Think critically. Be self-aware. Um, actively engage. Fucking music. Just music. With <laughs> what you consume. Make art, not content. Art is the enemy of democracy. Thank you for watching this mess. Art is the enemy, Art is of, the democracy? enemy of democracy. All right, let's what? go out and see who we got it from. Art we'll is have the a... enemy of democracy. What is that? Where did that come from? Let's see. This is quote fans from Gore Vidal. Art is not a democracy. In fact, art is the enemy of democracy. Is the idea mm-hmm. that community made like or approved art is shit? Um. So, I don't in, know if I even care to like figure out what that means. <laughs> I just it comes across pretty cringe. It sounds to me like a quote that has a lot to do with its context. So just trotting it out outside of that context. I don't know. When I type in that quote, the third thing on the list from Google is a Guardian article that says the best art is born from democracy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Looks like so, there's a debate uh, to be had. Art is the enemy. Of democracy, I would have to sit and really ponder what that's trying to say, but it doesn't pass the smell check. He's laughing as he says it. He's joking. Come on, that's not quite how that works. Real Vidal quote. No, no, just watch the way that he does it. Now I can explain. Intent. Art is the enemy of democracy. Thank you for watching this mess. Wait, are you playing it or? 
Yeah, I just did. You know, didn't know. Oh, okay. I didn't didn't do it for me. Yeah, okay. I, well, if everybody else saw it, that's fine. It works for okay. me. Yeah. yeah I, so I guess do you just, see the the way you delivered that? I just that? don't get it. I guess you, I it's more of it. a. It's it, it would be like if cultural. I said, um, you know, evil is evil is a part of human nature. <laughs> I'll see you next time. And someone said, "See, he laughs. He doesn't believe it." You're like, "Well, no. It, it's more of a like." acknowledgement that this is a reality. The problem isn't, it's not even, I don't even know if I disagree, I have no idea what he means by it. So I'm just saying it's a fucking weird thing to throw in at the end. It'd be nice to know what he meant, or, or how it works in with the context of this video. Because I assume what do you mean, like, he's talking about, the... The, you know, like Rotten Tomatoes is like a, a democratically voting on movies, and that it's killing it. So I, like, I fully believe he believes in the quote, I'm just not exactly sure how he would apply it. Which is weird, because saying that art is the enemy of democracy, does that imply that art is the friend of authoritarians? Again, I... whatever that quote was, it's like Theo said, there was probably a context that is just just totally absent here. So I don't even know where to begin with trying to figure it out. I don't well, want to. Uh, I'm yeah, that, on <laughs> board with the idea that a uh, singular vision and all that stuff, but like, you know, you can have great art made by people together. Yeah, there's plenty of the Coen brothers, right? <laughs> I don't know. Just... And you'd be like, well, that's not democracy. Or I'd be like, yo, fuck it. I don't even want to think about it. I don't know what you meant by it, so I'll just leave it. <laughs> fuck you. Bye. <laughs> okay. Okay. Fine. Oh. Alright. Learned a lot today. Oh, okay. oh, for two yeah, on this YouTuber. Uh, not, not great. Not but great. Good on him for the creative endeavor, you know? Consider some more structure. It's very yeah, hard to tell there. what you're actually They're saying. Thinking harder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, keep. I, mean, a... I think the big problem with the structure it keeps going like the, it is so unfocused. That's definitely a keep going sort of thing. He seems to be developing it as time goes on. So keep it up, I guess. I, but he, he, but if anything, he seems to have gotten worse. <laughs> yeah, the first mm -hmm. video is worse than the second. It was newer, yeah. Mm. Oh. I mean, this guy has an extraordinary ability to frustrate me and like <laughs> bore me out of my mind. I've been yawning for the last, like, <laughs> 20 minutes. I can't even speak. God. Uh, uh, I'm trying to say something nice. <laughs> it... He's got a good lighting. Yeah, I guess the production qualities are alright. Yeah. He seems he seems nice. I'd hang out with this guy. Y yeah. Maybe. Seems all right. Mm. Is that it? Have we oh. got any others? Or... <laughs> oh, if you want. I mean, his choices yeah. were, uh, mm -hmm. like, I didn't dislike the music that he used. They were <laughs> good variety, you know? <laughs> I just don't understand. A little bit randomly thrown in, though, right? They, like, a lot of them. It sounded nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Picked from the video essayist catalog, you know? I don't know if I've ever heard the Sims theme, like, for the, 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 the shopping theme for, like, you any know, of the, uh, these video essays. That's that was a roof. I've that heard, heard it a couple times. It's, it's, it's one I prefer. Wait, which one is your favorite of those shopping themes? Was it that one? Um, it wasn't that one. It was. It, it, oh shoot, I don't even have them by name. Damn it! No, I, it's I, not, I don't it's think not they have names. I think they're just numbered one, two, and three. Oh yeah, like shop, like building theme yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. And shopping yeah, theme, theme two. By theme one, <laughs> two, and three. Yeah, I don't have them by number. It wasn't that one though? But it's a good. It's a good one. They're all good. I love them. Yeah. And yeah, I loved him in the video. Um, Yay! Sure, why not? Did we have some good little, um, like the the Matt Damon thing? Yeah, that was neat. And the um, mm -hmm. the the movie guy. Yeah, Scorsese. Yeah, Scorsese. <laughs> so that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Best of luck to the future of whatever you may yeah. endeavor to. I would just think about what the true issue is, because it might not be negativity. It might be something, might else. Be something else. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe he just needs to really kind of stick to his script and really try to make sure that he focuses better, because I think he mm -hmm. kind of falls apart, goes on tangents a lot, and we kind of don't even really know what he's talking about anymore, even though the video has a title. Uh, the focus needs to be there, and he needs to stay on track. I think he can easily get diverted I very agree. badly. I'm sure... I'm sure his heart is in the right place. No, I'm not. Sure. I'm not. Sure. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, I'd say <laughs> that about does that. that. That brings us to the end of this wonderful uh, EFAP stream. But before we even think about ending, why don't we first 
talk to uh to Nutsa. What are you up to? Where do you do things? Why should people subscribe to you? Mm, well, I'm working on a video that is like I don't know where it's going to be posted, but it's almost finished. Uh and it's like basically I'm calling the entire film industry a fan fiction factory where I'm like you know, everything is fan fiction that comes out. Don't you know? think that's a little bit negative? Yeah, maybe. You're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> I, should I should delete myself. You know? no. Fan fictions are beautiful. Um, <laughs> Thank you. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm working on it, and I'm really proud of it, and I'm excited to post it soon. So, wow, look awesome. forward to that. And what's out right now that they could check out? Oh, uh, not much though. I don't even know how long. Like it's been, like, maybe half a year. Or not, not even. But I, I think I haven't posted since February. And um, I mean, yeah, I'm like, I posted a video after our She Hulk podcast, like um, about female writers that I'm really proud of. So if people want to check it out, oh, that's cool. You know, yeah, again, yeah. Because She Hulk was quite a yeah. horrifying thing. So yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, like I thought it was powerful. Yeah, sure. Yep. Why not? Um, well, hey, yeah, thank you very much. And the uh, links are, have been posted in chat and the description links get fucked every time we start up the stream. They'll be fixed when they re uploaded, or hopefully they're fixed right now, mm -hmm. but YouTube does something to them. It's weird. Uh, well, they've, they've done it so it's all like a lot of the usernames are like at now. Yeah, but so that's what I put in the beginning. The when I start the stream up, they convert oh, and then they just into screwed them up anyway. Yeah, they convert yeah. into garbled numbers and letters that don't work. They take you to false pages. It's annoying as hell. I have oh. to like switch them all again to the point where I might have to just start starting up stream and then doing it. But yeah. in, in any case, uh, Das, what about you? What are you up to, Lima? Um, still working on Batwoman. Sorry, I know it's like, <laughs> don't worry, it's not gone. I'm still working on it as I go. It's just, you know, day they're gonna stuff. have their minds blown when they see that we actually reach the end day of job it someday. Boo. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It is still going. Don't worry. Theo, what are you up to? You know, all right. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, appreciate you both joining us for this wonderful adventure. Thanks for well. having me on. Um, uh, Fringy, Rags, anything you guys wanted to say about anything? Oh, not really. Not really right now. Maybe next week I'll have a more uh, substantive update. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. I'm just, I'm just in the editing dungeon. I'm just working. That's, that's me. Yeah, I mean, I've only got the same to report. Every day, it's either audio yeah. stuff, video stuff, editing, writing. It's a lot of things. And, uh, yeah, just for now, I'm afraid we can't give you any enticing updates, uh, but Gotham Knights will start up eventually. I'm trying to get, um, a supercut of Mando out first, which is a nightmare. It's, it's getting hit with insane levels of copyright that the individual videos oh, weren't. That, guys? The individual episodes were fine, and then when it gets compiled into one big supercut, it all just starts to go wrong. Yeah. Some... How, how mean is that? Really fucking annoying, but... You'll get that, and then Gotham Knights will start up after that, but I can't actually say how long it'll take. I have no idea. And as you can imagine, it takes a while to render and upload each one of them every time. And YouTube, the those rapscallions, they'll only tell you about one copyright claim at a time, because they're so fucking awesome and cool. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> but yes, uh, Wednesdays, the uh, catch-ups come out at this point. It seems to be a pretty solid uh, scheduling thing, and it means that we get to have more reasonable times to on and off and stuff and you'll be getting like i said tv slash movie stuff here and there who knows more updates as time goes on in any case thank you all so much for the kind donations for the company and of course to our wonderful guests for staying this uh, yeah adventure it, it was fun fun on the button okay well good night everybody and we'll see you next time goodbye bye, bye, bye everybody bye -bye. see you later Toodle yeah away. bye no negative. No, no negatives in the comments. Just remember. Yeah, don't be negative. Happy thoughts only. <laughs>